Two years ago, a father wrote a book. The book tells the story of a man who lives in a world of normal people. This man only uses his power for others, helping the weak, saving lives, and bringing prosperity to the world. But in the end, the man died. But that's not a sad thing, because he brings goodness to the world. And the world became peaceful. The setting changes to the Wellstone Private High School cafeteria. There it is famous for its super delicious triple chocolate cake, which is only served once a month. Since it was a rare moment, people rushed to the school cafeteria to try it during lunch. John, the main character of the story, hopes to get a piece of this cake, so that he doesn't rush to get it. In the canteen, there are only the last pieces, but Arlo comes and picks up the pieces in front of him. He said it was the last piece of cake, but Arlo refuses to give it back to him, mentioning that he should have been quicker than him to get it. Now the piece is his. Rami denies backing down and starts using his powers against him. Arlo happily joins the fight. Meanwhile, John arrives and sees them fighting over a piece of cake, and ironically, he can't get himself one. Now, Wellston Private High School students are in class. John was already sad because he hadn't gotten a cake. He found mathematics lessons boring. Meanwhile, the teacher is giving a lecture at the blackboard. He was lost in his thoughts about how his usual life was. Someone is asked by the teacher to volunteer to solve the problem. He raised his hand and asked permission to go to the washroom. The teacher glared at him but allowed it. As he leaves the classroom, Martin makes fun of him, but the teacher throws chalk at him and he starts bleeding. In addition, the teacher asked him to come forward and stand in front of the blackboard and solve problems about math problems in front of him. He still thought of his life as an ordinary person. John tiredly made his way through the corridors. He heard a sound and suddenly someone flew in front of him. He was beaten and pushed by Eisen. John was scared. Eisen punished Blyke for the pen he broke. John thinks it's unfair to beat someone just because of a pen. Meanwhile, Blyke tries to stand up and attack. Eisen thought, John better run to another restroom. And at this moment, he claims that he has no power. He doesn't have any special powers like other people do. At school, while passing through the corridors, John saw a senior man beating a kid near the restroom door. At first, he decided to leave them and went straight to the washroom, but then he thought about the immoral act forced by the senior man. The kid did something again, but he refused and asked him to leave him alone. That infuriated the senior, and he pulled the boy away, grabbed his head, and again ordered him to do as he said. Instead, he would beat the child to death. Suddenly, John punched Senior and told him to stay within his limits, and don't act arbitrarily. Senior smirks and replies back, saying he knows who he is, and then called him the weakest student in this school, when he attacked John by throwing punches at him. He blocked his attack, using his martial arts skills, and threw a counterpunch at the bully's face. John warns him and asks him to back off. The Senior replied by saying that he would pay for it, because John is spoiled. A fight with that senior. The senior began to use his special powers to take revenge on him. John was first surprised to see him attack. He wondered what he should do to fight it. The senior told him that he should not interfere in other people's affairs. And the world has no sympathy for weaklings like him. John should be humble and mind his own business. Or if he interferes in other people's affairs, he will be killed. Everyone knew that if he didn't have any strength, then he would be killed if he continues to take other people's paths. John asked him. It was as if he was threatening him. John didn't see it coming to attack him, and he wondered why he was so fast. He got bruises on his arms. What he had just used was his mind to understand his opponent's abilities and discovered that his opponent had striking power. All the senior man told him that was just a taste of his power, with which he can do more and go further. He apologized so that he will spare his life. John questioned his opponent's abilities and called him not very good. She tells him that she just did it the way he did it, finding someone weaker than himself. After that, he laughed at his opponent and called him. That's a pretty big ask. He told the senior to use his words for himself. He cites several examples of people who have superpowers in his school. It is said that the power of Remy can burn a person to ashes. Blyke and Eisen, who are currently destroying the Wallach and Serafina Halls, who have divine powers. He was making fun of the senior, and only pointed out that his strength was not impressive. 
He further added that he could beat him without any power. He attacked the senior and then threw him outside. He falls from the window. He then wondered if his martial art technique was working. He becomes successful but breaks his arm again. A mysterious girl sits on the roof. Her cell phone beeped. After breaking his arm, John went to the school's health clinic to see a doctor. To fend for himself, he gives John some medicine to take so his arm can heal in three hours, adding further that he may lose his job one day. The doctor said that John was lucky, because he was fighting a stone boy and not someone with dangerous powers. John stood up and tried to leave and promised to be more careful next time. The doctor stops him from going and reminds him that he will have to stay here for the next three hours until his arm heals. The mysterious girl on the roof is Sarah. When she received the message for help from John, she visited him in the health center. She asked him what the text message was about. He replied that he felt bored because the doctor did not allow him to leave for the next three hours. She giggled and told him she was going back to class. John reminds her that she was kidding because she never goes to class. He asks her to accompany him. Sarah sat with him on the bed, and they started using their phones. John shared the game score with her. She makes fun of John as she scores more goals using her abilities. While they were chatting, they heard something unknown. There was a booming sound, and John wondered what it was. John heard a strange sound and wondered what it was. The doctor screams and warns someone while moving towards the door. Holding the doorknob, he glared at John and warned him to stay inside until he came back. John reassures him, saying that he needn't worry about him since he has Sarah accompanying him. The door closed. He asked Sarah to leave the hospital. She smiled and agreed to the plan. Outside the school, someone appeared to be hiding in the bushes. A stubborn boy came out holding his head. He looks angry and decides to destroy John. Next, when he came out of the bushes, he saw John standing outside the school building. He rushed towards him to attack. He took his collar. He further reminds him that he had to make up for it in their last fight. John looks surprised and pretends that they are over it. The stone boy reminds him that he threw him out of the window. John replies that he broke his arm as well, so now it only adds to the stone boy's anger, and he tried to hit him. John defended himself. Meanwhile, Sarah arrives there and the stone boy dwarfs her. It turns out that Sarah's full name is Serafina, the girl who almost became a god. Stone boy looked terrible as she glared at him. Composing himself, the boy added that he was not afraid of her. She walked around all day with John and didn't seem much stronger. When he asks Sarah to leave, she attacks him and throws him far into the wall. The stone boy started bleeding. He wondered about what had just happened. In less than a second, as he barely moved, he burned in anger. The doctor dragged Blyke and Ison to the infirmary. They both get hurt. After fighting with each other, he scolds them for causing so much damage. While class is in progress, Ison blames Blyke, saying that he won't fight him if he didn't break his pen. Seemed unconcerned towards his stuff, and they started fighting again. But the doctor stopped them and warned them about the consequences. At the same time, the stone boy appeared crawling in very bad shape. The doctor noticed that John was missing and the doctor was angry. John and Sarah are enjoying boba drinks while discussing the scene in the fight between John and stone boy. She taunts him, throwing the stone boy out the window and laughing. John replies that it's funny because he could get killed. If he doesn't, Sarah points out that he always uses such excuses. But so is life. She further added that he is definitely enjoying his life being on the edge, which John denies and he says that all he wants is peace. But nowadays every small conflict turns into a big fight, and it is necessary for him to fight back to save his life. He added that in this world it should not be like that. He said that living in peace would be a waste of time, and he couldn't argue with the weak. John, who made their conversation end at this point, and he said that the strongest person is not always right. All they want to do is beat the weak, and that's sad. Sarah took this argument personally, but he clarified that he was speaking generally. The two of them ignored each other. For a while, John thought Sarah couldn't understand the pain of weak people, because she was born a strong person, so she doesn't understand what people like him have to go through every day. On TV, a news anchor reads someone's obituary. 
In the news, it was said that Ember had left traces of a corpse. The most recent one is in Loven, in a small alley near the intersection of Roquel and Acres Street. Investigators have identified the body, namely the famous hero Ecstatic. No other personal information has been provided. The victim's corpse was found with second-degree burns and several stab wounds, and like the other Ember's victims, there is a mark on the corpse. Hearing this, John said that Loven was the name of the town next door, and could it be that Ember is headed there? Meanwhile, Sarah showed no concern over the news, and said that in the end, people who proclaim themselves as superheroes become victims because they like to meddle in other people's affairs. People need to learn to mind their own business, especially if they don't have the power to back it up. John said that he was just trying to keep them safe. The people should mind their own business and stop being heroes to save others. Sarah asks if he feels safer, especially when he's dead. About a year ago, John moved to Wellston Private School. It's his first day, and he happily introduces himself to his new classmate, whom he hopes to make new friends with. John has tried hard to get into that school. Lack of sleep every night. Countless hours of studying. With entrance exams that difficult, he thought academic ability was the main focus at Wellston. He wished things were different. But soon he was proven wrong. Before math class started, Elena classmate spoke to him. John said that he had been homeschooled before coming here, and he was happy to have new experiences here. This class has never had a guy homeschooled before. Elaine was so shocked. Elaine asks John about his special ability. John says that he has no special ability. Now it was a complete surprise to everyone present there. The person who was being nice to him a few minutes ago suddenly became angry. The girl was angry because John was considered a disabled person in their class. And finally, John realized that this school was like any other world, where weak people are considered lowly. After class, outside the school building, some kids with special abilities try to bully him and ask him to do as they say. Sarah was his classmate. She stood near him and saw how other students bullied him. But even the girl didn't come forward to help him after he called out to her to help him. The bullies beat him up. Today, when John lay in his bed, Sarah called John. John, who was sleeping in his room, answered Sarah's call. They start a conversation. When Sarah called him and asked him to come with her to shop at a nearby mall, John refused, saying he had to clean his place and that he wanted to be home all day. Sarah knew that he was just sad because of some incident at school. John advised Sarah. John says that now he has to worry about his life, and that's really bad. At the same time, Sarah rang the doorbell at his house. He was shocked after seeing her standing outside the door. He opened the door and gave her a sad look. Then Sarah clarifies that she is here to help him clean the house. The two of them were cleaning the house, and Sarah saw a book there. The title of the book is Unordinary. John asked her to keep it. Then Sarah asked John to get ready and asked him to go with her now. In short, they both went to Kavoro Mall at Andy's Fashion Boutique. Sarah was busy finding a dress while John asked her what she thought of the dress he was holding in his hands. He misread the word lame as some French word, and Sarah gave him a look of disapproval. Then Sarah said that the word sounds lame, which means lame or disabled, but John didn't seem to care. He still wanted to try it. After that, he went to the changing room and put on the clothes. John came out of the dressing room and asked Sarah what she thought. Sarah commented that the clothes weren't too bad for John to wear. After shopping, John was happy because the mall wasn't bad at all. So he can relax a bit and have fun. But his happiness ends when he meets someone. And he was embarrassed. He looked at the ability meter and asked Sarah to give it a try. Sarah called it a scam, but after John insisted, Sarah will try it for John's sake. At the counter, a girl who was next to them scored a four, and she called it an insult. She said the man at the counter was a fraud, and asked for her money back. The girl hopes to get more scores, but the man clarified that four is a good score. Such a score is for people who are gifted, and five for people who have a high level of ability. But three is average. The arrogant girl calls him a scam and demands her money back or else she will destroy the counter. John found it offensive. But he who saw this couldn't take any action because he was a weak person. In the chart he saw from the ability stall owner, there was a boy named Gavin. He has the stone skin ability which is at level 2.8.
Meanwhile, there is a girl named Lavani with grenadier abilities at level 3.6. John seemed to be trying to calm the woman who made the mess, but the woman said not to interfere in her business. John also replied that this was also part of his business. He wasn't going to wait for her to get a $10 refund and asked here to stop bothering the man at the counter and let someone else take their turn. But the woman got angry and asked him to shut up. John added that he didn't want to fight. Some people who were still waiting for their turn at the back chose to leave there. Then the woman felt that John was insulting her. John apologized and tried to explain it well. But suddenly a ball of energy emerged from the woman's hand. She tries to scare him. John looked at the energy ball and observed it. He was afraid that the energy ball would cause serious damage to the mall. Then John saw mall security and started provoking the woman. Lavani became flustered as she didn't expect John not to strike back. She tried to attack him, but John called the security guard. At the same time, the security guard stopped her and asked her about the problem. She pointed out to John and Sarah, but they told the other side of the story to the guard. She informs the guard about the man in the stall committing fraud. Then the security guard threatens the man and demands to return Lavani's money. John found her behavior odd, but couldn't say anything. John and Sarah kept quiet at this time to avoid trouble. John found this injustice to be cruel. He apologized to the man at the counter for the matter, and he commends John for the courage. And in return, he offers to measure their abilities for free. Sarah, who was encouraged by John, came forward and asked him to measure her abilities. Sarah got a score of eight. It was an extraordinary ability. The man at the counter praises her for having that much power. He gives her a gift and mentions that he hasn't seen someone with this much strength in a long time. Then John knew that the man was measuring someone's ability by touch. Then the man tried to measure John's ability, but he turned down the offer saying that he would not do so, because he won't get any score. John and Sarah then left, while the man who was sitting at the counter seemed to be smiling. That night when John and Sarah left Kavoro Mall, John thought the day had passed very quickly. Sarah reminds him that it happened because he woke up late. It was a very busy day and there were a lot of people waiting at the bus stop. John suggested going to another bus stop, which is directly opposite the park. In the garden, the lights are burning bright. They walked on the grass to cross the garden. When John realized that there was something strange behind his back, but there's nothing there. Then he noticed a smiling Sarah. John asked her what was so funny. Then Sarah remembered the incident at the mall earlier. He thought John would end up fighting against that woman, but in the end he screamed loudly and asked for help, and asked him to answer that he was hoping for the big war to come today at the mall. John mentioned that the woman was wrong and that she only got the money because she was so strong. A frustrated Sarah advises John not to do it and cares more about himself. At least he didn't end up having a broken arm today. John asked her if she had any name for the cute doll she won today. Sarah thought and asked him for a creative name. John suggested his own name. John suddenly suspected that something was chasing them. He then took Sarah's hand and they ran together to get out of the garden. Sarah asked him what his reason was for running, but John only took her to a small road. Then he searched for a shirt from the shopping bag he bought from the mall today, then threw it in front of him. Both of them were shocked when his clothes hung in the air instead of falling to the ground. John tried to tell if the person was invisible, but Sarah came from behind and kicked the invisible person. Before John finished his words, the invisible person left. She asked John to get out of this place. John and Sarah got on the bus and arrived at the house, after they entered the house. They breathed a sigh of relief. Sarah asked John about that invisible thing earlier. He replied that he did not know. Maybe someone is trying to scare them. He said that they had had a pretty good day. Sarah asked how he came to know that something was chasing them both. John replied that it was just a hunch. All he tried to do was change the subject and ask her out for dinner. Sarah replied that she would return to the hostel. John called her crazy for having thoughts of going there, especially after what happened to them. She said that he could take care of herself. But John advised her to stay the night and leave tomorrow, like it's much safer here. He went to the kitchen and cooked dinner. 
While Sarah sat on the sofa, suddenly her eyes fell on the book she was looking at while cleaning the house. When John came to ask about dinner, he realized his mistake and put the book away. Sarah was surprised by seeing this book. Because when she wanted to read the book, he was always forbid it. Sarah then took the book and asked where John could get this book, because the book was banned two years ago right after its publication. Then John replied that his father had some additional copies, and he gave one to him. Sarah reads the name of the author of the book and finds out that it belongs to John's father. Sarah finds out that John's father is a famous book writer. She expressed her desire to read this book and wondered about how it could create so much controversy. John became surprised by her thoughts like that. But he didn't really care. She mentions rumors about this book being cursed as people get delusional after reading it. John clarified that. The people were not delusional, but they got the message the book was conveying. It is a message to help others to bring balance to the world. Sarah then said that he sounded like those vigilantes. Now John recommends Sarah that she read this book for herself, and she also borrowed the book with pleasure. Elsewhere, a map appears on the screen. There is a beeping sound that indicates that someone is spying. Someone there said that Target 93 had been stationary at coordinates minus 42. 77.2 for 6 hours and 49 minutes. He asked if he should record the target's location. Then the voice of someone giving orders was heard, to mark the location. Meanwhile, Sarah and John seemed to be fall asleep. Sarah slept on the couch, and John slept on the floor. He started having a nightmare. A girl with green hair appeared in his dream, and he woke up from this nightmare. He sat down and began to wonder about this dream. Then he caught a glimpse of Sarah sleeping peacefully. He went to the bathroom and splashed water on his face. What he saw was his reflection in the mirror, and he tried to calm his nerves. He put on his hoodie and glanced at Sarah before leaving the house. He went to a convenience store. He sat outside the shop to have a snack. While eating, he closed his eyes and thought again about the green-haired girl he saw in his dream. Suddenly, he stopped eating and placed the snack in the bag. Then he headed home. When he entered the house, Sarah woke up. She asks, did he get up early? He replied that he could not sleep. Sarah asked him if he had a bad dream. He tries to change the topic and invites her to breakfast. She noticed his strange behavior. When they had breakfast, John had not said a word. Sarah asks John if everything is okay because he acted strange today. He just said that he was good. Sarah offered to share his problem, but John answered rudely. She stood up and gathered her things, then moved towards the door and just left. Sarah arrived at the Wellston dormitory, and there was Elaine waiting for her at the door. The girl looked angry and asked where did she went last night and why she didn't reply to any of her messages. Elaine was very worried. When she was about to enter the dorm room, Elaine kept asking Sarah. She asked about what happened last night and why did she do it. She didn't reply to her texts. She further asked about whether last night she was hanging out with John again. Elaine was angry too. She didn't understand why Sarah was always with him, because that will only make it look worse. Elaine also added that John did not have the ability. Sarah then released her ability and made Elaine silent and unable to move. Sarah gave her a death stare. She froze with fear. Sarah reminded her of the one she had mentioned many times. Whatever she did was none of her business. When Sarah entered the room, Elaine fell to her knees on the floor. Then she heard her phone ring. She gets a call where Arlo is asking her if Sarah is home. Meanwhile in the room, Sarah takes out something in her shopping bag and then gets a text message from someone. The message was from John that he sent to Sarah. He also said to be careful about the book. Because if someone saw it, maybe she would get into trouble. Sarah then opened the book. It can be seen that when she opened the book, there was writing that the book was dedicated to his son. Someone knocked on the door and Sarah put the book back into her bag. Sarah opens the door and finds Arlo there. He wanted to speak, but Sarah refused and tried to close the door. He pushed open the door and asked for a moment to speak. Sarah allows Arlo to mention that they are being challenged to a turf war, and it starts in six hours. They are short of members and need her to enter as queen. But Sarah is not interested in turf wars. But Arlo explained that as Queen Wellston, 
It was actually her responsibility to the school. Sarah then asks where is Remy and why didn't she go? Arlo explained that Remy had to go home for a week because of an important family matter. And he emphasized that Sarah doesn't need to take part in fighting weak people. All he needed was for her to show up and watch the show. Six hours later, Sarah, Arlo, Blyke, and Elaine were traveling on a carriage to the turf war zone. As soon as they all reached the battleground, they saw four members from the Agwin school waiting for them. Broven from Agwin team scoffed at their late arrival. Arlo asks Broven how he is as they each see each other. After a while, Broven asked him to get to the point. Arlo walked towards him. Broven asks him about the plan. As Wellston, he doesn't need to trigger a turf war. Arlo mentions rumors of Agwin recruiting a new queen. He added that he wanted a chance to see her in action. Broven warns him of his wish and questions him about the rules of the chosen fight. Arlo fights one-on-one. -on -one. Broven asks him about the new girl on the Wellston team. He introduced Sarah by calling her full name Serafina. Broven tried to remember where he had heard this name before, and he came up with a memory of how she took down their entire member by herself. In no time, Arlo asks to start the rule of war. Jack announced from both teams taking their positions. Jack from the Agwin team stepped up. He attacked quickly. He was surprised but prepared to attack. He threw bomb energy to slow it down. He kept attacking him using his energy beams to dodge the attacks. While he was attacking, his leg was bleeding, who tried to take him but failed. Before Blyke makes the final attack, Agwin's queen accepts defeat and asks him to end this round, which she will take and this is where the war begins. Blyke attacks queen but it seems in vain. As he avoids the attack with the help of something, she attacks him and he looks helpless. His leg is injured. He again attacks her but she dodges him somehow and she hit a clean streak. He as soon as he attacked again, two legs sprouted from her back, and she counterattacked. He waited for all the rounds to end, but he didn't like miracles. She wondered why his team hadn't called him out yet. He told him it was none of her business. He was ready for the final attack. At the last moment, Sarah stops the match and accepts defeat. He orders Elaine to take care of Blyke and taunts Arlo for destroying the team while she left the turf war for just one semester. She tries to take Blyke's place in the war, but Arlo stops her and says he will take care of it from there. Agwin's team celebrates victory, but Broven asks Queen not to let her guard down. Of course there is a reason for that. Wellston had never lost a game before. She tells him not to worry too much. The result of the first match was that both teams each defeated one member. The next match was between King Wellston and Queen Agwin. The match begins. As the match starts, she attacks Arlo, but he defended himself with a shield. This power around him infuriated her, and she jumps all over Arlo to find his weak point. When she attacks from above, he uses his force to reflect the attack, and she got bruises all over her body. She gets shocked and asks him to step back from her. As he moved towards her, she attacked him again. But the attack was in vain. He had her trapped inside his barrier. She tried to free herself but couldn't. He entered into the barrier and got closer to her. He reminds her that she should be invincible, but she is nothing more than him. She tried to slap him, but he grabbed her hand with his left hand and grabbed her neck with his right hand. Rovan accepts the beat and asks to end this nonsense, but Arlo doesn't stop. Goo tries to break through the shield, but he is too weak. Meanwhile, Arlo tightened his grip on Queen's neck and tries to kill her, while Sarah says enough to Arlo and asks him to stop. Sarah asked Arlo to stop grabbing Queen's neck. Arlo becomes angry. He called Sarah by her full name, Serafina, then said that she couldn't just give him orders. Sarah then tried to run towards him, and Elaine tries to prevent it. Sarah tries to stop him, and she runs up and destroys Arlo's barrier with one punch. She told Arlo to back off. Arlo released his hold on Queen's neck. The girl fell. Meanwhile, Arlo was injured by Sarah's attack. Arlo gets angry and asks why Sarah is trying to attack her own teammate. But Sarah didn't respond to what Arlo said, and then she approached Queen and said that the turf war was still going on. They only have two choices, walk away and accept defeat or move on and fight her as their next opponent. She asked them which one to choose. Then one of the Agwin teams stated that the winner was the Wellston team. They took the train home. Elaine, who was sitting next to Arlo, asked him about his strange behavior towards Sarah, when he said that Sarah didn't listen to him anymore. 
Arlo replies she has to check on Sarah since she is her roommate. Elaine said John was the cause of her current behavior. She said that Sarah was perfect before she met John. But she is a completely different person now. Arlo asks about John. She mentions that he is their classmate and he is a loser with no abilities. She further added that Sarah slept at John's place last night. Arlo asks her to keep an eye on Sarah and that he will deal with John personally. Meanwhile, John continued walking along the sidewalk while holding a bag in his arm. Looks like he's got the flu. On the street, John heard a news of a murder. Last night at 8.23 p.m. when John was passing by an electronics store. In the news, it was stated that the authorities found a body marked by the famous Ember logo. The body was found in a gantry in South Wellston. Victims are identified as the powerful and infamous Arcray Gius Vigilante. Personal information about the victim was not disclosed, and like the previous victims, that person's body was also covered in burns. His death marks the fourth homicide he has committed this month. So far it has been noted that all of the victims of the Ember are known as high-level superheroes. Based on that, it was concluded that the Ember must consist of very tough people. Then reporters asked for public comments about their opinions about the recent killings some answers to the vigilantes, and some answers that they are right. But they cause more problems, and instead of helping. At Wellston School, Eisen surprises Blyke from behind and wishes him good morning, telling Blyke that he looks terrible. It seems he lost the turf war, like it would be in return for him if he was at least strong enough to fight. That's despite that Sarah went with them yesterday. Eisen called it his luck. When he saw Sarah enter, his actions seemed to say that he was attacking Arlo. But then he remembered that he wasn't supposed to talk about it. When Eisen insisted, he spilled the secret. While John walks in the corridor, John is worried about his history test. He had forgotten to prepare for it. He accidentally bumps into Arlo, who was walking with Gavin. Then John apologized, but Gavin held him back. John didn't understand because he had already apologized to them. Then John said that he had a history test in ten minutes. Then Arlo asks Gavin to let him go, and he said good luck with his exams. John thanked him and moved forward. But Arlo has something on his mind. After John left for his class, Gavin asked Arlo why he let him go. But Arlo just silent and thinking about something, then add on if there was someone who didn't have any skills and bumped into a king, then how would he react? It was a nice sunny day and Sarah was busy playing games on her phone. What she got was a perfect rating, but the word perfect took her back to the past. In the past, she was taught to be perfect. From the beginning, she started training to be the strongest physically and most intelligent mentally. She thought that perfection to be a wish, as one would expect from her at any time. But this is reality. Then she remembered the day John showed up, and Lynn and Crail bullied him. John saw Sarah passing by enjoying her drink. Crail tried to punch him, and John dodged the blow he was trying to make. When he saw Lynn and Crail attack him together using martial arts skills, but John didn't stay silent. He tried to fight them both to beat the crap out of them. Sarah was shocked by watching two kids with special powers beating up John who was disabled. When John managed to escape, he ran into Sarah. Then John thanked Sarah because she didn't do anything. Sarah also wonders who does he think he is. Sarah remembers her first interaction with John. She remembers getting the best marks. Each time she remembered how her teacher advised other students to follow her as a role model. She remembered how her friends called her different by calling her extraordinary. She asked herself if she was rewarded for being perfect. That day when students were served triple choco cake, John who heard about it went to the cafeteria early to get the cake. Sarah comes to him and demands a piece of cake which he refuses to give her. He added that he would not give away his cut. He moved the plate towards her, but he threw the plate down on purpose so she couldn't have the cake. Everyone looked at them and thought it was Sarah who had lost to a disabled person. He beats John in anger. She calls him nothing and reminds him that she is a superior person. People around them got scared and started leaving because they didn't want to fall victim to her anger. She felt helpless and cried. Sarah receives a text from John about her failure in her history exam. He asks Sarah to have lunch. As Sarah walks under the stairs, she hears other people talking about her fight with Arlo. They thought she was weird. 
but Sarah casually walked past them all. After he drank water, his cell phone rang and it was his father's call. He took the call. His father asks if everything is okay there and warns him about Ember. He replied that he already knew and he would take care of himself. Then his father got another call and they said goodbye together. In the Wellston dormitory, Sarah was sitting on her bed and reading a book she borrowed from John. She opened the page where it was written dedicated to his son and pondered about the reasons behind it well. He turned the next page and continued reading. After some time, she closed the book and threw it on the bed. She needs fresh air. As he put on her shoes to leave the dorm, Elaine asked her if he wanted orange juice. Sarah says yes, but she will have it later. She walks outside. She thought about the book's story and the concept behind it. That concept of defending the world of the disabled seemed strange to her. She thought that John's father might have written this book to introduce the idea of equality between the powerful and the powerless. That way, John could have a much safer world. Now she discovered the reason why the government banned the authority of the book was because it challenged the entire structure of their current society. When Sarah wasn't in her room, Elaine went inside to put a fresh glass of orange juice on her desk for Sarah. As Elaine is about to leave the room, she sees a book on Sarah's bed and wonders after reading the title of the book is unordinary. Sarah returned to her room. She saw a glass of orange juice on the table. He also noticed that the book was on the bed. He guessed that Elaine had come here. She should have seen the book by now. Meanwhile, in her room, Elaine was looking for that book on the internet. She came to know that the book was banned by the publisher, and that book became the reason for the recent murder case. She was shocked and closed her laptop. She thought about her next step, because she doesn't want Sarah to become a vigilante. She looked at her phone and decided to call Arlo. Arlo takes the call, and Elaine tells him about the whole situation. At this, Arlo asks her to calm down and not share this news with anyone. On the roof of the school, Sarah and John are sitting and John looks worried. Sarah asks the reason, and he answered that the result card that came out this Friday was why he was nervous. Sarah said that John couldn't do anything about it now, so he should stop worrying about it. After a pause in their conversation, Sarah tells John that she can't return the book. John guessed that Elaine must have found the book, and that's why John added that she was always careless, and he couldn't accept her mistake. John asked her about her next mistake. Then he said that she was in no situation to return the book because she didn't want anyone to trace it back. John asked her what she saw. Sarah shrugged as she didn't have any plans about that either. John asks her about her thoughts on the book. She remembered it because it didn't make any sense. She added that she needed John's help to understand the full picture of the book. John shares his review of an unusual hero. He said that he was strong but he helped disabled people, said John. If he had any power, he would also join them. Sarah apologizes because she couldn't return the book. John said that it was fine because he had read the book many times. Maybe it's time to take a break from that. They were studying in the library when Remy brought a stack of books to his desk. He looks surprised after seeing her and asks her about her arrival. She replied that she came back last night. She asks him about all the events he missed last week because she was on leave. He tells about the victory in the turf war and mentions the fight between Sarah and Arlo, where he tells that everyone was talking about it in the morning. Remy looks surprised and tells him that Sarah and Arlo always disagree with each other. Then he changed the topic and asked the reason for leaving the school so sudden. Remy replies that she went to attend the funeral of her murdered brother. John is in the classroom where the teacher is going to give them the exam result cards. John looks worried and breaks his pencil because he feels he is having bad memory problems. Then a memory came to his mind and he remembered the time when some kids beat him and he was sitting down having injuries. Then a girl came and offered him some help. When it breaks and John returns to reality, he handed the results to John. John looks happy because the result is not as bad as he thought. Meanwhile, Arlo was walking in the corridor thinking about Sarah, which he thinks the book is the reason for her changed behavior. Suddenly, John and Arlo meet again, and he drops his paper on the floor. John explained that he had just received a grade and was reading the teacher's comments. Arlo glanced at John's paper. 
He bent down and helped John pick up his paper. Everyone around seemed shocked watching Arlo. And ask him to do something better. He handed the papers to John. John said thank you. Arlo advises him to walk carefully next time. Arlo left with a grin on his face. Arlo calls Eisen for a meeting. He starts a question to Arlo about John, and he replied that he is a disabled person who always hangs out with Sarah, but why is Arlo interested in him? That's why Arlo wants Eisen to find out what John is hiding. Eisen thought this investigation was unnecessary. Arlo says that he didn't ask. He orders Eisen to get it, and he apologizes for his mistake. Arlo further mentions to keep this investigation under wraps, as it is a secret. John was walking down the corridor and saw a paper taped to the wall. It states that students seem to be placing their bets on this. This is about the next obituary of a superhero. John found it offensive. Suddenly he saw that Krolik was bothering a child just because he bumped into Krolik. The boy asked Krolik to stop destroying his homework. But that doesn't matter to Krolik. Suddenly John punched Krolik and he fell to the ground. The boy collected his papers and ran away. John gave a lecture, and Krolik called him pitiful. Krolik, in his arrogance, tries to carry out a laser strike. John defended himself. John beat him more often. While hitting Krolik, the face of a beaten child appeared in John's mind. That was the second time he had experienced this. John tried to calm himself. John just ran away from Krolik. Krolik said names behind John's back. On the other side of the corridor, Eason saw what had just happened. Remy saw a story in the newspaper about Deathpool as she walked through the corridor. She read the names. Tears streamed down her face. She burned the paper with a jolt of lightning. Only the ecstatic remains intact. Remy knocks at the door. Elaine comes in and asks her about the reason she came to her place. She says that she wants to see Sarah. Elaine told her that Sarah was in her room. Sarah was sitting on the floor reading a magazine. Remy knocked on her door and asked her permission. Sarah allowed her to enter. When Remy enters the room, she feels that there is a chip inside the teddy bear. Sarah asked her about her purpose for coming. Remy first apologized for her absence last week, and she is thankful that Sarah stood in for her at the turf war. Sarah says that there is no need for this. He owed it to having to face the burden of a queen every day. Sarah called out to her, but Remy was thinking about the teddy bear. Remy mentions that there is something strange in her teddy bear, and that made Sarah look worried and surprised. Remy asks her permission to look inside the doll. Then she found a flashing chip and told Sarah that it was some kind of transmitter. He adds that someone is tracking Sarah. Sarah remembers that the man at the mall gave her the teddy bear and he may have placed the chip in all the presents he gave her. She guessed that he was targeting someone with high abilities. Remy asks her to stay alert now at the school where Eisen is sitting on the stairs. He summarized all the information he gathered from the people John met in the past. He concluded that John was nothing more than an ordinary person. Suddenly his brain kicks in and he compares all the information he got from yesterday's incident and gets all his information wrong. When he saw the opposite thing yesterday. So Eason tried to talk to John. John is shocked Eisen tells John that the school magazine will go write an article about low-level students. Therefore, he needed to ask John a few questions. John indicated willingness, but would do so later as class was about to start. Eisen put his arm on John's shoulder and ordered him to answer now. Eisen was happy that John came to be interviewed. John replies that he was dragged here against his will. Eisen told John that he was writing an article about people who have no abilities. So, John should be completely honest. John replied that it was a charitable act. Eisen asked John where he was born. And John replied that he was born in New Boston. Eisen said it was far from here. John said Wellston was his first real school. Meanwhile, he was educated at home. Before Eisen asked him his reason for switching, John said that his father was a bit overprotective before. But John wanted to have a real school experience, so he joined Wellston. Eisen asked about John's experience here so far. John answered that it had been quite terrible. Losers like him had no rights and people of high ability treated them as trash. Eisen further asked how John survived here. John replies that he keeps his profile low to avoid the others. Eisen asked John why he chose Wellston over other schools. John stated that the reason for choosing Wellston was because Wellston offered the best academic program. 
Eisen mentioned that Wellston is considered the most powerful school in terms of ability as well. So why would John take the risk to be here? He adds why his father had not warned him about this, about his previous environment, and how John persuaded him to be here. John is uncomfortable with this conversation and says that he came here to talk about the problem of disabled people and not about his personal life. Eason said that John was lucky that Sarah supported him and asked him to let go of his hand from Eason. Eisen leaves John here and goes looking for schools in New Boston on his laptop and finds a picture of John in a class group photo. He finally caught John's lie. In the library, Eisen shows John's photo to Blyke. Blyke asked what Eisen's reason was for looking for all this. Eisen remembered Arlo's warning. Then he changed the topic and reminded Blyke of the assignment. The librarian catches the two of them talking and kicks them out. Eisen reports to Arlo about his findings. She told him that John had lied about the preschool. He further said about this and that. And John's answers during the interview were full of lies. Arlo was shocked to see the photo. Eisen guessed that John must be lying about his abilities too. Arlo looks at the photo and says that he will handle the matter from here. Elaine receives a message from Arlo while she is studying in her room. She read the message happily. Arlo asks her to report to the principal about finding the book from Sarah. Elaine complied with the order, and Sarah was called to report to the office. Elaine was already here when Sarah entered the office and was glared at by Sarah, but Elaine avoided her. The principal asked Sarah to sit down. As the principal, she introduces as Miss Nadia, who will ask questions for Sarah. On behalf of the authorities, Miss Nadia explained the rules of interrogation. Sarah agrees. Miss Nadia asked Sarah about ownership of the book. Sarah answered yes. Miss Nadia asked where Sarah got it. Sarah mentions that the incident was followed by an invisible man and says when she got home she had this book in her bag. Miss Nadia asked Sarah another question, but she didn't answer it, and asked Miss Nadia to ask only relevant questions and not waste her time. Miss Nadia apologized for the personal question and asked where the book was now. Sarah said that she destroyed it. Miss Nadia asked if Sarah shared the contents of the book with other people. Sarah answered no. Miss Nadia asked something about Sarah's thoughts about the book. Sarah replies that the book idea doesn't make sense. Miss Nadia looked relieved and asked Sarah to leave the room. John took the class. When he received a message from Sarah to meet her, he ran to meet her when he saw her. She said that she had been suspended for one month. She said that she tricked Miss Nadia so John was safe. John mentions that Sarah should tell about the truth of the book because everything started because of him. Sarah tried to calm John down, if this is nothing. Now he complied and said goodbye. And John is going back to school. And Arlo had been watching it all through the window. He was waiting for this news to spread. John was walking outside the school building when Gavin classified him from behind. John recognized the voice. Gavin wants revenge. John runs from there, but Gavin chases him. John stops when Gavin kicks him from behind. John avoided it. John uses his martial arts. The trick pushed Gavin back and ran there. John throws his notebook at Gavin to distract him and runs away. Gavin sees him running and catches him using his own ability. He ran fast. He threw John to the ground and sat on him. Gavin got his revenge on John. John visited the doctor at the hospital. The doctor gave him a potion to cure John and asked the doctor about the reason for his smile. The doctor replies that he won the bet, as he knew that John would not escape the fight for long. After Sarah's suspension, John lies in bed. When he received a message from Sarah about his arrival at the hospital, John looked at his arm. The doctor said that his arm was almost completely healed. The doctor makes fun of John and thanks John that he can practice new potions every day. John went to class. When some students threatened him in the corridor, they wanted John as their practice target after school. John answered fearlessly that the three of them couldn't afford to hit him. Meanwhile, doctor comes there and warns them all. After the doctor left, they threatened John again and called him a loser, and then they left. But John thought about the comments he was getting, and the image of a girl with green hair came to mind. John became sad. On the other hand, Sarah enters her house. Her mother came to her and rebuked her, also called her reckless. She added that Sarah would also fail like her sister. Then she left the house. Sarah was sitting on her bed using her laptop 
when she received a message from John. John wanted to talk to Sarah, so he called her. Sarah answers the phone call made by John. She said that she already missed John. He smiled. John remembered that he forgot to do the homework from the teacher when he sat down to study. Sarah was also still talking to him on the phone. She sent homework to John. Sarah is also working on the laptop and says that her homework is easy. John asked about her family. Sarah said that her parents left for a trip and she was home alone. They even started playing games and the losers would do their homework. John loses and Sarah gives him tips for building a greenhouse. John replies that it doesn't make sense. How can a greenhouse be stronger than a wooden house? Sarah asks John if it was the developer's choice to deal with it. Sarah reminded John to sleep because he had school tomorrow, and it was already two o'clock, the next day at school. Meanwhile, John was walking in the corridor. Arlo grabbed him by the shoulders. Arlo thinks that John is not much affected by recent events. John asks Arlo to let him go. Arlo saw a message from Sarah that was opened on John's cell phone. He walked away silently thinking that John shouldn't have a way to talk to Sarah. At school, some random student again beats up John, and John went to visit Dr. Darren in the hospital. He was seriously injured this time. John says that he is not fighting this time. He just attacked. Dr. Darren asks John if he is tired of all this and John should find a way to avoid this incident. John just sat there in despair. He reaches for his phone to call Sarah, but it's broken. John wondered what he should do next. He was angry at those two students who attacked him today. He turns to walk out of the hospital, but Dr. Darren asks him to stop. John asks Dr. Darren to let him go. He said that he did not join the school all day and stayed in the hospital. Dr. Darren orders him not to take another step to step outside. John tells Dr. Darren not to worry about him this time. Dr. Darren forces him to stay. He didn't want any trouble. John was angry but went back to bed. While John was walking through the corridor, someone pushed him and his papers scattered on the ground. Everyone around started making fun of him. Remy also passes by where she suddenly sees John collecting papers. She moved to help him. She asked if John was okay. John recalled his memories and he subconsciously slapped her. Remy was shocked, and immediately John realized his mistake. Before John apologized, a black laser attacked him. He barely managed to escape the attack. She also asked for a reason to beat her. John accepts his guilt and says he mistook her for someone else. He asked Blyke to let him go and they walked away. John thinks that the book's hero is wrong. Not everyone has something of value to offer, especially Wellston students. When John reached home, he called Sarah and told her about his hard day. Sarah expressed regret. He started a game topic to lighten John's mood. John became happy. John felt better after talking to Sarah. Sarah's mother returns home and her maid welcomes her. She asked his maid about Sarah's behavior. The maid replied that she spent the whole day in her room. Sarah was playing a video game on the laptop and started buffering. She was surprised because it had never happened before. She goes to check Router. When she opened the door, he found her mother there. Her mother asked her for her phone because she was wasting time socializing with him. Mother taunts Sarah that she became a disgrace like her sister gave her. Sarah handed her phone to her mother, and her mother reminded her. Why was she sent home? She said that she had turned off the Wi-Fi. Sarah was shocked. John came home from school in a confused state. He opened the laptop and found Sarah offline. He wondered, but then started playing the game. He lost that game, it looks like he's stuck in this round. He thought about Sarah if he was still offline. The next day at school, as he is carrying his lunch, Hauer attacks him from behind. John strikes him in the face with his ankle, and Hauer begins to bleed. John says he is not in a good mood today, and leaves. When he goes to the roof, he finds Arlo there. He asks Arlo what he's doing here. Arlo thinks that order is natural. The weak tremble in fear of the strong. They associate with those of the same status, and it's the strongest among us who fight to climb to the top. Everyone has its rightful place in society. That is why hierarchy is natural, because humans will naturally gather with one frequency. But John went against this order. When John finds Arlo on the roof, he asks why he's there. As Arlo looked at John, he thought that he was different from the picture he had taken two years ago. 
Arlo decided to ask John a question. Arlo mentioned that this area was his, so John shouldn't be here. John ignores Arlo and sits down to eat lunch. Arlo finds John in an offensive manner. He asked John if he wasn't afraid of anything, to which John replied that there was nothing to be afraid of. Arlo tells John that he can kill him in just a few seconds. John replied that he could, but he wouldn't because he just simply wouldn't. Arlo sits down and asks John the reason for thinking that. So John replies he has one disobedient among all obedient. He points out the king did his job well, so Arlo should thank John. John finished his lunch and stood up. Arlo is still processing what John said, but John walks away from Arlo. Sarah felt hopeless. Meanwhile, Sarah was lying on her bed when her maid brings a book and reminds her to do her work. Sarah asked the reason why her maid brought her books. Maid replies that her parents want her to read it and make a report. Sarah thought this was torture. Sarah did this and succeeded, but she was tired. Sarah thought of the John she remembered when she beat John and had that thought. It wasn't him at all. His teacher assigned everyone a project. John apologizes to the teacher for being late to class because he was in the hospital. John looked angry. They were both surprised when the teacher made them partners for the project. They sit together and start fighting. Sarah said that she would complete the project alone. As if she didn't want John to ruin her grades, John thought that she was joking, but she was serious. She left John there and walked away. Sarah worked on the project while John continued to sleep. She handed him some notes for the presentation. John took a note and tore it up. He said that he came here to study and he had things prepared too. Sarah started her presentation about Hamlet after explaining some points which she asked John to explain further. John started, but it seemed he had read a different book. Sarah looks angry. He got a B. She got up and left during class. When John moved down the corridor, he heard whispers about Sarah's grades. John heard the students rate Sarah. He comes to Sarah in the library and offers to work together for the next part. Sarah got angry and threatened him if he didn't do what he said. John asked why it was so important for her to look perfect compared to others. Sarah replied that it wasn't John's concern. John said that he wouldn't do it, did what she said, and he didn't care that they both failed by doing that. Sarah asks, what is John's reason for this? John says that he doesn't care about people because he lives as himself. Sarah looked at him in despair. Sarah lay on her bed and thought about today's conversation with John. He thought John was delusional and closed her eyes. The next day at the library, she was surprised to see John already working on a project. Sarah sat on the chair opposite which they both considered for themselves. After some time, Sarah asked John to share the work he has done till now he doesn't like it. Then he told about his mistake. John said that the language in the book was difficult for them to understand. The two worked together. John fell asleep and Sarah woke him up and asked him to get up and go back to work. Even after all Sarah's hard work, it got a negative score. He is sad. John came to him. He was happy to get that mark. Sarah said it was in the negative meaning they weren't performing well. He left John there and walked away. Sarah was walking through the corridor when she heard John scolding two girls who were talking about Sarah. The girls asked John to shut up and insult Sarah, but John still defended Sarah. One of the girls suddenly attacked John. Sarah beats the girl. The other girl gets scared and runs away. She apologizes. John thanked Sarah. In the library, John asked Sarah to explain a point she couldn't understand. Sarah was surprised that she didn't expect John to ask the question. He was helping John before the presentation. Sarah and John sat down together but remained silent. Sarah observed that John was nervous, so she asked, and John replied that he wanted to do well this time and don't want to drag Sarah down. Sarah taunted him. Sarah asked him not to think about it and focus on the presentation. Sarah started presenting the first part of their presentation in front of the teacher, and John explained the second part. When Sarah got the result she got was an A+. He was shocked by it. He asked John about the result. John also got an A+. John finished about this achievement and asked Sarah to celebrate it. Sarah wasn't too happy because the final grade would still be a negative. John said that they both had to work hard at it, and they should celebrate it. Dan says that he will be in the library, but John tells him to study, but to relax, too. They went to a cafe to drink boba. Sarah feels great, and her life feels beautiful.
to celebrate him once in his life. The maid wakes up Sarah. She asks Sarah that she is here to collect work. Sarah replies that she isn't finished yet. The maid hadn't mentioned that Sarah's parents had arranged an internship for her, so Sarah and she had to prepare for her interview tomorrow. Sarah mentioned it was a very short time. To prepare him to return to his duties, John returns home. He is disheartened by his current routine. He starts kicking and punching the punching bag with anger. Everything seemed worthless to John until the Sarah crossed his mind. He suddenly calmed down and he started crying. He opened the laptop and found Sarah was offline. It's been almost a week since they spoke to him, and John wondered where Sarah could go and what she should do. He called his father. Her father asks about her phone. John said that it was damaged by falling down the stairs. His father told him that he would send him some money to buy a new phone. Now his father asked the reason for the call that John had requested. He asked his father to send him another unusual Silanan to John. His father refused because there was no more Silanan left. John cancels the call in anger and turns off his laptop. The next day, Ison sees John and guesses that Arlo's plan worked. John began to show his true colors. Professor Keene visits the headmaster in his office. On TV, the announcer tells the news of Ember's murder of another superhero. The principal asks him about his thoughts on the murders. At this point, Keene replied that it was difficult to guess Ember's goal. Maybe they are trying to send a message to the others to stop the opposition. It wasn't easy to kill someone with high abilities. The principal mentions that Ray and the king before Arlo were also killed last month. Keen was surprised to hear this headmaster say that it was because he also had presumptions about the UN ordinary. Keen wonders about Ember's powers. The principal says that they have to take a careful step in the school. He made Keen head as security and asked him to keep an eye on the surroundings. Eason looked down from the window where some students were bullying John. John tells them not to touch anyone else who attacked John. John caught him and broke his arm. Other students rushed to attack John. Suddenly John's eyes lit up. As the other students attacked John, he stood up with his eyes flashing and memories appearing in his mind. In that case, the memory of a girl kneeling before. John asked the girl how she could think of taking John down. He called the girl Claire. She asks Claire the reason for turning everyone against her. Flair punches John and replies that John is being selfish now and he always gets hurt. He adds that John does not deserve to have this power. He is a monster. John was surprised by this answer. John becomes increasingly angry and his memories of Claire disappear. And John returned to reality. He's calm now. When Alina attacked John, John stopped him and punched him in the stomach. At the same time, Rooker attacked John with his beam. John tries to think of a plan to escape from the Rooker and run, but a cunning attack him from behind. Tanner found his chance and threw a punch at John. John fell to the ground. Elena also attacks John to capture him for revenge. John was seriously injured. He grabbed her hair. Tanner makes fun of John. Suddenly John's vision blurred again. Elena tried to punch John, but shields appeared around John's arms. Elena is injured. Tanner looked taken aback by the barrier that had suddenly appeared. Arlo stood on the other side. The side he walked towards them. John is surprised to see Arlo as well as Tanner, who apologizes to Arlo because he has to testify. He said that John was bothering them. Therefore, they taught him a lesson. Arlo traps Tanner in a barrier. Tanner asks why. Arlo continued to shrink the barrier over Tanner and asked who had given him the right to speak. Arlo called John and helped him up and led him away. Arlo asks John if he has the strength to fight them, but why hasn't he been fighting them all this time? Arlo takes John to the hospital. He sits by John's bed and reads the newspaper that he reads Eisen's name as the top story writer, and she is impressed by him. Meanwhile, John has a nightmare. In his nightmare, John was sitting outside where there were overcast clouds with the wind howling. Adrian called John, and John asked why Adrian stuttered. John caught him and threatened him to vomit anything. It was Adrian who mentioned Claire. She heard him talking to someone about his dream about John reaching the top. Therefore, she approached John when he was weak. John relies on thought. John thought it was a joke and he didn't believe Adrian and hit him. Adrian asked John to believe. She as Claire had only used it from the start. John asked Adrian to shut up and beat him again. His nose was bleeding. 
Adrian asked John to open his eyes and pay attention to what was happening around him. John asked Adrian to leave his sight and not waste his time. Then John remembered being attacked by Claire and the others. He remembers beating Claire too and he wakes up from his nightmare. And he sat looking at Arlo who was sitting next to him reading a newspaper. He hits Arlo and asks why he helped John. He asks Arlo about his motives behind saving John's life. Arlo replies to John that he is not the center of the world, so he shouldn't be so delusional. He asked John to wake up and think about who he had just hit. He said that John was lucky because he was not impulsive. He stands up and tells John that he hates people who forget their place. Arlo warns John the next time John hurts him. Arlo will not be so tolerant with John. Arlo leaves John there. John wondered about his current behavior. As Arlo closes the door from the hospital, his cell beeps. He gets a text that Aizen has followed Arlo. As Aizen passes through the corridor, she thinks about what she saw and how Arlo saved John. He guessed that Arlo knew about John, too. Suddenly, Arlo came in front of Aizen. He tries to run, but Arlo calls him loudly. Aizen pretended that he didn't see Arlo there. Arlo asks why Eason is still spying on John even after he asked him to stop. Arlo tells Eason that he knows about him looking for new stories for school. Eason asks Arlo to keep the newspaper, because he didn't want his story stolen. Arlo offers him a deal which he gives in two weeks to find out everything about John. Before Sarah came back and promised him that his story would be on the front page. Eason agreed to this deal. In his room, Eisen was looking for something on his laptop. He finds John's old school transcripts. Suddenly, Blight came from behind and congratulated him, and his story was on the front page. Eisen tries to hide, but Blight sees John's picture on his laptop. He advises Eisen to spend more time with Remy instead because he was very quiet after Ray's death. But Eisen didn't show any concern towards him. Blake asks Eisen to pretend he cares. At least Eisen suggested taking Remy for a walk this weekend to refresh his mind. Blake agrees to the plan and leaves. Eisen returns to his research and learns that John was kicked out of his previous school. He got the reason John was kicked out was due to excessive violence. Eisen was shocked to read things about John. He hurt half his class alone, for no reason. Arlo was standing on the roof when John opened the door and found him there. John asks Arlo for his permission. Arlo allows John to sit beside Arlo. Arlo asks why John is sitting like him. Then he said earlier that it would be fast. Arlo asks him to hurry up. John says that he wants to thank Arlo for saving his life and apologize for punching him. At that time, he was not himself. When he wakes her up, John appreciates Arlo for helping him so much. People don't do it for him like John. Arlo clarifies that he didn't do it to be friends with John. He helped him because four against one didn't seem like a fair fight to him. Arlo says if they had fought them separately, they wouldn't have done it. He had opposed John. John said that it was possible. He doesn't go this way because he is disabled, and he will always be at the bottom. He says goodbye to Arlo and leaves. Arlo calls him a liar because John is not disabled. John ignored him and ran away. Eisen walked into the corridor and thought about John's expulsion. He reviewed his transcript and found out that he was not expelled for hitting his classmate. He was expelled because the school couldn't control him anymore. Eason decides to keep this a secret even from Arlo. As Jan's reaction could be dangerous after this news got out, he decides to avoid Arlo for a week. But Arlo catches him from behind. At the same time, Eason turned around and found Arlo. Arlo put a barrier around them so Eason didn't run away. Arlo asks why Eason doesn't return his calls for the past. A few days ago, Eason said that he didn't have much. She hasn't told him, but Arlo calls her a liar. Eason said he dropped his story and wanted to pretend this investigation never happened. It seems like it's the best for everyone. Eason said that Jan might have a reason for hiding his abilities, so they shouldn't provoke him. Arlo said that Jan wasn't in the right place. Eisen accidentally says that he shouldn't bother Arlo. Arlo slammed Eisen, and he couldn't compete with Arlo. Arlo reminds Eisen that he is the boss here and asks him again, and he denied. He asked for the reason for the rejection. Eisen said that he would blow it up when he found out, but he was more afraid of John's reaction to this. Arlo let go of Eisen. 
Arlo said that he would get to the bottom of it. This is even without the help of Isen. Eason tried to stop him, as he didn't want them all to get into trouble. John walked through the corridor and had some papers in his hand. He recalled his last chat with Arlo. Then he pushed this thought out of his mind, because such things made him even angrier. John collided with Arlo again at a corner in the corridor, and the paper fell. He was apologetic, but Arlo was using that for an excuse. Now John sat down and collected his papers. Arlo found the way John presented himself to be a very depressing way. He dropped his binder and asked John to use it so he wouldn't get embarrassed. At that time, John refused it again, but he took it. But Arlo orders him to keep it. John offers Arlo a drink after their school trip for Boba. John asks Arlo if he's been there before. Arlo answered no. John suggested Arlo try mango tea, but Arlo ordered coffee. John ordered the waiter to bring two mango teas and coffee. John said if he paid the bill. The waiter was confused. Arlo orders him to bring a cup of coffee and adds the bill to his name. The news announcer on TV told the news about a secret project carried out by the NX Gen Company. They were working for a private company, but the project was postponed. Because a very important incident occurred, and data was still stolen. John drank the coffee he ordered and ignored the mango tea. John tells him that he warned Sarah because she was stubborn. Started as Arlo now. Arlo mentions Sarah and John seems quite close to her. John explained the story of their friendship from the beginning. Arlo asks John where he learned to fight like he does. John replies that his father taught him to fight like that so John could defend himself. Arlo asked if John's father was also disabled. John answered yes and said that his father was the nicest man. He did the best with what he had. John asked Arlo whom Arlo admired. Arlo named Ray after she was very strong and likable, but she died. Arlo placed his share of the bill on the table and left John. He was shocked. He called Arlo from behind and asked him to take this mango tea with him. Sarah was working on her project when suddenly she threw her book. Maid comes and tells him about how she was rejected by the internship company. He tells Sarah that his father is disappointed with him and wants him to work harder. It's the weekend, and Eisen takes Remy out to see a movie. He asked Eisen about the tickets. Eisen shows him the tickets for a romantic movie, and Remy arrives there. First go to the supermarket for shopping. Arlo can't decide which pen to take. Remy throws a ball at Blyke and asks him to guess who it is. He threw the ball back to Remy. Meanwhile, Eason is still busy deciding which pen to buy. When Remy throws ball on his back and asks him to join them. Then they went to the cinema at Kovoro Mall to watch emotional films. Scene plays on screen and they all start crying. After watching the movie, they wandered around the mall. Like looking at the same ability metering kiosk and reading about the rewards and they both decided to play a game to get a prize. Dan idly and dragged Remy to the counter. He plays the game. The man counter takes Remy's hand and gives him a score of five. He gifts Remy to her. Remy recognizes the teddy bear and opens it. He finds the same chip. The man at the counter was shocked. Then Isen and Blyke asked the man to explain it. The man replied that he did not know. He was as surprised as they were. He admitted that he was only told by his boss to give him the gift, and the man didn't know that there was a chip inside. Eason knew that he was lying by checking his pulse. Eisen also ordered him to come with them. The person dropped a smoke bomb there, and walking using the smoke, the person freed himself. Eisen asked Blyke to clear the smoke, and they saw that the man was not at the counter. Eisen found him running through the exit. They all ran after him to catch him. A security guard received a report that three teenagers had recently used smoke bombs, and now they were all heading for the west exit. The security guard also asked that the three teenagers be arrested and were heading to the parking area. Eisen pointed at the motorbike, but there was no one on the motorbike. It runs itself. After making sure that the bike was within range, he attacked the bike he was riding on. Bike riders fall. He ran to reach it, but a security guard attacked him. When he touches Remy with his stun gun, and he faints, and the person on the motorbike was gone, the security guard grabbed Remy and led him to the security room. Eisen and Blyke were already there and in handcuffs. They alerted security they were from the Wellston school and asked to check the cameras to find out the real story. Then they explained that security had caught them wrong. What happened was, 
They caught the man who was in the mall earlier because he did something suspicious and questioned her. Suddenly, he dropped smoke bombs on them. Guard security knows the real story, then checks what kind of CCTV they suggest. Ison looked at the handcuffs and thought that he could easily remove these handcuffs. Blyke tells him not to, because they would be in serious trouble if they did. He said that these handcuffs were not designed for people like them. He reminds them of the reason why he got caught by security, even if they could beat them easily. He added that it serves as a reminder for them not to cross the line. The security guard checked the security camera footage and found that the children were not lying. After this incident, he also found someone who took the teddy bear from the counter and then disappeared and is now on the hunt. Blyke, Eason, and Remy are talking. Remy tells them that he knows the power of authority. But what if someone like Arlo or Sarah were to challenge them? Eason said that it was dangerous for the authorities to let such people with that much power roam freely. The security guard said they don't have that much freedom. Freedom as they think. Hearing that, they remembered Sarah and Arlo who could do whatever they wanted. But Remy tells them that they are both obsessive. He probably mentioned Sarah as an example that she always worked hard to achieve consummation, and Arlo is always busy maintaining order. They were both so caught up in the responsibilities they had, and what they don't have is time. To question authority is almost like they become disabled people, added Eisen, and the fact that the authorities need a reliable way to guard them, because it is a mysterious killer group, those who went against the authority mentioned by Eisen because he wrote the article about Ember because Remy wanted the others at school to know about the relationship between authority and Ember. Then the security guard came and declared them innocent. He asked them to report the incident to someone in authority. At Sarah's house, a house assistant brought more books for Sarah. Her father gave orders to complete the task before leaving in the morning. His father begged him not to disappoint his parents this time. As she left him, Sarah threw the book away. He thought about how John would be able to handle difficult things even if he was disabled. If he can do this, why is he who is not a disabled person, why can't he? The next day, his assistant came to his room and saw him using a laptop. He asks her to do housework, but Sarah replied that she didn't want to do it. His assistant also asked for a reason. Sarah answered that she didn't want to do it. He stood up and was about to say that to his mother directly. The assistant stops her saying she will do it and relays the message to which Sarah angrily replies that she will do it herself. He arrived in front of his mother's room. He opened the door and found his mother sitting on the sofa. Her mother asks what she is doing here instead of doing her homework. Sarah replies that she won't. Doing those tasks. And he said he didn't want to be treated like that in his house. He said that he wanted to be free. Her mother scolds her and asks her not to be selfish like her sister. Sarah replies that now she realizes why her sister Layla ran away from here, because his brother couldn't stand it. Her mother asked her to cover her mouth and slapped her, but Sarah grabbed his hand and stopped him. Her mother wondered how she could stop it. Sarah said that she was faster than her mother. His mother froze, and Sarah said that she would go back to Wellston tomorrow. His mother said he wasn't going anywhere. Sarah threatens him that he will run away too. In the image, her mother would have had her two daughters ran away. He gave his mother time to think. He came out and was happy that he finally did it. The next day, Blyke and Eisen were checking the front page of a newspaper. A news item was mentioned there about these three. Eisen was sad because his story was not published on the front page. Somehow at the same time, they were called to report to the principal's office. He asked them about the article. They explained the whole story about what happened at the mall. Principal appreciates them for their bravery but tells them that they are not allowed to use their powers outside of school freely because it can damage the reputation of the school. He gave them a warning and let them go this time. And Eason relaxes, but Remy thinks that someone keeps spying on them. Arlo was on the roof when the door opened, and John came in telling him it was good to see him again. He asks if Arlo enjoys mango tea. Arlo says no. He asks John what he is doing here. He said that he was just getting some fresh air before next class. Arlo reminds him that this place is not for him. John said that it didn't matter, because he was a person who was thrown away a long time ago. He asks why Arlo comes to this place so often. He replied that here is a quiet place, 
so it can help him clear his mind. John remembered sitting alone. After the two of them stood in silence, then John remembered that he had a class to attend. Before leaving, he asked Arlo, Is he free after class? He replies that he has some important things to do. John asked if he could join him, and he will help him. John didn't wait for an answer and left telling her to meet him at the school gate. Arlo thinks that John is a stubborn child and he still waits for him at the school gate after class. Arlo and John take a train to go somewhere, but John doesn't know where they are going. He asks Arlo about it. Arlo replies that John will find out soon. Sarah arrived at the airport. He called John, but his number was not active. He guessed that John didn't have a new phone yet. On the other hand, Arlo takes John to the Wellston Turf War location. John is shocked and reminds him that he is not cut out for the Turf War. Arlo asked him to relax while he was here, and if he met someone here and John, he didn't have to fight back. John followed him to a location where Ventus and Mei Li were waiting for them. John was surprised after seeing them there. John recognizes that it was the two of them who broke his phone. John asks Arlo what's going on here. Arlo comes to them to talk and orders them to lock up John. Instantly, John was shocked. They both ran towards him and attacked him. Suddenly, memories appeared before John's eyes, where he was in a condition where he was betrayed by a close friend he trusted. He attacked his shoulder, and the attack was started by Ventus with sonic boom skill on him. John was bleeding and he fell to the ground. Mei Li pointed her claws at John's neck. He looked at Arlo, who looked happy. Ventus grabbed John by the head and made him bow before Arlo. Then Arlo reminds him that Ventus and Mei Li, they are the ones who broke his phone and they did it on orders from Arlo. He said that he only brought John otherwise. How could someone with his status be a friend of a disabled person? He actually really hated it. Another memory flashed through John's mind. In this case, he gets a letter from Claire to meet him in the field. He goes there and finds that Claire betrayed him. He came back to reality. Arlo tells him that he brought John here to finish him off, and there's no one around here to save him, and he was completely helpless. He added whatever happened to John in the past. Those few weeks were at his will. This made John angry. He remembered that he came here to have a new life. If he doesn't hurt anyone here, then how could all this happen to him? He remembers all the events and says that he is not a monster like the rest of them. Arlo taunts him, John gets angry, and suddenly he uses his abilities to push them away. And John stood up. He finally showed his true strength. Ventus and Mei Li were very surprised because they thought John was disabled, but Arlo was still smiling. When he found out, John ran to attack him, and especially to block his attacks. He pushes her away and she falls to the ground. He attacks her again, but Ventus uses his storm attack and again knocks her out. But he used storm attack again and start flying. Ventus and Mei Li decide to attack John together using their combined abilities. They both fight it. Yet he nearly killed them. Then he turned to Arlo. Now Arlo has finally discovered John's secret. John attacks Arlo, but he blocked it. John attacked him again with more force. She traps him in a storm and runs to attack him with her claws. Arlo says that it's bullshit if he thinks this little trick will make him use the barrier. John flies in the air using the wind. It was power and downward attack. Arlo was still standing like that. He thought that if he activated the barrier, John would use it. He only has one shot to take him down. He activated the barrier. John was injured, but still he broke the barrier by throwing a punch at Arlo. He stood on his feet again. Arlo traps him inside the barrier and destroys it. His barrier shrinks, but John creates his own by copying Arlo's power. And that really surprised Arlo. John tried to break his barrier and he finally broke it. Arlo's strength became weak from using that much power and putting an attack on him. John immediately hit him and slammed him to the ground. He traps Arlo in a barrier and hits him hard. John attacks Arlo, but Arlo grabbed her hand and tried to break it. John hits him on the head and Arlo falls to the ground. John put his shoe on his face and pressed it. John warns him to keep this secret and whatever happens here. And if he leaked it, then he would kill him. Elaine got there as fast as she could. He ran towards Arlo. He asks her what happened to them. Arlo asks Elaine to heal Meili and Ventus. He began to use his healing powers to heal them. He tried to understand the reason for these injuries. Arlo coughs badly. He asks Arlo if he is okay. He asks her not to worry about him. 
and focus on healing Mei Li and Ventus. He asks about Arlo what's going on here. He replied that it was better for him not to know. He asks her to promise him to keep this incident a secret. And Elaine agrees. John walked towards the house. He is angry because he was betrayed by Claire and Arlo, whom he thought he trusted. He threw his bag on the ground. Sarah, who was sitting in front of the door, heard a voice. He noticed John and called out to him. John is in shock and he takes his bag. He smiled at John. He threw himself to the ground. She ran to him and asked what happened. John replayed the whole incident in his head. He asks Sarah not to look at him as he looks pitiful. Sarah helped him up and led him into the house. She asked him what happened when he was not here. John lay on the sofa. Then Sarah called Elaine to ask for her help to heal John's injuries. Elaine also received a call from Sarah while treating Arlo, and Arlo was surprised when he heard Sarah's voice on the phone. Elaine agrees to come to meet Sarah. After the call ends, she asks Arlo if he will be okay without her. So he left Arlo and took his arm and reminded him of his promise. Sarah scooped up cold water in a glass and touched John's neck with it. He reminds her that he is hurt. Sarah told him that Elaine would be here soon. He offered the water to John, who drank it. Then he asked what happened to him. John replied that it was the same as everyone who had been after him since he left. Sarah says that she has never seen her crumble like this. In front of John, he said that he was fine now, and he didn't expect him back so soon. He changed the subject and asked her where she was. He wasn't online for a long time. John says that he is worried about her because she disappeared without notice. Then Sarah told her story and she would stay here with him. He asked her again about the situation. John said that he was bullied a lot and just didn't want her to see him like that. But now things are going back to normal. The doorbell rings. Elaine was at the door and she was out of breath. He apologized for taking so long to come. Sarah called him. He also apologized for complaining to the principal. Sarah said that everything was fine. Elaine was surprised to see John and asked what he was doing here. John said it was his house. Sarah asked him to heal the wounds suffered by John. However, John felt that Elaine's energy had decreased. Before Elaine asks him to show her his other arm, he refuses saying that he will heal it in the hospital tomorrow. He said that he would not leave until his work was done. He grabbed John's arm. He found his wounds familiar. He connected the pieces and solved the puzzle. She was shocked John grabbed her mouth and asked her to shut up. Sarah came out of the room and did not find Elaine. There was only John saying that something urgent was coming up, so Elaine left. The next morning at school, Arlo enters the corridor and thinks about yesterday's events. But someone is spying on Arlo in the hospital. Darren and Keen are enjoying snacks by making a sharp joke. Darren then asked why Keen always sat in his office. Keen tells him about his investigation and hasn't found anything. He said that all his hopes were in that school. And in the current situation, Tadalk is so good. The principal wants to keep it a secret. Keen then asks him about Darren's new girlfriend. Darren said that it was nothing serious, but Arlo interrupts their conversation. Darren asked what happened to his face. Arlo replies that he isn't here to talk about it. He wants to get better, so no one knows about it. Keen asks who did this to her. Arlo replies that it doesn't matter because he has all the control. Darren gives him a potion to heal his wounds. Arlo thanks him and leaves after him. And that makes Darren and Keen wonder what happened to Arlo. He named John. Darren reminds him that he once played a disabled person, but he seems like he doubts it too. And Eisen discuss the lecture. Suddenly they hear someone talking about Arlo visiting the hospital with a facial injury. And that made Eisen surprised. In the press room, Remy calls Cecil to ask what the name of the anonymous author is. Cecil replied that the author did not want his name to be published. Remy says he has no good intentions, apart from Cecile refusing to give her name, where she says that she is the queen. And he demanded this information which was shown to Cecil with arrogance and said he wouldn't tell anyone about it at any cost. Cecile says that Repair holds the title, but she has no authority. He taunts that he didn't and acts according to his title. As he continues hanging out with Ison and Blyke, he listens but doesn't say anything until Cecil mentions Ray and calls Remy delusional because of him. This angered Remy, and he asked Cecil to shut his mouth. Cecile says that Ray doesn't care about hierarchy, and he considers everyone to have the same responsibility. He added that Ray left school because he was making a mess. 
Remy replies that Ray didn't make a mess. He helps everyone. On the other hand, Cecile said that kindness is not appreciated in this world. Whereupon, he left the room in despair. Arlo is walking down the corridor when he gets a message from Remy and he wants to meet her. Ezen watched John. He saw that there were two people bullying him. John called them trash. In return for angering them before they attacked him, Eason made him flee. He just had to keep John calm until Sarah came back for him, and he met Arlo in the park. Arlo tells him that he was too late to say that he lost. Arlo asks her about the incident at the mall. He said that it was no big deal. Arlo tells him to be careful about the school's reputation, but he had bigger issues to discuss right now. He believed that someone was chasing them that day. Then he asks Arlo about the rumors he heard about Arlo. There are a lot of ridiculous rumors now. He hesitated because there were too many he was following. He asks about the details of what happened at the mall. He mentioned everything that happened. Arlo says that if he was right, then the anonymous author would have to be Cecile. It seems they are targeting everyone with high abilities in Wellston. He was shocked because Arlo was also followed by rumors about him being injured, which turned out to be true. He asks why she didn't tell him. Arlo says he'll tell you everything when the time is right. He started crying like he was scared. Arlo calms him down and is now thinking about getting to the bottom of this problem. A plane lands at the airport. John's father, who had just arrived at the airport, was reading the address where John lives. At school, Arlo is walking with his fellow students down the corridor. But he didn't listen to their conversation. John hit him again. Arlo ignores him, but his partner pulls John back and scolds him. Before he punched John, Arlo took his hand and pretended that he didn't want to waste time on disabled people. He thought that John was disgusting, like he wasted his powers by pretending to be a disabled person. And he corrupted Sarah with his ideology. Eisen watches this all and calls this battle too complicated to handle. At John's house, Sarah was sitting on the sofa. When the doorbell rang and the door opened, I thought it was John. But in fact, it was John's father who came. They shook hands and each introduced themselves. Sarah and William were chatting when John opened the door and saw his father at his house. He gets shocked and asks her, what is she doing here? William said he was here to see if John was okay like he didn't answer any calls from her. John told Sarah that he wanted some private time with his father to chat. He almost dragged his father out of the house and they sat outside. William reprimanded John for not answering his calls. He said that John was living with a girl. John explained that it was Sarah, and he had no other choice he asked his father about his conversation with Sarah. William replied that he was asking which one of you was stronger. John answered this question he was angry and asked about Sarah's response. William said he didn't take it seriously. He breathed a sigh of relief. Then William asked why he was acting shady. John explained that he plays the role of a disabled person here. William asked the reason for this nonsense. He said it back because the Bostonians always talk about strength and called him unworthy of this. Hence he chose this lifestyle and it suited him. William said that when he planned to tell Cyrus that he couldn't hide it forever. At night, William is sleeping while John and Sarah are doing their homework. William wakes up and tells them he didn't come here to see his son do his homework. He called him to play cards with him. As a father, William is a cool person. William, John, and Sarah were playing cards at night. Sarah remembers the rules of the game of poker. The aim of the game is to make the highest ranking five cards with any combination of two cards in hand. Players bet chips based on how high they are. In the end, it is the player with the highest hand that wins. They start the game. Sarah thinks that she has the highest pair, so he placed his bet. William and John also hitched. Ira tried to read John's smile and upped the ante, and looks confident. Sarah was confused. He tried to read the card combination, which was also raised with a bet from William. Sarah's nervousness increased. He folded John and William. Check their cards. William wins. William knew that John was bluffing. Sarah tells them that they both bullied her. He could have won because he had the highest hand. William comforts Sarah and says that he will do it and learn quickly. He shares his lesson with Sarah that a big part of winning poker is how he presents himself and how confident others perceive him to be, that is key. They keep playing, 
They went to sleep lying on the bed. Sarah thought about William's lessons that he gave her. He got his reasons. John has a strong attitude as he applies the rules of poker to real life. John wakes up early to finish his homework. He shouted after finishing it. William woke up to this noise and asked him to keep his voice low. John said that he just left. There is a sandwich shop close to the house. Sarah also woke up because of this noise. William said he would go running to stay in shape. He asks if she wants to join, but she doesn't seem interested. At school, Arlo visits Cecile in the press room. He said that he wanted some information. What he asked about the anonymous author. He replies that Arlo continues to like Remy and that it will ruin him. He also called Ray bad words. This makes Arlo angry. He reminds Cecil that he is not noble, and he should respect him instead of ridiculing him. He asked her again the author's name. He replies that it was taken from Terence. Sarah and William went to a sandwich shop. William likes the taste of sandwiches. He thanks Sarah for showing him around the city. Sarah asks him about the inspiration behind his book. William said that it's when she's in a helpless state like hers that the world feels unfair. He talked about his childhood and his thoughts on having a world open to everyone. He calls it childish. But he is glad that many people agree with this idea. Sarah asks if the book is about herself and why she dedicated it to John. He said John was a problem child and he didn't listen to him. So she thought this was the way to get in touch with John. After he said that, he became relieved now. John thanked Sarah for taking care of John. William left after spending one night with John. Because of his editor, he wouldn't let him go for long. He asks John to take care of himself because he still doesn't trust him. But he was glad John had a friend with him. Sarah told William that his story was very inspiring. They both hug. Before leaving, he warns John to reveal his secret to Sarah. Otherwise, things will get worse. He replied he would find out. William said goodbye and left Sarah, who was sitting on the sofa and was using her cell phone. As John sat beside him after finishing his own assignment, he asked if he should review John's assignment, but he refused. He asks Sarah if she is excited to come back to school tomorrow. He said no. He said that he would return to an environment where everyone did not judge him unfavorably. John became sad. Sarah senses it and tells him he was just kidding. He said he would miss freedom. He's had it this past week. At Sarah's house, Keon and his assistant Xander receive a visit from the authorities. The maid said that Master and Madam were not at home and they would come back next week. So they can come back next week. Keon says that he is here to ask Sarah some questions before she joins school tomorrow. The maid replies that Sarah is not at home either. The next day at the hospital, Keen asked about her date. Darren said that never happened as his girlfriend was sent on a two-week trip by his company on short notice. Elaine was passing through the corridor when she saw Arlo come in front of her. He tried to avoid it. Arlo noticed this and called out to him. Elaine reasons that she didn't see him coming. Arlo asks if he's okay. Like her appearance, a worried Elaine says she just did. There was something on her mind and she would talk to him later. Arlo asks him angrily why he is acting so strange. He said he was just processing what happened that day. He tells Arlo that when Sarah called him that day, she was at John's house. And he wants her to cure John. That's how he guessed that it was John fighting Arlo. As they experienced. Someone spied on their conversation. Blaine tells Arlo that he is afraid of John. His gaze that day was evil. She felt there was something scary about John, and she didn't want anything to get involved between John and Arlo. He wasn't strong enough to defend himself. Arlo tells her not to worry. John will not act if his secret is not revealed. At the same time, Arlo's feeling that someone is listening to their conversation silently. Sarah came out of Boba's Waba. After getting a drink and walking towards the house when a girl with golden hair followed him. The girl with golden hair called Sarah and asked her when she forgot her phone. Someone is targeting Sarah from a distance. The girl looked after him. He was involved in the conversation so he didn't leave it behind. Sarah felt a sensation and her phone fell to the ground. What he felt was awkward. Then he bent down to pick up his phone. He was wondering what had just happened. He thanked Sarah and left instantly. As he walked home, he felt his hands shaking. Suddenly a van came, and someone tried to hit it from behind. He used his abilities and barely escaped. 
It just so happened that he felt that he was working. Slowly, some people came out of the van and apologized to him. Sarah says she is fine. One of the men drags him and asks him to come to the hospital with them. Sarah asks them to leave her while a man appears from behind and injects something into her neck. Sarah attacks them all using her abilities. He asked one of them what they wanted. He told him to come with them willingly or they would take him by force. Meanwhile, one of the men stabbed him with a knife again. Sarah finds out that these people are trying to kill her, so she attacks the girl and kills her. He pulled the knife from his back. The injection had somehow stopped his healing abilities. He froze his injured back, then he turned to the other two attackers. He cut their throats with the same knife. The last person opens the portal and runs it. Finding that the clots were starting to reduce on their own, he had an injection which had done a lot of damage to him. He lost focus, so he tried to get out of there. He walked among the injured people and tried to carefully ask one person if he needed any help. Sarah can't trust anyone now, so she asks him to leave. He felt weak, so he ran home. When John returned home, he saw blood on the door handle. John, who saw Sarah, felt shocked. John picked up Sarah and tried to wake her up. He noticed that he was bleeding. He called Elaine from the phone. Elaine answered the phone, but because she heard John's voice, she immediately hung up. He didn't want to hear her voice. John found Arlo's name in Sarah's emergency contact. And he contacted him. When Arlo answered the phone, he heard that John B. asked Elaine to come to his house. Arlo asks the reason, but he just shouts to take her now. Arlo called Elaine after they had been at John's house for some time. What they also got was shocked when they saw Sarah. Dan asked John what happened to him. He thought that John had done it. She screamed at him and called him a bastard. John slapped him and asked him to shut his mouth. John tells her that he called her here not to listen to her bullshit. He was here to heal Sarah, so he might as well do it. Elaine uses her abilities to heal the injured Sarah. Meanwhile, Arlo is thinking about how someone can defeat Sarah. It is impossible. Elaine says she's done. John asked why Sarah wasn't awake yet. Elaine says something is wrong with her, and she can't understand this as it is beyond her ability. John tries to hit him again by calling him useless, but Arlo grabs his hand and tells him to find his own way out. John asked Arlo to let go of his hand. John sat beside Sarah and scanned for more wounds using his ability. He finds needle marks on his neck. John asks Arlo what it is. Arlo replies that someone probably drugged him, therefore he couldn't wake up. He just wanted to know who did this to him. He lifted Sarah in his arms and carried her to the bedroom. Elaine tries to chase them, but Arlo stops her and asks her to leave them. John sat in a chair near his bed and said that he would find the person who did this. Arlo sat on the sofa outside the bedroom. He thought that Sarah never needed medical attention and now she was in this state. Whoever did this to him must have slowed his reflexes. And he has healing abilities, and he could be a threat to all of them. Elaine brings water for Arlo, but he refuses to say so. He's not thirsty. He sits down next to her and asks if she's okay because she seems a little cautious lately. John is very strong. Arlo twisted his neck and answered that as long as his secret was safe, John wouldn't do anything. It was past midnight everyone was sleeping inside John's house. When a van passed near his house, the van pulls up outside John's house. They watched the insiders and found everyone sleeping. One of them enters the house. Suddenly he opens his eyes and sees someone attacking Arlo. He defended her and stuck a knife in her arm. Arlo wakes up and catches the intruder in the barrier. Elaine took out a knife and healed the wound and it slowly healed. He recognized the knife and told Arlo because it was the same Sarah with him. Arlo asks him to explain. The second intruder secretly came to Sarah's room. John heard the voice. He turns off the lights and asks Arlo what happened. He told John that they had found the person who attacked Sarah. John couldn't believe that the attacker had come back. He saw that Arlo's barrier lit up, but he couldn't feel it. Arlo asks the intruder's reason for attacking Sarah. He replied that he would not say anything. Arlo wondered why the intruder didn't try so hard to extricate himself. Suddenly they all heard a crash. John and Elaine ran to Sarah's room to check on her. Arlo knocks the intruder unconscious. John saw someone carrying Sarah jump out the window. He tried to activate the barrier, but the ability wasn't working, so he jumped to follow the man. John goes after him, but he is almost to the van when Arlo activates a barrier to stop him. 
John ran towards the kidnapper. He put a knife to Sarah's neck. Dan asks John not to use his and Arlo's abilities to remove this barrier, otherwise he will kill him. John didn't take the warning seriously and moved on. The kidnapper cut his throat a little. John stopped the kidnapper again. He asks to remove this barrier. John asks Arlo to do it and deactivates the barrier. Arlo thinks it's crazy. He winked at Arlo, he just wanted Arlo to do it. Arlo understands the plan and sends Elaine. Outside intruder asks him to hurry. John is waiting. The knife has to be taken down a bit so she can get time to reach the kidnapper. The conversation between John and Arlo went according to plan. Elaine reaches downstairs. John kept the blade on the knife as well as the blade lowered. He ran towards the kidnapper and stole the knife from his hand. He defeats him and releases Sarah. The intruder fell to the ground. John sat on it. Meanwhile, Elaine entered the barrier and held Sarah, who was still unconscious. John stabbed the intruder in the chest. Suddenly, the van breaks Arlo's barrier, who was injured by this van. He hits John and throws him away. Arlo thinks about how a van could break through his barrier. The kidnapper couple came out and helped him. John stood back up. The kidnappers abandon their plan to kidnap Sarah and run away. John sets up another barrier to stop their van, but they crash into it and escape. John is injured again, and they all go into the house and are healed by Elaine. While John is healing himself, John looks angry. He tells Arlo that he has only one job to keep the barrier intact. But he couldn't even do it. He called Arlo in vain. Arlo answered angrily it wasn't him who left Sarah alone. John pulled Sarah out of harm's way, and it was his fault that they couldn't catch the kidnappers. John punches Arlo in the face. Arlo grabbed him from his shirt to fight back. Elaine told them to stop fighting and wasting energy instead, having to figure out what to do next. Arlo said that it was a premeditated attack, and they must have done something to weaken their abilities. John thought that was why he couldn't sense the barrier. Arlo wondered if they had everything going according to their plan, so why did they do it? Elaine said they muttered before they left, but she couldn't hear it. John said that they said something like it would wear off soon. He thought that they had some kind of timer. Elaine says that her healing abilities returned after they left her, meaning they could only maintain it within the time limit. That ability's damping effect has a limited amount of time. Arlo says they must have done something like that with Sarah, too. So his strength is reduced and they can hurt him. But he managed to escape. But they can still track it. That means they already know where Sarah lives. Izzy suddenly remembers the conversation with Remy where he told her about the chip in Sarah's teddy bear. He shared all this with John. John is shocked Arlo says that Sarah stayed here that night. Because of that, Assassin knew about this place. They had been tracking Sarah and planning this attack for a month. Everyone at least spends a month plotting someone's downfall. After this, Sarah was still unconscious. Elaine suggests that they should take him to the hospital and report him to the authorities. John said they would contact Dr. Darren in the morning and inform the principal as well, but not the authorities. The next morning, when everyone else was still sleeping, Sarah woke up. He wondered how he ended up here and why Arlo and Elaine were here too. And he remembered what happened to him yesterday. He felt dizzy and ran to the toilet to vomit something. John and Elaine wake up. John asks Sarah if she is okay. Sarah didn't answer and ran towards her room. He couldn't activate it giving John the power to not jump anywhere because he just woke up. The medication was still in his system. Arlo and Elaine greet Sarah. John told Sarah. He called Elaine here to heal him, and Arlo came with Elaine. He further said that those people came to kidnap him last night and Arlo saved them all. Arlo thinks that John is very fake. John asks Arlo for his phone because some jerk broke his phone. Then he placed a call for Dr. Darren. As soon as Dr. Darren heard his voice, he hung up. John called him again. Darren yells at him not to disturb him on weekend mornings. John told him about Sarah's situation. Dr. Darren took his blood sample to do some of the usual tests. He tells her the drug hides the ability for four days if she doesn't get the ability. After four days, she has to visit him once again. He asked them to keep this a secret to themselves. Only John didn't tell him because he was afraid Sarah would worry. Four days will pass in the blink of an eye. On the other hand, Arlo and Elaine reported the incident to the principal. The headmaster said that he would take care of it from here. 
Elaine was still upset about last night's incident. Arlo assures him it will be fine, as Headmaster took care of him personally. Arlo tells Elaine that he is going to rest, and he should also sleep because he used a lot of power to heal them. Elaine is much more relaxed now. He hoped that things were still as normal as before because Sarah would get her strength back in a week. The next day, Sarah returns to school after a month. She sees everyone talking about her suspension. They had published an article about him back in the school paper. He ignored everyone and moved Eisen and Blyke also saw him coming. Eisen was happy because she didn't have to worry about John anymore. The headmaster was having his office tea when John came there. She's here to talk about her transition to boarding school. He didn't want to move here. He is doing well in the apartment from school. The principal tells him that he can't take any chances after the recent attack. At John's apartment, he orders John that he has made arrangements for him here as it is much safer there. John said that he could take care of himself. The principal tells him that his decision is final. John leaves the office in anger. Sarah was sitting on the rooftop playing games on her broken cell phone when Jan visited her there. He asked her how she was doing. He says that everything is the same as before John asked him to avoid everyone, so no one knows about the secret. He replied that it didn't matter if anyone knew him. He says that he doesn't want her to get hurt like that. Things were starting to hurt him mentally. Sarah says she'll take John's advice in stride now. Arlo was walking down the corridor when he saw Blyke placing a flyer on the bulletin board. Arlo asks him about it as replies that he handed out pamphlets about Ember's attack to warn students about Ember, and Remy had ordered him to do it. Arlo dwarfs him asking Blyke what kind of bullshit that is. Like his reply was that he was too obsessed with this Ember thing, and it was dangerous for him. He asks Arlo to talk to him about this. Suddenly, Remy comes running and asks Blyke about the progress of the task. He said that he was fine while a student graduated from there. He called him and gave him a flyer. And to keep his eyes open, the student went and wondered about what had just happened. Arlo tells him that he is creating panic in the students. Remy's reply was if he was just trying to warn them of danger. So they take care of themselves. Arlo asks her to meet him after school. He said yes and left. Keen assisted John in the shift. She opened the door when she saw John. She was shocked and glared at him. Professor Keen introduces the two of them to each other. John is also surprised to learn that Blyke will be his roommate. It made their hands tremble. Remy runs to meet Arlo as he is running late again. He stopped to watch the news on the TV about Ember. Arlo is waiting for him at the coffee shop. He recalled his last meeting with Ray where he gave him some advice to fulfill the responsibilities of a king here. He also warned him that many students would try to dethrone him, so he had to watch his back. Arlo replies that he won't let anyone do this. Ray asks him not to disappoint her. As the door opens, he came back to reality. He saw Remy standing there. He apologizes to her for being late and sits in front of her. Arlo asks why he's so interested in Ember. He replies that people are dying because of Ember, so why isn't anyone worried about it? Even the authorities did not take any action. He couldn't just sit back and watch this happen. Arlo asks why he cares about that. Too many superheroes. Remy replies they take care of other people. Suddenly a girl Melody from Agwin High School splashed Remy with a drink. Remy asks him to apologize now. She denies, and he asks her again politely. He attacked for him. He gave her an electric shock and she fell to the ground. Her boyfriend helps her get out, but Arlo creates a barrier around them as he doesn't apologize to Remy, but Melody soon realizes that this must be Arlo and Remy from Wellston High School, and now they are much stronger than him. He apologized to them for causing this trouble and left them. Blyke wake up and get ready for school. He opened the bathroom door and saw John standing there in front of the mirror and remembered that he was now his roommate. He slammed the door and returned while going to school. Eisen asks who his new roommate is. He answered it was John. Eisen spit out milk as he was shocked to hear when she said it was John. That's very annoying. Eisen asked him not to take this too much, and then Blyke glared at him. On the other hand, John told Sarah that he had a nightmare and that he would be killed in his sleep. Sarah comforts him and says that Blyke has better things going on. Sarah was walking through the corridor when she saw a senior girl bullying a junior. At first, he ignored it, 
but then he stopped him from slapping the junior girl. Sarah remembers that junior girl went to her class while pulling Brea's hand. Then she glared at Brea and asked her not to do it to waste other people's time. Everyone stood up and started making fun of him. This made him angry, and he attacked Sarah from behind. At the same time that Arlo was protecting him by creating a barrier around him, then he asked Brea how dare he attack a noble from behind. He punished him. He warned everyone standing there to stay within limits, otherwise he would forgive no one. He wanted to talk to her in another room. Arlo told him it was necessary to remind people of his powers. Otherwise, they forget their position. He asks her how she can take risks with her disguise to help low-level people. Sarah asks him why he shows so much care and doesn't treat her like a disabled person. Now Arlo remembers the warning John gave him about protecting Sarah. But he didn't, and told her and said those things back. Everything will return to normal, like Sarah will get her abilities back soon. He goes off saying that he never does anything until it benefits him. Outside school, Sarah checked her phone and found a call from Fiora. He also discovers that John called Arlo from his phone but never mentioned it. He discovered that John was lying. He's in the press room. Cecil was listening to the audio recording of the conversation between Arlo and Elaine. He discovers that Arlo was attacked by John, and he is not a disable. He thought if he published this. But he remembered that Arlo didn't want him to publish anything without his consent. It seems like Arlo doesn't want anyone to know about John's powers. At the same time, a student comes up to him and tells him about the sketch of Sarah he prepared when he was attacked by a girl. Cecil looked at the sketch and wondered why Sarah was protecting herself with her arms. Instead, he could dodge the attack. The girl mentioned that she had never seen Sarah, who was so panicked. Before it seemed that something had happened to his abilities during the suspension. Cecile asked if he had solid proof or if this was just a theory. He asked so that the press would lose its credibility if the news turned out to be fake. He asks her to come out and come with solid proof. He sat and thought if both stories were true, Arlo will do it. Don't let him publish anything unless he somehow gets past his orders. He will be able to do his job. John was walking towards his dorm when he was attacked by Martin from behind, but he grabbed her arm and threw her to the ground. Zeke came from behind and greeted John. John tells him that throwing someone at him is not a good thing at all. Then he said that he was leaving. Zeke grabs him by the shoulders and tells him that he is the king here and John should bow before him. John does so and says he has work to do, and Zeke finds an offensive tone. He catches him using his abilities, and then he asks him to show him some things to honor him. He crushed John's jaw and he couldn't move. John threw his foot on his stomach to free himself. Then he pushed. He goes and runs from there. Martin catches him and Zeke punches him in the stomach. Then he broke his arm. John said that everyone here attacks the weak for no reason. What Zeke said was that moving here was the biggest mistake in John's life. John calls Zeke unsafe and he kicks him and throws him away. John tells Zeke that he won't be like that. Those who are satisfied just by defeating disabled people. Because people like him are useless. Zeke slaps him and John falls to the ground. He said if John could do what he was asked, he wouldn't get how much pain he was in. Eason and Blyke walk towards the dormitory, and at this time Remy is acting crazy. When he asked him to stop doing everything, in reply, the boy said that was not what they wanted, that something was wrong. When he said so, Eason replied that he was thinking too much. Suddenly they saw John fall on the ground. Unconsciously, Eisen ran towards him and wondered what happened to him. He asked Blyke to help him. The two of them took John to his room. When he woke up, he saw the two of them standing there. Eason asks him if he is okay now. John sat down and felt his arm was broken. He thought why the two of them helped him even though they weren't friends with him. He asked this and that and what he wanted. He remembers the way she crushed her wrist during the interview. Eisen said it wasn't intentional and he didn't want to do it. John answered that he wouldn't fall for his tricks this time. He angrily asks them both to come out. They ask John if he understands the meaning of their courtesy of helping him, and he talks nonsense to them. John asks him to let it go about them starting a fight, but he doesn't force it and takes Blyke out of the room which he pushes against the wall and asks why she likes John so much. The Eisen answer he could get didn't tell him at all. 
Suddenly, he got a call from Cecile, and he ran from there to meet him. During their meeting, Cecile asked him about his article about John being disabled. Eason shuddered after hearing this, and telling him that was difficult, and he stopped working on the article. He tells him that John is not disabled and he has proof now. He wants John to be like the new king because he is stronger than Arlo. Eisen said he couldn't do it. He asks her what she is hiding because he knows that she has more information about Jan. Eisen says he will tell her everything if he promises to keep it between them. He ties his hands so they don't run away. Bisson told him about John's past and that the school couldn't control him anymore. He told John that he was almost disabled until high school but somehow his skills increased drastically during high school. This surprised Cecil said, that after his expulsion to join Wellston, there was a one-year gap and no one-year data. It's probably because something happened that changed him to act as a disabled person here. He advised him not to mess with John by revealing his secret. In her bedroom, Sarah was reading a book when she got a call from her maid. He tells her that the authorities are here to interview Sarah in the morning. When she is not found at home, they can visit her at school, so she has to prepare herself for that. Blyke brushed his teeth, thinking why John was taking so long in the restroom, for making him late. He ran for class. Outside his room, he finds two random guys bullying John. He fired lasers at them and warned them never to fight in front of his room. And John went to school. He asks, why is she following him? John replies that he is not following him. They're just heading in the same direction that Blyke saw and Eisen caught him from behind. She asked him why he didn't answer her. It was Eisen who tried to avoid it. He replied he was just busy. He asked Blyke why he wasn't at school now. He replied that John made him late. Like he took a long time in the restroom, then he mentioned about today's incident outside his room. Outside the school, the green-haired girl spied on Sarah and confirmed her doubts. He hit him with a stone. Seeing Sarah start to bleed, he wondered about what just happened. Everyone around him started whispering why he didn't heal himself. The green-haired girl comes running to Sarah to apologize and says she didn't do it on purpose. It was just an accident. Sarah says it's okay and goes to the hospital. John took medicine and rested so that his arm could heal. The door opened and Sarah entered. Darren was surprised to see him in this situation. John heard her voice and came to greet her but was angry to see her like this. They sit on the bed. After he got a bandage, Sarah said that it wasn't so badly hurt and said that John always overreacts to things like that. What John asked him was who did this to him. He replies that it was a green-haired girl and Sarah didn't see her. Before John said that, the girl probably suspected that Sarah didn't have the ability now. But Sarah relaxed as everyone came to know about it. After all, John shouted at him how could he be so careless. He shows his wounds and says that it hurts when they attacked him just because he couldn't fight back. Sarah replies that she knows it hurts. He asks her that she acts like a different person since he came back. He asks what happened between Arlo and John when Sarah wasn't here. John shuddered at this question. John asks him where Arlo is. He doubted this conversation. Then he asked what happened that day. Before then, she asked why he called her from her phone. She said that after she left, she met Arlo, but she thought he was nice like her. But he played it. He takes her to a place where two thugs ambush her, to show his place. Then he mentioned not to tell anyone about the incident. But that day when he saw her injured, he had to call her for help. But Elaine had already hung up the phone, and he didn't know who else it was. Sarah became angry after hearing this. He tells John that it was Arlo who tried to make him come back he decided to take revenge. After that, he got his ability back. After some time, Darren called him to take personally about his test results. Arlo is walking in the corridor when he remembers the day Remy told him about Ray's death. He connects all the pieces and finds that Ray is one of those superheroes, and it was so he was killed by Ember. Suddenly, John contacted Arlo and asked him to meet him on the roof in 15 minutes. John was waiting for him on the roof, but Sarah found him in the corridor and called out to him. She said she knew how she betrayed and humiliated John when he wasn't here. She warned him if he bothered John again, he would end it. Arlo visits John on the roof. John asked why he was late. Arlo replies that he is not a servant who will take orders from him. He tells John about the meeting with Sarah and asks him why he told him. 
John asks why he is hurt when he asks to take care of him. Arlo responds that he can't be with him anywhere he is king, and he has other responsibilities too. He reminds John that he is the king here, and John can't order him until he officially removes him. He added that John had to protect Sarah. As he spends more time with Arlo leaves, but John punches him in the face. Arlo grabs him and presses him against the wall and tells him he can do nothing here. And Arlo could easily throw him off the roof so John shouldn't forget his place. Altogether, he lets her go and tells her to stay away from him from now on and leaves him. Sarah recalls meeting with Darren where he told him the situation was beyond her limits. So he sent the sample to the hospital for examination. Keon and Nadia from the authorities visit the Wellston School to interview Sarah. The moment they entered, Keen became worried and came over to ask what they came here for. They introduced themselves and stated the purpose of their visit. Keen took them to the principal's office. Keon begins to question Sarah about what she did during her suspension. Sarah replied that she was asked to do many tasks, but she didn't do them. Then he asked why he was returning to school a week before his suspension period ended. He replied that he missed the school environment, so he came back. She mentions about the attack on him after she got here and says she has no abilities now. He was asked where he lived after being attacked. Sarah tries to avoid telling John's name, but she is forced, so she tells about him. He wondered if it was the same John he had dealt with two years ago. He asked Sarah if she agreed with the book idea. Nadia says that Sarah is lying. Keon tells her that he can leave her. Keon tells the principal that he is assigning Sarah to another three-month program to clear her mind of the concept of the book. Because he didn't want Sarah to be like that superhero and get killed like them because of the ember. He asks the principal to get him out of school until his adjustment program starts. The headmaster refused to do it because he was already helpless, and that was enough punishment for him. Keon asked her that the man Sarah mentioned was the same John from Boston High School. The headmaster said yes. Keon asks permission to interview him too, but the principal says he can't until he brings permission. Sarah was walking through the corridor when she heard everyone talking about it, which became helpless. He was being followed by the green-haired girl again. He pushes Sarah off the stairs and takes a photo of her as proof to show her her helplessness. His arm and ankle were broken. He barely walked by taking support from the wall. Remy saw her and ran to her to help her. He supports her by taking her to the hospital. John heard people talking about Sarah's condition in the corridor. At the hospital, Sarah got bandages wrapped around her arms and ankles. He was worried. He replies it was surprising to see her hurt like that. Remy says he doesn't know what he suspects that they are both victims of the same person. He says if that's what Arlo is going to do, he has lost his abilities too. But he has his abilities that he tells Rami everything that has happened to him since his return. He wondered if Amber had attacked. Sarah didn't want to talk about it now. Remy wishes him good health and goes outside the hospital. He bumped into John, who was running in a hurry to the hospital to see Sarah. He asks who did this to her. He said the green-haired girl he asked to sit with him and he sat down. He then told about the interview and mentioned Keon. He felt guilty about mentioning John in the interview. John wondered if it was the same Keon he had dealings with two years ago. John tells her not to worry because it's not his fault, and he will deal with Keon, if he interviews her. Blake asked Eisen to hang out after school. He refuses, saying he has something important to do. He sat in the cafeteria thinking about his current behavior. When Eisen passed by, he came and asked what happened. Dan says he's worried about her acting strangely like that, which he had never done before. Eisen suggests visiting her room after school. He did an investigation when they both visited him. He asked them the reason for coming to him. They countered that they were here to help him, saying he didn't need any help. As if answering that he knew he was silently working on the coal, he secretly went to his room to investigate. He saw the curtain on the wall and pulled it up. There's work he's hiding, she asks. How can she do all this without them? He replies that he doesn't want to disturb them. They know that he is doing an investigation about Ember. This is to get revenge for the murder of his older brother. Remy tells them about his research. Eason asks him why Arlo and Sarah are mentioned here. He replied that they were both attacked and injured. He showed me all the articles on superheroes and Bara he could muster, he said that. People love superheroes when they first appear. 
but then they started getting killed and people got scared. All superheroes are people of high ability and nobility, even after the authorities didn't solve a single murder case. He thought once the authorities didn't want to go after Ember, he said that. When the authorities gave him the news of his brother's death, they convinced him to find the criminals, but he asked them about the case, and they kicked him out. He says that he will present the bait and be like a superhero. So Amber went after him as he was, is the only way to reach them. Ison panicked at such a decision. He asks to calm down. He said that it was more dangerous. People who were stronger than those killed by Ember. He was like saying that he didn't leave her alone, and all three will have a better chance if they work together. The next morning they were brought superhero costumes to hide his identity. Eason said the costume was nonsense that Blake brought for Remy. He says at least she didn't come empty-handed like him. Remy tries on costumes, but both boys don't like them. Now they all sit down and do research, finding their target. Eisen finds a man named Waldo in town as their first target. Blake asked what they thought, but he found him sleeping. They both draw some marks on his face. Remy asks them to start their search from today. Both boys gave surprising reactions. They made a plan and divided into two teams. He would be at the front, and the two would be watching him back. Both boys gave a thumbs up and found it in a deserted place. They wonder if he got here. Meanwhile, Remy is exploring the city and wonders where everyone has gone. Remy wears his superhero costume. Then he began to search the city. Looks like everyone is inside their house, because the streets are completely empty. Eason found a man and asked him to go in that direction. He finds a man knocking on the door. He breaks into a house where he took a woman's hair and he demands money from him. Remy gives him an electric shock and he falls on the ground. He asks the lady to relax and says that he is here to help her. He introduces himself as X-Ray. He asked the woman about Weldo. She replied that she knew him. He was fired from office a few months ago. He disappeared them after a few months. He breaks into the office, but his powers change drastically once started taking control of this city, and here he added that the authorities never paid attention to them like that. And Remy felt sorry for them. Suddenly, Eason finds some people coming to Remy and warns him get ready to deal with them. They gather at the place where they get a signal from Remy and introduce him as a superhero. He asks them about Waldo, but they attack him. Eason and Blyke asked him to strike them back, so he did, and made them crash on the ground. Then, Kish tied her hair. Remy gives him an electric shock and makes him unconscious and walks towards Quentin, who is shocked by seeing a person with such high-level abilities for the first time. He said it was nearby, grabbed him from the shirt, and asked about the Weldo. Meanwhile, the man keeps the woman hostage and asks her to leave her partner. Otherwise, he would kill him. He releases Quentin, who likes to attack the man with a laser and injures him. He asked Quentin again about Waldo. He replied that he couldn't. He tells the story as he wants his family to be in danger if he tells Remy, saying that he will stop Waldo and free them all. Quentin takes her to Waldo's office. He asks her how she came to his office uninvited. He attacked them with a shockwave. Quentin is injured, but Remy survives this attack. He noticed that this attack was stronger than his 2.8 ability. He attacks her, but she dodges and gives him a taste of her power. Waldo says that he is being watched in case whatever happens to him, all the hostages will be killed. Waldo attacks Quentin, but Remy protects him and hurt. He asks Eisen and Blyke to find the hostages and free them. They tie up Waldo and take him with them, while others will free the hostages injured by the attack. Quentin asks him if he is okay. He tells her that she is brave and she should not consider herself weak as many people depend on her. They go down to the basement and free the hostages. He was very happy after meeting his wife. He asks everyone that Waldo is defeated now and they are all free to go. But all those people wondered after seeing it, because they had never seen anyone with high-level abilities here before. They thanked him and asked him what he wanted in return. She said that she didn't want anything, because he is only here to help. Quentin asks everyone to go to their houses and sleep. They are all free now. He explained that people were just shocked as they had never received attention from such a high level before. They said that these people were always ignored by the higher-ups. He thought so they didn't deserve such light treatment. 
Returning to his room, Blyke found John who was leaving. John asked him what was on his face. There were many embarrassing lines on his face. Then Blyke asked John if he was going to sleep. Then Blyke said goodnight to him. The next morning, John got ready and was about to leave when Blyke called him and asked if he could wait. They can go to school together. John said no. Arlo goes to the press room. Arlo reads an article about Sarah's defeat and about her abilities. Cecile asked for his permission to publish the article, which Arlo said not to. He did not give him permission to publish it. He reminded him that the Sarah had lost its abilities. He didn't want people to know about it. He says that Sarah's abilities will return, and in the meantime, publishing this article will only create problems. He ordered him to throw this article in the trash and leave. Cecile says she won't let the news go like this. Sarah and John were walking in the corridor when they saw students gathered around the notice board. He saw an article about Sarah on the bulletin board and was surprised that suddenly all the students started looking at Sarah. John grabbed the paper and tore it. Sarah told him that it was useless, as everyone knows about it. He grabs her arm and asks her to leave this place. Two boys make fun of them and run, but then he decided for them. John took him down without even using any abilities. He asked Sarah to run towards the stairs, as many others will follow them. Other students attack them with laser beams. John defended the Sarah he got by hurting one of the two bullies who attacked John again, and he moved away from her. Sarah pushed the man away and asked him to step back. At first they get scared seeing him, but they remembered that he was helpless too. John was helpless, but he fought them, and he sat there doing nothing. Suddenly he heard a Blyke sound to stop the fight. It was Blyke there who ordered everyone to end this battle now and return to their classes. Everyone turned their heads towards the Blyke. The bully apologized to him and left him. He asked if she was okay. He replied that he was fine, but John was not in good condition. She thanks him for saving them. He replied that it was no big deal and he went to class. At the hospital they sat next to Sarah, and he thought about what just happened a moment ago. He saw John. He looks terrible. He asks if this is her trying to warn him. Sarah wondered how they all lit it up fairly. Because he lost his ability. John replies that they got a chance to taste the strong, so they took it. He said that he was always downstairs so he could realize what had just happened. They do it to get the satisfaction of feeling strong for once. Suddenly he observes that she is sad, so he cheers her up. Sarah asks if he often thinks about her having the ability to fight. Just then he suddenly changed the topic, saying that at least he wasn't alone in this situation. In the corridor, John called Arlo from behind. Arlo asks about his business. He is now with her. John hits the poster in the face and asks him about it. Arlo doesn't realize this, but he tells John that it's none of his business, so he has to solve it himself. Elaine gets a message from Arlo to meet her after school at Wauba Boba. He waited for him. When he got there, the waiter took their order. Arlo ordered the mango boba. Elaine loved the taste. Then he asked her the reason for calling her here. He answered that. He wants updates on Sarah. He said that it had been more than a week, but his strength had not returned. He said that a few days ago he heard him talking to the doctor and looked at the hospital report they sent him. He says that he couldn't hear much, but Sarah feels scared. She asks him about the post about Sarah at school. He replies that it will be revealed sooner or later. He added that once his abilities return, everything will return to normal. Elaine asks him what if his abilities never return. Arlo tells her not to be ridiculous. Suddenly they hear about another attack from Ember on TV. Arlo asks him if there is anything he should know about him. He said yes, then he mentioned that on Saturday night, Blyke and Eisen came to him and took him to his room. He's hurt. It looks like he was attacked. And Arlo remembers his last meeting with Remy. He thought that he was attacked by the Ember members. Two years ago, John was kicked out of New Boston High School and he was suspended for three months back. John was sitting in a dark room when Keon visited him. He has been John's instructor for three months. She told him she had dealt with kids like her before. He told him that even though he was strong, he is not allowed to do whatever he wants. He called it lust. This angered John and he said it was his right to stand above all, because he is the strongest. Keon slapped John and John hit him from behind. 
Off the head, Keon grabbed him from the head and pressed him against the table to remind him of his place. He shows him photos of the students John injured. John said that anyone who messes with the strong will be punished. Keon asks why he hurt his friends. John replies that they got what they deserved. Keon uses his abilities to look into John's memories. He did it to find the reason behind John hurting his friends. John asks him to get it out of his head. Ken left him. Keon asked if he realized his mistake. John acted up crying again. John regretted it. Three months later, John returned home. After finishing class and being greeted by William, John spent most of his time in his room. He couldn't stop thinking about all the damage he had caused. William brought a copy of his new book for him to read. He took the book in his hands and turned over a page where it was written dedicated to the child, Raimi. He discovered that it was a story about a superhero living in a disabled world. And he helped them because of him. The world became peaceful. He got the attention his father wanted to give him. John started spending most of his time with his father, like playing cards and learning how to fight. He applied to take the entrance exam in Wellston and moved here. He decided to hide in the background. John was sitting on the floor beside his bed, thinking about the conversation he had with Arlo, where she tells him to fix the problem himself. John thought he couldn't do it. Next morning, Sarah was walking towards school. He thought that his ability was permanently lost. John came from behind and greeted him. He asks her if she slept well. He replied that he was unable to sleep properly because he had a lot on his mind. While they are in conversation, Zeke chases them and plans to attack them. Arlo walks around the corridor and thinks that there are only three people in his life that he can beat, and the three of them. Stupid Ray committed suicide because of a stupid book. He abandoned his role and now he is powerless, and John hid his abilities. Some of it was nothing that mattered to him. He thinks about why he is fulfilling all these responsibilities. Just suddenly he caught the attention of Sarah and John, who were beaten by Zeke. Arlo approached him, punched him in the face, and threw him away. He told him that beating up disabled people was not something to be proud of. Everyone stand there, then run. Then he approached John and punched him. She crushes it and asks why she didn't do anything. At that time, Sarah was beaten. Sarah tries to stop him, but he reminds her of her place since she is disabled now. At the hospital, they sit in front of each other. Sarah is saddened by Arlo's words. John asks her not to worry about that, like Arlo didn't say right. He approaches her and tells her that her powers will return. He asked how long it would take. He was really desperate now. He asks what he should do now. John tells her he's not alone. Because John is helpless too, he says that not much has changed. They can both live their lives as before, by going shopping, eating at restaurants, and playing games together. They will get through this together. When Sarah went to sleep, she left the hospital and walked down the corridor. He thinks about the incident he thinks why he didn't do anything. It was because he didn't want Sarah to see his true face. He didn't want her to call him a monster. He starts punching on the wall and thinks why he is so cowardly. He thought that he should have done something that he thought was Zeke's fault. When he started this, and now he will do it. He paid for this. Zeke was walking down the street carrying a paper mask. He threw the paper mask in the trash. It seemed like someone was chasing him. The man following Zeke attacks him from behind Zek. He saw the man's attack and found someone hiding his face. He thought that someone was trying to mock. He asks who is that man, but no answer. He thought that someone was trying to challenge his rank, but why is she covering her face? He said that he came at the right time, as he wished, his frustration at someone he moved. He stepped forward to wipe the paper mask off his face, but the man grabbed her arm and threw a punch to her stomach. Zeke falls behind. He was injured and coughed up blood. He wondered who could have such strength except for him. He tried to guess when that person attacked him again and threw him away. The person continued to attack again, and once again Zeke couldn't hold it in any longer. The opponent is very strong. Zeke tries to attack her from behind, but she blocks it and throws a punch at his face. Zeke hit the ground. The man kicked him in the stomach. He grabbed him from his shirt and punched him in the face. Zeke falls for the reason the man left him there half dead and left. Eisen and Blyke walked in the corridor. 
When Blyke asks him to meet her and Remy after school, he wanted to discuss next steps. Eisen replied that he would meet them after that. At a press meeting, he overhears students talking about Zeke, who was found in a street near the school, half dead. Eisen thought it must be John who was behind this. He didn't want to think about every piece of news. He heard Eason saying goodbye to him. Goodbye, and off to attend a meeting in the press room. Arlo opened the press room door and walked toward Cecile. He asks her the reason for coming here. He opened the article about Sarah. He headed for Cecily and smashed her really hard on the broken table. Cecil shouted why he was acting like that. Arlo tells her that he asked her to keep this information. Since this was just between them, so why was the information leaked around the school? He says he goes easy on her in everything by caring. But now he has gone far and he will be punished. She told him that she did not publish this article. Arlo reminds him that he controls all the information. How could he believe that he was not involved? Arlo ordered Eisen. He is the new head of Press Club Ice and that surprises Arlo. He told her not to and he had failed her. Eason came to Remy's place and told the two of them what happened today at the press club. He says that it is good news, so why is he not happy? He replied that he didn't want that kind of responsibility and wanted to be free. He added that he didn't want to do it. He didn't want any stupid leadership position like this. And Remy looked at him who had just been given a strange leadership position. Remy shows her an article about him having got 152 views, which Eisen tells. That the article is not well written and that this view is not enough to get attention. He shared his research. He shows them his next target. He says that Remy will fight him and Blyke will do it watching his back. Meanwhile, he will take some cool photos of Remy to publish, in order for articles to get more views and attention. John was waiting for Sarah outside the school. She asked him why he looked tired. She replied that she couldn't sleep anymore. He asks John to teach him basic defense skills. He took him to the roof and taught him some defensive moves that John asked Sarah for. He tried what he taught him. He attacks Sarah, but she barely escapes, but not with a counterattack. She told him she didn't and didn't expect him to be so quick, John shouted, that he needed a lot of practice to become an expert, and he will learn with time. Suddenly, a random student comes from the roof and asks them both to leave. Both are disabled and not allowed here. They leave Sarah and ask John if this is really the way he should live now. He took orders from an unknown student. John tells him it's hard, but he must stay strong. Sarah thinks that John never complains, but he always keeps his complaints in check and has a positive attitude about the things Sarah told him that she was. He was about to take class when suddenly John saw the green-haired girl pushing Sarah down the stairs. He asks if she came with him to class. John replied that he had to go to the hospital, first to take medicine for his hand. And John went after the girl. John put the paper mask on his face. The green-haired girl was surprised when she saw John and asked who he was. John, who was wearing a paper mask on his face, then he attacked the girl. The green-haired girl was also aware of John's attack, and he tried to avoid it. He tried to analyze whether he should attack or run and found that he couldn't do any of this. Meanwhile, John pushed him down the stairs, and he fell. He ran towards the cafeteria to escape from John. As she opened the door, everyone looked at her and wondered what had happened to her. As she looked scared, she kept staring at the closed door. When the door opened, John came from there. He wondered if the man left who was chasing him a minute ago. He ran out of the cafeteria to escape from danger. John, who was sitting at a table, stood up and chased after him. He maintained his ability to guard against any attacks. John came out of nowhere and punched him in the face. John grabbed him by the collar. He says he doesn't know what his fault was, but he's sorry for it. John showed no mercy and continued to beat him until he was dying. John left it there and left. Holden and Arlo are walking in town. Holden tells him that they have found the girl who wrote the article about Sarah lying half dead in the hallway. He thought it was the same guy named Zeke. Arlo asks who did it. According to him, after Holden replied that everyone thought it was Arlo. Arlo asks why is that? Holden answers because he had a dispute with Zeke and then he was found on the street. He was beaten to death. So he fired Cecile because of the article. The next day, the author of the article was found half dead.
He's connected to both cases, and despite that, no one else can beat Zeke. In this case, Arlo suspects that it must be John behind this. In the room, Sarah couldn't sleep, so he started practicing what John taught him. Elaine hears noises from her room, so he came to check. He saw Sarah covered in sweat. Sarah asks him to train with her. The next morning, he told John he was ready to learn more, because he has mastered the trick. He taught her yesterday, but first she has to go with him to buy new clothes, because his old clothes were damaged during training. At Cavoro Mall, they both stop at a cell phone shop and buy a new phone. Then Sarah wears a dress at the shop to buy her new clothes. A bored John asked Sarah if she needed a drink as he was going to buy one for her. On the way to the canteen, she thinks about why she bought such complicated clothes instead of just buying any shirt. Suddenly, he saw a mask shop. After a while, he came back with a drink. Sarah just came out of the locker room wearing new clothes. John tells him it looks good on him, so he bought it. On his way back, he saw a corner and remembered that it all started here. John asked him if there had been any updates from the authorities. He answered lying that they always told him they were still working on it. Sarah said that the attackers were not just random people. There is a huge network behind them that makes drugs to suppress high-level abilities. He then remembered that Remy might have it. The suspicions point to him, because he was also the target of the same incident here in this mall. In his room at night, he was chatting with John, and the cell phone battery is dead. He opened his bag to get a charger and found there was a mask in his bag. In town, Remy against Alana, he defeated his target easily. As Eason asked if he got a good photo against him, Eason answered no, as a fight is not a miracle. Very interesting, Eason. How could such a weak woman come to terrorize the entire city? He thought he must have gone through some modifications, where he saw some injection marks of his arm. He took her to the shed and tied her there. As Alana came back to her senses, she asked who she was. Remy introduced himself as the superhero X-Ray. He asks her about the wound on her arm. Alana refuses to tell. It was Eason who asked him, then he electrocuted him to get an answer, which he rejected because he was too cruel. So he sat down near him and made him an offer. If he told him about the source, he would be free to go later. Alana takes him to the street, where they wait for suppliers. Eisen was filming this scene. Suddenly a woman in a black mask comes there. He asks Alana who she is. Alana tells Vulcan that the girl is just a friend and wants to buy things, too. He added that he forgot to bring money. Vulcan called it a disappointment and stabbed him along with it, clawed and killed him. Remy was shocked. This Eason couldn't stand the murder scene. Vulcan frantically attacks him, but he dodges Remy, who notices the sharp claws and flames. He recalls that all of Ember's victims had the same thing, stab wounds and burns, that's how Vulcan remembered. He attacks him, but Vulcan just cuts his attack off. She attacked for him back to back and stabbed both of his arms. Remy tried to strike back, but he was too fast. He dodged all his attacks and continued to beat Remy. Blyke asked Eason to stop crying and help him. Vulcan tells Rami that he is wasting himself helping. Others instead she could join him and be more to him. She told him he was a killer, and he can't be like him in all ways. He tries to give her an electric shock, but she grabs his arm. His arm is on fire. Vulcan says Remy will have to do better than that to kill him. Blight grabbed Eisen by the collar and said that he had to go there and help Remy. Because if not, he will die. Eisen looked scared and fell to his knees. Then Blight said that he would do it himself without asking for help. Vulcan attacks him again, but he jumps and kicks him in the face as Vulcan attacks at the same time and damages his shoulder. He said that it seemed like Remy had backup too for me to send a shockwave to him. But he was also fast, so he escaped the attack. Remy moves forward to catch him, but he stabs him, like he attacked Vulcan to free Remy. He was seriously injured and fell to the ground. Vulcan moves forward to kill Remy, but Eason kicks him and throws him away. Vulcan became angry and moved forward to attack Eason, but he destroyed the ground to stop his attack. Same example, Blyke targets his hand and stops it from reaching Eason's kick. Eason, he came in and threw it away like his leg attack this time to be able to slow down Vulcan who fell to the ground. Eisen asked to get him out of that place, and the Vulcan ran away. He couldn't catch up to the Vulcan, and Blyke lost track of him. Elaine opens it. She asks him to come with her now because Remy needs him. 
Sarah saw them and asked what was wrong. He replied that it was nothing. He drags Elaine to come with him. When he saw Remy in such a state, he asked them what the three of them were doing. Eason reasons that they are getting into trouble. He heals Remy's wounds and he opens his eyes. He tried to sit up. He observed his arm, which was completely burned. He asked about Vulcan. Eason told him that he ran. He says that they both can catch. To get some answers, like answering that their priority is to keep Remy safe. Remy asks Eason about the tape. He said he couldn't catch anything after he stabbed Alina. He replied that they would use anything. What they do now is they have to catch him. Eason says that they should stop chasing Ember. He says they can't stop it now. As it stands now, Eason says that they could all die today. He says that he will not be a part of it and leaves. Blyke also said that it was dangerous and he didn't want to hurt her again. He also goes and asks Elaine to take him and take care of Remy. When Elaine left Remy's room, she called Arlo to tell him. Sarah knocked on Remy's bedroom door. And Remy, she opened the door. Sarah said that she wanted to ask some questions. He invited Remy to come inside. He sat down on the table and asked if his abilities returned. Sarah answered no, because he is still waiting to hear back from the authorities, where he distrusts authority. When Remy tries to get info about it, Remy says that he couldn't get anything because they ran away. Remy asks her that she was injected with something by the attacker to suppress her abilities. He added that he had done some research and found that there were also some injections to strengthen the abilities, and those boosters were directly linked to Ember. Sarah asked how she did this research. He said that he just used a random link on the internet, and he doesn't remember now. Sarah told her to keep updating it if she found anything else. What Sarah told John about her conversation with Remy and that she couldn't find any clues. He asks her not to take stress. He told John that he was not going to take classes and move outside. In the hallway, Sarah saw a man beating a girl. She asked him to stop, but he continued to attack her. He used that technique. He learns from John and knocks him out. Sarah and John were jogging together and he was getting tired. He wondered how John and his father used to do it twice a day. John told him that it needed to increase the endurance. He told her that. Fighting is like playing poker. All he has is to bully opponents. The one we have the bigger hand to win. He's back now. Sarah asked the girl if everything was true. The bully attacked him when he was distracted, but he grabbed it and kicked. He then slaps her and she runs away from there. The girl thanked Sarah, but she waved at her and left. Remy is walking in the corridor when Arlo catches her. He drags her into the room to talk to her. He scolds him for what he has done. He ordered him to stop his nonsense and report to the authorities about what he found. He refused to do so and dropped out of school. Sarah is waiting for John. When there was a bully guy who came with other students there. John came to the place where he and Sarah promised to meet, but John discovered that Sarah wasn't here, and he wonders where Sarah went without a message. She called him, but he had no answer. John returned to the dorm after that. Wait some time. Blake saw her. He approached her and asked why she was so late. John replied he was waiting for a friend and said this and left. Had she headed back to the room, then he could have joined her and the two of them could do the homework together. John replied that Blyke should stop talking to him, as he doesn't like it. He was like saying they were roommates now, so they should try to get to know each other. John reminded him of that, an incident when he threw a laser beam in his face. Dan asks how she thought they were to be friends, like the reply that he did it because John slapped him. He asked John what he would do if someone hurt his best friend. He asked to start over, but John said he was not interested. While lying on his bed, John was still waiting for his response. Meanwhile, he gets a message from Sarah that she's okay, and she's coming home after class. Meanwhile, Sarah is kidnapped by a group of students and the students torture her. They told him they never liked him. They said they loved it to bow down to the high tier, and they were sick of being treated like dirt, and now they had a chance for revenge because he was beneath them all. Sarah replied she would make them pay for this after she recovered. They replied that he might be stuck like that forever. They weren't afraid of him anymore, because she is no longer the same Sarahina as before. He asked them to let him go and then fight him, if they weren't afraid of him. They accept it and let it go. 
They offered him if he could beat either of them in one-on-one -on -one combat, they would let him go. He accepted it. Delena, who is one of these kidnappers, and attacks him and destroys his arm. Then the next girl takes her turn. Sarah stood up to compete with him, but he smashed his head against the wall and he fell down. Then the man came. Now they tied him up again and left him there for the night. As they will decide tomorrow what to do with it. Next, someone knocked on the door. Elaine ran to open the door. John is at the door. He asks if Sarah is there. He replies he hasn't been back since yesterday. John ran to his room to check, but the room was empty at school. Holden and Arlo are walking through the corridor. He comes from behind and asks Arlo to come with him. Arlo followed him, and he brought it to John. Arlo asks why he tricked Elaine into calling him here. He turns to leave when Elaine informs him that Sarah is missing and they need her help. Arlo calls John an idiot, like he spends most of his time with. He hasn't managed to lose her yet. They both start fighting with each other. They stopped fighting and focused on finding Sarah. Arlo says that he won't help and asks John to find him alone. He tells John he wants all the authority of a king but wants nothing to do with the burden. He is a leecher. He took the lane and left Elaine, who begged him not to leave Sarah, especially when she was helpless. Arlo asks him to call Ison and invest silently agitating. He calls Ison in and asks him to make a call. There were also those who had come to assist in finding Sarah. He assigned tasks to everyone and ordered them to keep it a secret. They complied and everyone started their search. John searched every corner of the school to find him. He asked Darren about Sarah. He replied he had not seen it. John looked for it in the library, cafeteria, and lawn, but he couldn't find it anywhere. He went on the roof to have a wide view. Suddenly, Abel came there and asked who he was. What is she doing here? He asks her to go now. John says that he won't leave until he finds Sarah. But Abel attacked John and made him leave the roof. On the other side, Elaine, Maylee, Ventus, and Eason looked for Sarah, but they didn't find anything. John ran through the corridor and several students tripped him, and he fell on the ground. They bullied him and beat him. Then they left him. There he was injured. John thought about why everyone was getting in his way and not leaving him alone. He decided that strength was the only thing that mattered, so he would show them his true strength. From the people John bullied a while ago, in the school corridor two students were seen discussing something. Suddenly from behind, John followed the two of them and attacked one of them. He beat her and made her nose bleed. The man asked his friend for help. Another person asked John to leave him. He fires a projectile at John, but John dodges the attack. The man who was beaten said that John was already injured. She stood up and told him she wouldn't do it. He stood up and fought them a lot. Because he's been beaten, he uses his ability to heal himself. John copied this ability and healed himself. The bullies were shocked to see this. John attacks them and beats them too. A girl tells him that she saw four students taking Sarah with them, but he didn't. Paying a lot of attention, he explained their appearance. John climbed onto the roof and took revenge from Abel. He found Eisen from there. Eason is going somewhere. When John followed him, Eason noticed that someone was following him. He was being chased, but he ignored it and left as he had important matters to attend to. John fires a bomb at Eisen. It infuriates him and he prepares to fight him. Eason asks who he is and why he randomly attacks him. John did not answer Eisen's question. He threw a projectile back at him. Eisen dodged this attack and dashed towards it. He sets a target on John and hits him and throws him away. He attacks him again, but John escapes the hit this time. Eason noticed that John was regenerating himself. He wondered how someone could have such explosive and healing abilities together. Eisen attacks again to stop him from fully recovering. But John stopped him. He attacked and he set target on Eisen and threw a punch at him and smashed him into the wall. Students watched this fight from the windows. Cecile was there as she observed this bustle through the window. He approached the window and saw this fight from there. Eason guessed that the man behind the mask was John. He tells him to stop attacking and that he knows what he wants and he can help John. John doesn't listen to him and continues to beat him until he becomes unconscious and he looks through the walls for Sarah but doesn't find her. John ran from there. Cecil watched this fight and saw John's incredible strength. Arlo was walking down the corridor when his cell phone beeped. 
It was a message from Ventus about student Sarah was last seen. With that in mind, Aizen must know one of them. Aizen's cell phone rings, but he doesn't answer his calls because he doesn't realize Arlo is wondering why Aizen isn't answering his calls. Cecile was waiting for someone standing in the hall. A student comes running to her and tells her about Sarah missing and that Arlo's team is looking for her. Cecile finds her reasons for an angry John. Elaine asks some students about Sarah and the girl Sarah helped here. She comes to Elaine and tells her about yesterday's incident. He caught her and brought her to a close range. Arlo hears some students talking about Eisen and he is attacked by a mysterious man he saw there and saw that Eisen was half dead. He picked her up and took her to the hospital. He also texted about the prank situation. Arlo was busy looking for the four students by looking through all the pictures. When he got a message from Mei Li, he became angry at John. Meanwhile, Elaine comes there with the girl she tells Arlo about the incident and how Sarah was threatened by Hauer. He mentioned his group of four and how they bullied people with low skills. He shows them a picture to Arlo. Arlo finds Hauer and says he wants to have a word with him. He wondered what to do. Arlo is with her. Arlo asks him about Sarah. Hauer says he was taken to an abandoned place and gives the address Arlo asked for. How many of them are involved in this? The kidnapping power said eight or nine. He said that he was being held there. Overall, most of the students did not come to school today. They may be there by now. Arlo leaves it there, saying he'll deal with it later. Cecile overheard this conversation. He hides, and she finds John to tell him about it. He says that he can help John find Sarah. John grabbed it from the first caller. He introduces himself and tells him that he knows everything about John and also that he has defeated Arlo. Then he says that he knows where Sarah is and asks her to follow him. Sarah was still tied up and unconscious when she woke up. She saw Elena standing in front. Dan asks, how can she hope that someone will come to save her? She grabs her hair and says none of her friends care about her. He was powerless now. He asks Sarah to admit him that he is worthless and he will act. Because of that, Elena continues to torture Sarah and asks her to admit it. Krolik interrupts and says that it will overshoot now. Elena asks him to shut up and stop being such a coward. He adds that we owe this to him, and this is nothing compared to what they all do for them. Suddenly the door opened, and they saw Arlo and Elaine standing there. They are shocked to see them there. Elaine saw Sarah and ran to her. She untied her hands. Sarah fell on him. He started healing him. Arlo asked them whose idea this was they all showed at Elena. Arlo approaches him and asks how he dares. He could kidnap a student and gather others to torture him. He said all of them, he would report this incident to the principal. They left Elena, who angrily shouted from behind. He said that it wasn't much different from what they had done with all the low-level ability students. He added that Arlo wouldn't even care if it was low-level, at Sarah's place. Here he attacks Arlo from behind, but Arlo activates his barrier and he is injured himself instead. Arlo asks Elaine to take Sarah to the hospital. All the kidnappers were about to leave when John came there wearing a mask. John came there wearing a mask. What John was targeting was Alina, and he kicked so hard until he fell into the wall. Then John took it. He was about to punch him again when the blonde girl ran to attack John. John dropped Alina on the ground. He grabbed the blonde's face and smashed it on the floor. The three of them tried to run but failed. John at the exit, then the three of them decided to fight back. Krolik shoots a laser beam at John. He blocks it with his wrist and gets it injured. But he healed himself. The three of them were shocked to see John running towards them. Set a target on him and throw him against the wall. Then he turned towards the green-haired girl and punched her in the face. After that, he blasts a projectile at him. The last person fell to the ground and apologized to John while crying. But John showed no mercy, and he ended up being beaten by John until he died. Cecile was waiting outside when John came out. He took off his mask. John turns to him and says that they are done here. Sarah was lying on the bed in the hospital. Elaine tells him that she still can't believe the students treated the school's ace like this. Sarah replies that he's not an ace anymore. He was helpless. Elaine says that he shouldn't be as desperate as they want him to be. He will protect her until her strength returns. Sarah says, what if her powers never come back? He didn't want Elaine to take care of him. 
He asks Arlo why he helped him. He disabled now. Elaine tells him that they are all worried about him, and Arlo gathers an entire search party to find him. John comes there. Sarah gets emotional seeing him there. Sarah apologizes to John when he lets her down. John hugged him and told him not to think about it. Remy and Blyke go into the hospital. They shouted the name of the fad. Eason looked embarrassed when he saw the two of them here. They were wondering because they saw Arlo, Elaine, Sarah, and John there. He mentions the masked man who fought Eason and wonders about who he really is. Eason looked at Arlo and John, then he closed his mouth. Eisen said that he wanted to rest and that they could ask him questions after he recovered. Blyke and Remy leave the hospital. Sarah was sleeping and John was sitting beside her. Arlo asks John if he wants to speak to him privately. They went to the classroom. John asks what Arlo wants. He talks about Arlo, and he asked John why he hit Eisen so far. He found Sarah if it wasn't the Arlo team Sarah hadn't found yet. John reminds him that he refuses to help. First, so John did whatever he could. Arlo said that beat him up like this. So far, just to gain his abilities, which is unfair. John replies that Eisen deserved it because he crushed his hand earlier and embarrassed him during the interview. He is a two-faced man. Arlo tells him that he always acts like a crazy person. John said he did. He didn't want to be part of this system. He just wanted a peaceful life. But Arlo destroyed it just because he wanted his place. John is somewhere in his hierarchy. Arlo replies that none of this could have happened if John had used his powers from the start. John says that if Arlo really wanted him to do something for the system, he would. He will tear this system apart. He leaves by telling Arlo to enjoy his throne while he can. Because he will end this kingdom. Remy was walking in the corridor when Remy heard some random students talking about the masked man. He asked her to tell him about him in detail. He tells her he has more than one ability such as healing powers, projectiles, and explosions. He asked Blyke not to do it to blow his abilities. Abel was behind them. They went to the roof to investigate Abel and found out that he was also seriously injured. There, Remy asks who did this to him. Abel said it was a masked man. He was somehow able to imitate her own ability. And he did this to her. He guessed that he must have a mirror and strength ability very well. Because of that, he defeated Eisen. They took Abel to the hospital. John came back to his room and Blight greeted him. He tries to be friendly with John and tells him not to worry about the masked man, because he will find him and expose him. John said he wasn't worried about that. The next day at school, John and Sarah are walking down the corridor when a student makes fun of Sarah, which they ignore, and moving on to Cecile, who came there and punished her and asks him to shut his mouth. Sarah wonders why she didn't come to class. John says he will go to take his class. Sarah enters the classroom. Everyone is shocked to see him there, because he never took classes. He found his seat. He saw Evie in class and asked since she joined this class. During lunch break, Sarah brought her lunch and asked Evie if she could sit with Evie. He happily welcomes Sarah, who thanks him for helping Arlo to find him yesterday. Evie tells Sarah that she is truly brave and strong, as he stands against, even without having any abilities. Sarah says it was an easy fight, but she won't do it again as she wants to avoid trouble. Evie told Sarah about it. He was always calm and she wanted to be like him. John stops Cecile and asks why she helped him in the morning. He replies it's not what he wants, so she tells him that they both want the same thing. And it was for dethrone Arlo that they both had to work together, and John agreed. Keon and Nadia visit Wellston School again. John was taking his class when he was called to the principal's main office. John went to the principal's office. He knocked on the door. When he opened the door, John was surprised to see Keon there. Suddenly all the bad memories appeared. All the bad memories from three months with him came to his mind. The principal asked John if he was okay. John said he was fine. The principal says that Keon is here to ask John some questions about UN Ordinary Books. John used to agree. Keon asks if he has the book now. John said no. Keon asked how long he had the book, and what John said was that he had it about two years ago as his father wrote. That's for John. John says that he has no intention of becoming a superhero so they don't need to worry about it. Actually, he did not agree with the idea of the book. 
Keon asks him how life is here. John says he is doing well here and has managed to make good friends here. Also, they allowed him to leave. John left the office and breathed a sigh of relief. Keon asked the principal that he wanted to see John again next week and wanted to suspend John for one week. The principal refuses to say that. He runs this school and not Keon. He asked what he was doing with John during readjustment class. He says he is too nervous around him. Keon responded that he was not authorized to share details about it. He added that he would return after a few days to take Sarah for readjustment in this class. The principal says he won't let him take it, unless he is provided with course details. Keon and Nadia leave school. John stood outside the school building waiting for Sarah. He was still thinking about his meeting with Keon. Sarah comes there and calls John. He asks him if he's okay. John replies he's fine. He asks her to go back to hostel. While back at the dorm, Sarah asks why she was called to the office. He replied he was summoned for an interview with Keon about the UN Ordinary Book. Said he wanted to take a walk to clear his head and left. Blyke standing outside the boys' dormitory at night. He was still thinking about their encounter with Vulcan. He wanted to stop thinking about it. But he couldn't escape this thought. Meanwhile, Arlo comes there and asks why he called him here, like asking if he would like some advice on how to handle things after becoming king. Arlo told him that. He's all taken care of those responsibilities. Although he was unsure of his strength. Lately, Arlo had been telling him that as long as his abilities continued to grow, others would follow suit. He added that he should focus on controlling students. The whole class rebelled in the beginning, especially when he and Aizen used to fight all the time and how Arlo kicked their butts to teach them a lesson. Arlo says that he has bigger issues to deal with with her. At that time, he said before he tried to create equality, and this made everyone uncomfortable as he left his kingdom. All the high tires start to beat the low tires because they consider themselves equal to the high tires. He seems to ask how he is controlling this situation. Arlo says teaching every problem student is his part. At school, Cecile asks students to practice their skills so that John can copy them secretly. He likes walking outside the school building. He realized it. Followed by another masked man, students at school watched the two of them through the windows. He seemed to remember that person with high abilities, so he decided not to activate his ability. John attacks him, but he blocks it. He tried to take off his mask, but John stopped his arm and kicked him in the stomach. He guessed that he must have copied her abilities and powers. That's why he hit this hard. When Blake was standing in the park, and he was thinking about something. Suddenly John was behind him. He also thought that John would beat him. But he managed to escape and counterattacked. John throws him to the ground, and trying to do so breaks his arm such as finally activating his ability to attack John like attacking him with a laser bomb. John blocks it throwing a laser beam at him, but John escapes. He attacks Blake from behind and he falls to the ground. He threw a punch at her back, then he left her there unconscious. Arlo was walking in the corridor when he heard some students talking about the fight between Blyke and the masked man, which they gave him the name Joker. At the hospital, Blyke opens his eyes and finds Eason and Remy standing there. He tries to sit up, but Remy tells him not to move much as he is still recovering, like saying he can't take it easy. When a maniac roams the school freely and is stronger than all of them, he added that he forced his opponent to use his ability and then mirrored the D.O.T., Remy wonders if he mirrors the abilities of his opponents. So they have to fight. That's why he always wins like that. He agrees with her and says her energy beam is amplified than black people are to him. He asks Eisen if his abilities were also strengthened during their fight. Eisen replies that he uses three other abilities. Also at that time so he wasn't sure. Remy said that they could find out the limits of his abilities. And who are his targets? and the next targets are those who can get a chance to fight him. Arlo stands on the roof thinking about what John told him about ripping out his system. Meanwhile, Eisen comes there and asks if he has a plan to stop John. At his previous school, John nearly killed half his class and was expelled. Arlo traps Eisen in a barrier and says that he should have told her this before. He asked Eisen to leave if he would meet his friend. Arlo said that John might be the strongest student in Wellston. He advises Arlo to come back against him, because no matter what, he couldn't give her the throne. Sarah and Evie were walking while chatting. While there, they see a girl named Cleo being bullied by Roland. Evie thought about what she should do, 
and then remembered what Sarah told her that she didn't care about her abilities. He decided to stop it. He pushed her away, but she was beaten and thrown by him. Then Cleo moved towards Sarah. Sora was scared. Cleo caught him by the collar. Sarah thought she would and he would get beaten up now or later, so she decided to fight back. He hit Cleo with his head. Then he kicked him and threw him on the ground. Cleo got angry. Sarah was helping Evie when Cleo punched her in the face. Sarah's vision became blurry. Cleo continues to punch him as Evie uses her ability to blind him. Meanwhile, Sarah punches him and knocks him all together, making Cleo run away. Evie introduces Roland to Sarah. He asks Sarah to teach them how to fight like him. Sarah replies that he learned it from John and he will ask him to teach them. They also said they had it, and they try to be friendly with him, but he gives off some bad vibes. And Sarah says she will talk to him about this. Cecile asks John why he didn't reveal John's identity. John tells her not to and questions her actions. He said, who would be John's next target reply? He was surprised by this answer. Blake returned to his room and saw John there. He greets her. He asks her if she has heard about her loss to the Joker man. John replied he didn't like it and sadly said he couldn't even fight it. John showed no concern. John and Sarah hang out after a long time. Sarah asks him what he does in his spare time since he rarely finds him. He replied that the teacher had given him extra work to do it. He can increase his value. Sarah says she can help him with this. John replies he will do it himself. Like that, he takes her away from the other students and troubles John asking him what happened to his face. He replied he got it during a fight with the middle class at school. John asks him, shouldn't he be more careful after what happened to him? He replied if John could get into any trouble he wanted, then why couldn't he? John says he's fair. Not wanting her to get hurt, he added when she saw him in the hospital that day, she felt helpless that she could not protect him. Sarah told him not to think like this. He said he was willing to stand up for himself and fight just like John did. At the Starlight restaurant, Darren was sitting when his girlfriend Layla came and greeted him. Darren stands up from his chair to meet her. He hugs her and says he misses her. Darren blushed as they sat down at their table. He kept looking at her. He asks her the reason she asks why she looks so angry and asks her to smile while eating. Darren asks him about his trip. He replies that his company is opening new branches across the country, and he is sent to train new people there. He said that his company is working on some new small gadgets. Darren asked what kind of gadget it was. He said it was a secret. He couldn't share. She asks him about him. Students at her school said bad things there, because a girl lost her ability. When some stranger injected him with some medicine, and it has been more than a month, but he still doesn't know why his ability until now has not come back. He asked Layla if she could help him, as his company specializes in these capabilities. She agrees, and he asks the name of the girl Darren said it was. Darren mentioned that the girl's name was Serafina. Layla was shocked to hear that name. He spilled wine on his clothes, and he ran to the washroom to clean it. The next day, Darren and Keen were having a conversation about their date last night. In conversation about his girlfriend, a student comes in with a broken arm and asks for his help. A student was passing through the corridor when he saw her in a hurry. He joined them to see what was going on. He saw that Joker beat Cecile this time and he had been defeated by Joker. He looked at the window and threatened the students. Everyone is scared. Sarah heard students talking about the Joker. He wondered at this name. Then he ignored it because he couldn't do anything about it. Otis visits Cecile in the hospital. He told her if he was beaten a little more, he would go to the hospital. Now he adds the student is panicking and there must be something that will be done to stop it. He replied that it was the duty of the king and queen to do anything he asked. Otis left the place. As she wanted to rest after a while, John came there and asked her how she was. He replied how could he ask her by asking this question, after doing this to him. He says he can't show forgiveness, and otherwise students won't be afraid of him. Remy opened the classroom door and asked Ezen if he found anything. Then he introduces Juni to him and says he was one of the Joker's earliest victims. At first he asked them if they had found anything, but they haven't found anything yet. They seem to say that every time they questioned every victim of the Joker, and they were all beaten up using their own abilities against them. But Juni somehow managed to escape from him, because he couldn't imitate his abilities.
Uni says his ability is flash forward and he can see the future. And he made the best decision. Because of that decision, he managed to trick Joker and managed to escape from him at that time. For him, who asked how they could find out which ability he couldn't copy, Eason thought that it seemed he couldn't copy that person's ability. He couldn't see the future. Arlo is informed about the attack on Cecile and that the next target is Remy. Arlo is shocked he leaves saying he needs time to think about it. He lay on the roof and thought, For Remy and John this fight will be a bloodbath because neither of them will stop. He thought he should stop this fight. He sat and wondered what he should do. According to him, John doesn't deserve this power because he acts like a child. Then he remembered about Eason telling him about John's thoughts. Arlo thinks that John is aware that he is unable to lead, therefore he acts like a disabled person. But Arlo encourages him to use his powers. He also remembers that John told him to rip this system apart, which Arlo realizes that it was all his fault, and everyone was punished for his mistakes that he discovered. And Arlo says he wants to talk. John says he doesn't want to talk to him. Arlo grabs his arm and says he's sorry. He apologized for everything. Arlo says that he shouldn't have tricked John. John yelled at him and said, sorry wouldn't change anything. Arlo says he'll do anything. John said and asked him to stop hurting the others in return. John said he knew that. Arlo wasn't even sorry. He just wanted to save his hierarchy. John turns to leave, but Arlo says he's not going anywhere until they finish. John also said he would not fight because he was someone who had made a difference between people who did not have special abilities and people who had high abilities for school. And by attacking him, Arlo will lose his reputation. He says that he will fight Arlo, but on his own terms. Sitting in his room, he seemed to think that after so many days, he was only able to shoot with only three fingers. But the Joker only reflects his abilities and shot with all his. Ten fingers meant he had observed them all and was skilled, just by watching their abilities. But how does he look when he has no ability with it? Suddenly she heard John come in. She saw him coming and closed the door. Blyke walked towards school thinking about John, for Remy comes from behind and shocks him. Remy asks why he looks so disturbed. He replied that he thought John was the Joker. Remy and Eason were shocked to hear this. They all went to the classroom separately on the spot. Remy asks her the reason for thinking so, as says only her feelings are strong, she says, that he thought about what the Joker would look like. As helpless and John comes to mind as he does too, a helpless Remy asks Eisen for his opinion. About this, Blyke suddenly remembers that what Eisen has been looking for all this time is John's history in the past. She catches him and asks if he knew in the first place why didn't he tell them. Before Eason said he didn't tell this, Blyke warned that acting impulsively could make things worse. Remy asked him for an explanation. He said he had no evidence to show John's true identity, as he has presented himself as a disabled person and a nobody. People won't believe it without hard evidence. He says that Arlo provoked him to show his true nature, and John has beaten Arlo well. Boggy Remy gets shocked when she sees Remy going to Arlo and asking why he didn't tell her about John. Instead of answering, this Arlo tells him to give up fighting him because he can't beat him and he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want him to get hurt. Army says he won't and will find John's weakness. That gave Arlo an idea to find John's weakness. Sarah was in the cafeteria carrying her lunch, and Evie and Terrence joined her at the table. Evie asks Terrence about his club meeting. He replies that things haven't been the same since Cecile left. The club members are unhappy as Eason doesn't publicize what happens at school. While Roland joins them, Evie asks why they haven't published anything about Joker. Sarah thinks that they are all too obsessed with this Joker. Terence replied that many of them had and wrote an article about it, but they do it not to be published. Roland said it sounded shady as they tried to hide from the other students. Sarah said it looked like she just climbed the stairs. Terence said for now it was true. But what if he started picking his targets randomly? It would be terrible, because nobody knows how to stop it. Roland added that he was very cruel, when he wins a fight but still continues to beat his opponent during training. Sarah asked John what he thought about the Joker. He replied that he had only risen through the ranks and had nothing to do with them. As it was, he was helpless. And even if he came for them, it wouldn't be anything new as they had been beaten many times in public. 
without knowing about it beforehand, so he had to stop overthinking. Outside the school, Arlo calls Sarah to talk to her. Sarah turned away because he didn't want to talk to her. Arlo tells him that John is a joker and he wants him to talk to him. Sarah comes back and tells him angrily not to drag John into this. He said that he was sick of his game, as he already did because he had done her a lot of harm. And now he wants to destroy his friendship with John. He asked her to leave John alone. Arlo realized that he would not believe it, so he apologized and left. By saying it was a joke, Cecil and John were in class where he asked why he didn't make a plan for his fight against Rummy. John says he's not scared about himself. He warns him that Remy is very strong and can take him down. If he's not careful, John suspects someone is spying on them. Young Eason listened to their conversation silently. Cecil caught him and brought him to John. He beats Eason and asks if this is how their queen wants to win by spying on opponent. He asks her to come back to him and tell him he will fight her after two days. In his room, Remy and Blyke find out about John's history. When Eason came in injured, they were shocked to see him like this, for Remy who asked him what happened to him. Eason explains everything that happened to him to Remy angrily saying that he doesn't have to do this. All she can let him get away with are warnings like asking her how John found her spying since he's an expert at spying. Eason said he did not know. For Remy, he said it was because Eason had active abilities. He showed them. John can be sensitive or around him, but he thought that he could only sense abilities within a certain range. Like he was asking her if she could replicate his ability beyond that range. Because if he can't, they might stand a chance against him. After all, by fighting him together, he said that Eason and he would hide in a place with a safer distance. So he needs help. They will attack Jan from there. Eason remembered that Jan and Cecile were working together so he would hide nearby and fight for Jan to reflect his abilities whenever he could. He added, Remy will fight him when he reflects his abilities. But what is clear is that they will not be able to defend against Cecile's abilities. So he only had one option left to lose to him quickly. They all go to John's room. He asked what they wanted. Remy says that he wants her to talk to him. John said he wasn't interested and asked them to leave him. He asks her to be polite as he just wants a private conversation between them. They went to separate rooms and John asked her what she wanted to talk about. He said that he wanted to stop this fight and was here to negotiate. John said he would not return and did not want to negotiate. She asked him about the reason for that. He always starts the fight, and they mention how he gets hit as a welcome gift, and how Eisen crushed his hand. And Blyke shot a beam at him for no reason. He shows his injuries and says there is not a day that goes by that he is not beaten by someone for no reason. He is shocked, and says he didn't realize this was happening and apologizes to her. John says he said so just because of his reputation in taking a risk now, and he is not even sorry, and all deserved this defeat. Remy realized that he was ignoring people with low abilities, and without realizing it, it was his fault. He said that he was very busy with her due to personal matters. He lost focus on what was happening, but now he will work to eliminate this imbalance. John said how would he do that when he doesn't know how the world works? Remy says he may be distracted, but John also has the power to solve problems. But he didn't do it, which was his fault, too. He replied that he was a disabled person, and it was their duty to save them. But they didn't. Now he will do it to end this system. Where Remy says this will make things worse than solve it. He said he would talk to another highly skilled person and find solutions to solve it. He mentioned that his brother had created the equation. When he becomes king, and he can do that too. He replied that. Arlo had teamed up with his brother, so why didn't he follow suit? That's because people didn't accept change until he beat them to it. Because of this, Arlo never worked on its big brother's system. Like he never cared about weak people, Remy said John didn't understand those things, because it can still be made better by following the Ray model. John says that his brother can't end this abuse, and he's not as useful as the other bigwigs. Remy gets angry and asks John to take back what he just said about Ray, because she doesn't know him at all. He said John wouldn't listen, so there was no point in continuing this conversation. He leaves saying he will meet her after two days. He asked Blyke and Dyson to go too. 
Arlo is sitting on the roof thinking about something when Elaine comes there and asks if she really told Sarah about John. He said yes, but now he thinks he shouldn't have had it. Like he's been through a lot that he added later. And threw it in to end this nonsense with John. And here let it be. Elaine says that the Arlo she knew before wasn't so desperate. He will find a solution to end the problem. Remy was walking down the hall and thinking about the conversation she had with John. Suddenly he heard a sound like someone screaming. He saw a girl threatening a boy with low abilities. He asks them what happened here. The girl said the boy hit her on purpose. Remy asked the boy his side of the story. He said that it was an accident and he didn't do it on purpose. Remy asks the girl to stop being aggressive towards her and just let her accept it reluctantly and leave it. Remy thinks about how he will do to stop this inequality. John is about to return from school, but Sarah is still thinking about what Arlo said to her. He asks John if he is the Joker. John is shocked and says how did he know? She said that Arlo told her yesterday and wanted her to talk to him about this. John says why he can't leave them alone. Ison and Blyke leave Remy's room and he asks them to rest properly, to get ready for tomorrow. While sitting on his bed, he thought about tomorrow's strategy. He would handle Cecile's abilities like he had to defeat her before he trained with Ray to counter lightning abilities as well. So he can handle it too, if John reflects it. Meanwhile, Blyke and Ison will be there to support him from afar. He didn't want to beat John. He just wanted to blow his cover in front of others. At school, John asks Cecile if she isn't happy that she will defeat their queen. He showed concern by saying that there was no need to tell her beforehand because he would make plans. John says he already knows about his plan because he can't beat him so his efforts will blow his cover. Instead, Cecile asked him about whose abilities John would use. John said he had something different. In his mind, Zeke was going somewhere when Cecile blocked Eisen's path and Blyke watched the distance. Remy is walking outside the school building when John comes there. He asks all students to clear the room and get ready for a fight. John attacks him with him dodging and giving him a shocked look. But John uses his defensive skills and they attack him again from which he barely escapes. He wonders if John is using Zeke's ability. John attacks him with lightning. The girl managed to escape but John tried again to hit her with a punch. While Blyke shoots him and saves him from getting hurt, Remy hits him with lightning but he stands. He powers up his lightning ability and throws it at Remy to slow him down and try to hit him again. But Blyke again hit him with the block and John fell to the ground. Remy tried to unmask him but John hit him just as hard. It was his trick to get her to Remy. John stares at Eason and Blyke and scales the wall to reach them. He kicked the Blyke and gave it a shock and threw it away. Eason attacks him but John dodges it and blows up his arm then he stuns him. Arlo and Holden are walking down the hall when they arrive to be informed of the fight taking place. Arlo watches and sees John beating up Remy. Blight called out to John to stop this fight as is, because it will not complete any target. Arlo asks Holden to find Sarah and bring her here and make sure she sees the fight. He jumps from the window to help Remy. John attacks him, which he is unable to escape, but Arlo creates a barrier to protect him. Holden finds Sarah in the library and asks her to come and see the fight to which Sarah agrees. He asks Arlo if he is okay. Arlo says he's fine, but she asks him to stay. John stands up and gets angry at Arlo. He stepped inside. Arlo asks about which abilities Remy has. Remy says he has four abilities now, and maybe he has his own too, but he's one hand down so they have a chance. John fires a beam at Arlo and he blocks the attack. Meanwhile, Remy gives him an electric shock and he manages to attack John. For Remy, Arlo discovered that John couldn't handle more than four abilities, the one he wants to protect from Remy. Sarah came to the window and found Joker's posture the same as John's. For Remy and Arlo did a combined attack on John. John breaks the barrier and attacks from the rummy. He defends himself while the others try to unmask John. But John defeated him and defeated him. He was about to smash his face when Arlo pushed him away. John surprised him and then attacked him with a beam and smashed his face into the ground. Sarah discovers that he is John, just like the moves he taught her before. His face had been destroyed. Everyone knows that he is the new king of Wellston. Ray started from the boy. Ray saw Kuyo carrying his stuff. He offers his help. Puyo said he didn't need any help. Ray introduced himself to Kuyo. Kuyo asks Ray about his ability level. Ray says it's 3.2. 
and he asks Kuyo about it. He said that it was 3.5. Rei is shocked that Kuyo only has that level of ability. Kuyo had told Rei that he would become stronger too. While walking down the hall, Kuyo tells Rei that the headmaster called him into the office and suggested he do it and get to know the royals. Rei thought that was great. Julio says that he will go to meet them now, and he could come with her when they reached the royals. One of them grabbed Kuyo and took him to meet the others. He was introduced to Cassandra. Rei also introduced himself. Cassandra says that Rei must also be strong if he is Kuyo's roommate. He said that Kuyo was stronger. She tells him that he will gain strength too if he works hard and makes Ray wonder if he can join the royals. Ray is taking a walk in the park when he sees a haggard gang beating up a student. He wanted them to stop this behavior. One of them attacks. It is a student. But Ray grabs his arm and says to let him go. They escape from there. Ray reaches the student and asks if he is okay. Ray also started. Fuyo and his gang low-level bullying. Ray asked to stop because enough was enough. Puyo screams and asks Ray whose side he is on. Did he call her soft and say she won't get stronger with this behavior that she pumped into him and left him? Ray is annoyed because of Kuyo's behavior. He opens his laptop and calls his mom. She asks how it's going, that's all he does before he replies Remy walks into the camera. He asked her about her school. She says it's fun and she has lots of friends. Ray asks what level they are or Remy can't understand the questions her mother sent her to play and asks Ray when did she start caring about such things, said everyone was talking about it here in Wellston. His mother ordered him to ignore her, she said, that such things shouldn't bother him to do what he doesn't want to do. After hearing Gavin's story, Calum asks that the same joker who defeated all royals came looking for a kid like him. And most importantly, he asked whether Gavin escaped. A visibly irritated Gavin tells Callum he has no idea how traumatizing that shit is. He was this close to being sent to the hospital, but Callum looked in disbelief and said that he wasn't born yesterday. Hearing that annoyed Gavin. Callum then asks Gavin what Joker could gain by attacking him. Gavin replied that he didn't know what was going on either. Kalum also said that it might be because he lied. Gavin, who felt disgusted, said that it was up to him if he did not want to believe it and left. Callum ran after Gavin and asked why he was so angry. At that time, he still thought that Gavin couldn't be serious about running away from the Joker. In the schoolyard, Roland was punched hard in the face by Serafina. Because of that punch, Roland fell down. Because he was in so much pain, Roland asked Serafina why he really hit him. But he was surprised when he saw the expression on Serafina's face. Serafina asks Roland if he hopes the attacker will go easy on him. He said it was impossible. They saw him as a target because he couldn't defend himself. Therefore, he told Roland to stop whining and get up. Hearing Serafina's words, Roland slowly stood up again. His worried friends asked Roland if he was okay, and Roland answered that he was fine. They then saw Serafina walking away. They asked what was wrong with Serafina. After leaving Roland and the others, Serafina sat on the edge of the sidewalk. At that moment, he realized someone was coming towards him. It could be seen that Evie was panting after running after Serafina. He also greeted Serafina and asked if anyone was bothering her because lately she had realized that Serafina didn't look like herself. At this point, Serafina asked why. Was it because she punched Roland in the face? Evie became nervous because she thought Serafina's gaze was very scary. But Serafina got confused. Then Evie said that since Royal was defeated, Serafina has now become more aggressive. He wondered in his mind whether Serafina was upset because she couldn't take part in the fight against the Joker. Evie asked Serafina to talk to them if necessary because they were here to listen, and they were all worried about her. Serafina replied that she was just very frustrated because she didn't have any useful abilities and put them at a disadvantage too much. He thought that they would never go anywhere. Hearing that Evie asked Serafina what she said, he said it was Serafina who taught them to stay confident and fight for themselves. That's why he asked why Serafina sounded like she wanted to give up. Hearing that, Serafina turned her head away and started to think, because everything he told her was a load of bullshit. Serafina then started to stand up. Evie asked what was wrong. Serafina then thought that he was also carelessly spreading his lies. 
Then he told Evie to end today's training. Evie was confused because they had just started. He told Roland that he was fine and he was only slightly injured. He still wanted to continue his training. Serafina replied that she wasn't feeling well, so she told them to continue training without her. Evie was about to say something, but Serafina didn't listen and left her. Seeing Serafina leaving, Evie thought that Serafina was the only one who believed in them. Therefore, he hoped that Serafina would not leave them too. At Wellston, the men's dormitory, John is trying to contact someone, but the person he contacted is not available. John also thought that Serafina was avoiding him. He asked why. He wondered if he had upset Serafina without realizing it. The last time they hung out was when Serafina asked him if he was a joker or not. John was afraid that Serafina would suspect him again, even though he had already told Serafina that it wasn't him. His hands were shaking, and he thought that someone else must be talking about him. He asked who of all the people he knew. He wanted to know who would dare talk about him. Finally, he thought that it didn't matter. If he only convinced Serafina that he was not a joker, he was sure that Serafina would definitely take his side. He believed that Serafina would trust him, and Serafina would trust him more than the others. He convinced himself that he is not a monster and he is not a joker. The next day, as Elaine was walking through school, she felt something behind her and looked back. He was surprised when Joker was behind him and asked Joker what he wanted, but the Joker just remained silent while wringing his fingers. Elaine felt something was strange and was sure it wasn't John. The Joker ran towards him and John was sure that the imposter's skill level was nothing compared to the real Joker. He doesn't accept the fake Joker using the Joker title as a scare tactic and will not fall for this. He then received a punch from the fake Joker and caught the fake Joker's hand. Elaine then hit him hard on the arm. The fake Joker screamed in pain. John then asked who he was and why he attacked him. When he was about to remove his mask, the fake Joker fought back. But Elaine can avoid it. The fake Joker then runs away. Elaine tries to chase him, but he loses her. As Arlo walked, students were talking about him from behind. They resent Arlo because he isn't technically king anymore. Arlo also hopes that John is finally satisfied and doesn't cause any more trouble. He then received a message from his cell phone. He then meets with Elaine and tells her not to mention him again because he doesn't want anything to do with her. Elaine informs that the person who attacked her was not John, but someone else wearing a Joker mask disguised as him. But because of the disguise, he lost track of himself in the crowd. Arlo finally turned around and listened to Elaine. Arlo then says that he's not sure if this is John's plan, but if word spreads, he's sure more jokers will appear. No one will know who is the real one and every student will be afraid of being attacked. Hearing that, Arlo trembled with annoyance. Eventually, he hit the wall hard from being fed up with the bullshit. He was angry to think John would go this far, forcing the entire school to suffer because things didn't go as planned. A worried Elaine asks Arlo to calm down. He said it wasn't what they expected but he was sure that if they worked with the others, they would find a way to fix it. Elsewhere, Cecile, who was waiting, finally approached John, whom she called. He tells her that he got news that many jokers have been hanging around the school and asks if she is aware of this. John replied, think for yourself, and walked away. Cecile tells him to stop and asks if he knows what he started because it's a mess. He told him that everything would fall apart if this continued and told John to reveal himself as king. That was the only way to stop this mess. John stopped and asked what if he didn't want to. Cecile grabbed John and said that they had made an agreement. He will help him dethrone Arlo and they will run this school together. John grabbed Cecile's hand and pushed her against the wall. He then told Cecile not to give herself too much credit and asked if she really thought she needed it. John explained to Cecile that he alone decided what happened around here and Cecile was in no position to do anything about it. That morning, after John's battle with the royals, everyone started talking about it, including Stone Boy, who chats with his friends in the school corridor. He said he had previously escaped John the Joker. It's very close, to the point that he had to be sent to the school hospital. But his friend was doubtful and said he appeared to be lying. After all, why would a Joker attack a little boy like him? Stone Boy leaves and says it's up to you if you don't believe him. In the school garden, Seraphine is seen hitting Roland in the face. 
Roland asked why he had to hit him until he bled, even though it was just practice as usual. Serafina said how could an enemy be so soft when faced with her. He coldly told her to get up and stop whining. Seraphine then left them. He was sitting alone at the edge of the classroom when a friend came to see him and asked what was happening to him and why he looked different lately since yesterday's battle royale. He offered to listen if he wanted to tell a story. Sarah said that she felt frustrated recently after she lost her ability. He said it would cause them harm someday. However, her friend convinced Sarah to keep her spirits up and not give up. So far, Sarah has been the one who taught them to keep fighting and practicing. Sarah is also burdened by John's lies. He knew that the Joker was him. He ended his training with his colleagues and left. John is at the dorm trying to contact Sarah. However, the number cannot be contacted. He felt that Sarah was now distanced from him. He wondered what made him do that if he had done something wrong that he didn't realize. The last time they met was when they were walking, and Sarah looked at John curiously and asked to confirm that John was not the Joker. He realized that Sarah suspected him. But all this time he believed in John. Someone might have told Sarah about it, but who? Is it one of the royals and their friends? The next day, when Elaine walked into the school corridor, he felt someone following him. When he looked back, it turned out it was the Joker. But the light in his eyes was different from John's. Certainly, he is only disguised as the Joker. The fake Joker approached him and attacked him. The attack hit Elaine in the face, but Elaine quickly grabbed her hand and punched the fake Joker's arm. And he fell. When Elaine tried to remove the mask she was wearing, the fake Joker ran away. Arlo walks into the schoolyard. Everyone was heard saying bad things about him. He accepted the fact that he was no longer a king. Then his cell phone rang. That's a message from Elaine. They meet at the corner of the school, and Arlo says that he doesn't want to hear anything more about John. But Elaine emphasized that it wasn't John. It was someone else wearing a mask and impersonating him. But Elaine lost track of him. Elaine speculates that now maybe everyone will be disguised as the Joker, and it could be John's doing, and everyone won't know which one is real. Arlo gets annoyed and destroys the wall of the building. He felt that John had acted out of line and forced the entire school to suffer just because things didn't go his way. Elaine tries to calm Arlo down and invites Arlo to solve this problem together with another team. Meanwhile, Cecil meets John in the corridor and asks him if he knows that currently there are many students disguised as Joker roaming the school. Cecil asks John to immediately reveal himself as king. That's the only way to deal with this mess. But John rejected that. Cecil said that his success in defeating Arlo was also thanks to him. John was annoyed and cornered Cecil, saying that right now, he was the one who decided whatever happened here, and warned Cecil to stay within limits, and that no one has the right to do anything. That evening at the Wellstone Men's Dormitory, Blyke entered the dorm room hallway and met John, who had just finished showering. Blyke was silent. He seemed worried about John after the battle. John asks what Blyke is doing here. He says that he wants to get his things, then leaves after that. He moves to Eisen's room. Eisen told him to sleep in the cupboard, but Blyke's response was not as usual. He looked confused and different. It turns out he still feels traumatized by what John did the other day. John was stronger than they imagined, even sending Remy and himself to be treated at the hospital. Eisen said that currently they were weak compared to John. Blyke wants someone to beat John, but who? They go to sleep but have nightmares about John, where he saw his friends murdered. He woke up and had the ambition to increase his strength so he could defeat John. The next day, Blyke, Remy, and Eisen walk to class. Everyone can be heard talking about them now. Some even belittle them. Hearing this, Blyke became angry and rebuked those who cursed. Eisen told them about the many jokers roaming around lately. They were even able to attack the school's elite. For example, Elaine. It is possible that this was used as an opportunity for revenge on those who persecuted the weak. When Sarah and her friends walked to class, they saw Joker standing in front of them. Who this time? At the same time, John was still thinking about why Sarah was avoiding him and didn't even answer the phone. When he walked towards the corridor, he found Sarah there, who was facing someone. He was confused as to how that could happen, 
who the person was that would even attack someone like Serafina. The fake Joker started attacking him. Serafine wonders if maybe this is John. But why did he do that? Sarah was hit by the attack. John, who saw this, did not remain silent, and he ran to attack the fake Joker to help Sarah. Sarah was surprised at what John was doing here. They attacked him together until the fake a Joker fell. Sarah wondered what was going on. Had she been misjudging John all this time? They both beat him. Sarah says it's a mess, where everyone is now fighting each other behind the name Joker. And the real Joker can see all the chaos he has created so far. John fell silent. Then after removing the mask that the fake Joker was wearing, it turned out that he was Kiara, their classmates. Sarah then took her colleague to the hospital. John offers his help, but Sarah refuses. They can do it themselves. He looked indifferent. Annoyed, John beat the fake Joker again. When he arrived at the infirmary, Darren was there. Then Darren told him to put Evie to bed. When he saw Sarah, Darren reminded him of Layla, Sarah's older sister. Sarah pensively sat beside Evie's bed. He felt that he, who had always been so strong and unrivaled, was now just helpless trash in front of the royal family. He thought all this time everything would be fine as long as John was by his side. But he felt that John was just tricking him by hiding a lot of lies behind everything he said. He now feels alone. Nothing can be trusted. Evie woke up and asked about what happened to Sarah and why she was crying. Sarah wiped away her tears and said that she was just sad because someone she had admired for so long turned out to be no different from other people. In the stairwell, a joker attacks the students again. This time he looked really angry. However, when the student was about to be attacked, Remy came and stopped the joker with his electricity. He uncovered his head. It turns out that Sia is a student who was being bullied by him and will be attacked for stealing his homework and tearing it up. Remy warns the student that everything he does by bullying people will come back to him. He regrets it and says that maybe he would have died if Remy hadn't saved him earlier. He also warned the fake Joker that what he was doing was wrong. He said that the Joker's identity was not something to be played with. Remy told them to apologize to each other and end the fight. Then he left. In the press meeting room, Eason scolded Roik for still not being able to write his editorial properly. Then the blue-haired student who had been attacked there told Eisen about what he had just experienced, and he suggested raising this issue in the press so that it can raise the name of the press with this booming news. All the members seemed to agree and asked Iseb to do it, but he refused. He thought that if he raised this news, there would be more fake jokers out there. Today is very hot. Eisen and Blyke stop by the cafe to drink cola. Eisen looks dizzy with his work in the press lately. All members complained and seemed not to understand how the organization was supposed to run. They always demand to report all the news that is happening. Blake said that that should be the job of the press so that everyone gets actual information. Eisen answered that it shouldn't be like that. Everything has boundaries and confidentiality. News has emerged again about the murder of a Spectre superhero by Amber. But Eisen speculates that the media knows more than what they share and that the media wants to alienate everyone from superheroes. Eason also thought that all this incident was just to raise their name, and of course to get money from the people they helped. Blake thought of something, that all the fighting they did also increased the tier of abilities they had. Blake might be up to something. When Arlo passed through the corridor, everyone seemed busy with the news circulating in the media. It's about a fake joker wandering around the end of the end. Arlo immediately headed to the press room where Eason was with Remy. He thinks after this Arlo will kill him. Not long after Arlo arrived, Eisen begged for forgiveness about what happened. He said that he couldn't be in this position. All the members don't seem to think about it. They don't want to listen and find their way. Regarding the making, it is also their doing. Arlo regretted his weak behavior. He said that Arlo chose Eisen to be in this position because he knew about his abilities. But Eason shouted at him and said that not everyone was able to do what Arlo expected. He was annoyed that all this time they seemed to be forced to do things they couldn't even do. Arlo told Eason to take care of this problem, then he left and Eason regretted what he said. Arlo then walks over and remembers what Ray said when he was alive. Well, in the future he will face many challenges, 
Of course, that will make him feel like giving up. However, Ray chose him. It was because there was a reason. Arlo took out his phone and sent a message. It's already 6 p.m. He had sent Sarah Heen a message to meet him at 5.30, but until now, Sarah had not come. He had expected it. But when he was about to leave, Sarah was there. They sat far apart. Arlo remembers the moment when they first entered the school and walked together. It was the calmest moment in his life, when the whole school was peaceful and there was no chaos. But recently he felt that everything was uncontrollable. He was confused about how and what he should do. Sarah then discussed John, who she felt had changed in the last few months. He always seemed to be hiding something inside himself. And Sarah never got an answer about that. For now, she will choose to stay away from John and not have any contact with him anymore. But he asked Arlo about what happened between Arlo and John. Arlo begins to explain what John is known for and claims to be cripple. But the reality is not like that. Then Arlo investigates because John is hiding something. And indeed, John isn't cripple. He's high tier after Arlo saw his abilities. However, what John told Sarah was different from the reality. When Sarah was suspended for weeks, Arlo took John to a turf war and was ambushed by Mei Li and Ventus. That's all Sarah knows. Arlo says he shouldn't have involved himself with John. Hearing that made Sarah remember what Elaine said. They both seemed to describe John as a monster. Seeing that Sarah didn't know anything, Arlo told her about John, who turned out to be king at his previous school in New Boston. Meanwhile, so far, Sarah only knows that she was previously homeschooled before finally moving to Wellstone. Arlo explains that John was kicked out of there after slaughtering all his classmates. During the turf war, it was the opposite of what he heard, and it was Arlo who was defeated by John. He admitted that he was wrong, but he did not embarrass or even destroy him. But he lost and lost his title from that day. Since then, John always told Arlo to do what he asked. When things didn't go his way, he hit him, cursed, cursed, and punched him. Sarah felt that John couldn't possibly do something like that. But Arlo said, why tell lies? He said that everything started to go wrong when he started to stop listening to her. He only ordered to protect you, but he couldn't do it alone. He just continued to pretend to be weak. He did it all because he wanted a life away from the ranks. He didn't want to be part of the royal family and blamed Wellstone's hierarchy. After that, he became a joker and started creating all sorts of chaos at school. What John prioritized all this time was revenge, which made him uncontrollable. Sarah woke up and tried to think about it and tried to talk to John later. John stood by the window and thought about Sarah's gaze at him. Cecil came there and said that all this chaos was because of John's actions, who only wanted to protect Sarah from being persecuted by other students. After all, he is an ace who almost everyone hates, but by using a joker, they can attack him more easily. Cecil asks if it's not for Wellstone, to at least reveal himself to protect Serafina, but John refused. He looked at him and told Cecil to protect Sarah. Everyone this morning is talking about Joker again. This morning, three people were admitted to the infirmary. Remy, who was there, heard and tried to ask for help. Some of them helped Remy, Blyke, and Eason solve this problem. In another corridor, the Joker was seen again attacking a student until he was black and blue. But Blyke was there and stopped the fight. He sent the students to the infirmary, but many of them wanted to see the face behind the Joker. But Blyke wouldn't allow it, he would investigate personally. And he told the students that it is wiser and kinder to treat people so that they don't get hated and feel this way. It would be better for him to reflect on all his evil deeds in the infirmary. Then he brought the Joker. Again. Most of the Jokers are those who are victims of bullying and use the Joker as a medium for revenge. Blyke asks him not to do this stupid thing again. From now on, he can look for Blyke, Rumi, or Eason if someone bothers him. At Raimi's dormitory, Eason and Blyke gathered there. Today, they found eight Jokers. They realize it is their responsibility to fix the mess that Arlo said it was. They intend to gather students with the power to stop this chaos, including John. But Blyke and Eisen doubt it. They thought this was what John wanted. He who wanted Royal was not considered. The proof is that after this chaos, he never appeared or provided a solution. Sarah and Arlo are seen walking together. 
Arlo asks if Sarah was attacked today by Joker. Sarah says only one and she can handle it. Arlo asks him to tell him if the attack comes again. Seeing the two of them walking together made Cecil wonder what they were doing. In the library, Blyke is looking for information on potential criminals. This is all because of his ambition to become strong. He plans to fight the criminals and leave afterward. That way he wouldn't be chased by Ember. After seeing and monitoring Sarah, Cecil reported it to John. So far, Sarah is fine. Even the last time she was attacked by the Joker, Arlo came to her aid, and they even left together saying John's name. It seems they are close again. John was angry about how Sarah could choose Arlo over him. Cecil assumed that John didn't want to reveal himself because he didn't want Sarah to know. He said that he thought Sarah already knew his cover. But because John didn't tell him that, he approached Arlo again to get protection because he had lost his abilities. So to overcome this, John should reveal himself to everyone. In annoyance, John hit Cecil until he was bruised. He said that all the jokers who attacked him were probably people he had victimized in the past. He asked Cecil again about what they were talking about about John. Cecil didn't know that John emotionally hit him again. In her room, she kept thinking about what Sarah was doing with Arlo. Will what happened in the past happen again? Where Claire also did the same thing and then brought everyone to attack her. Is it possible that Sarah will do the same? Blyke and Eisen prepare to sleep in their dorm room. Blyke then asked why Eisen wore socks when sleeping. He explained that using rafters would make you sleep better. Then he looked dizzy about what happened recently. It is likened to Arlo being a boss who forces all the work, but when he makes a mistake he only says to fix it, or else he will kill his entire family. It weighed on him. Blyke replies that Arlo wouldn't go that far. He just shouted at him and then left. After all, before all this chaos, he had dealt with problems and chaos at school when he had just been appointed King Wellstone. At that time, he was only a grade two student, but had to sort out all the chaos of a school that didn't even have any structure. So he just tried to take responsibility for the chaos that occurred. He doesn't want to end his school year without doing anything for the sake of school. Therefore, we must try to support and help him. Eisen felt dizzy from Blyke's babbling, and then they went to sleep. In the middle of the night, Blyke launched his action to catch the Earthquake Man. Will it work? Blyke began attacking Lance, the Earthquake Man's troops. He shot his red laser at everyone, until there was only one Lance left. When Blyke approached him nimbly, Lance shook the ground and made Blyke jump. He got it. Then he pointed his laser finger at Lance's head. He was really scared and asked for mercy. But Blyke didn't let him. He chose to shoot at his feet so he couldn't escape. Then the woman he was helping shouted at Blyke that he didn't need any help. Because everyone who comes here definitely has certain aims and objectives. However, Blyke explained that he had no purpose other than as a training medium to increase his level and strength and help catch criminals on the loose. But the girl didn't believe it. And Blyke left him. He changed his clothes at the end of the city building. And I had to go home quickly before Eisen woke up and found he wasn't there. Someone was standing above watching what happened. Who's he? In the morning when Eisen woke up, he saw that Blyke had not yet woken up, even though it was time for him to go to school. He shouted at him and instead received a slap from the shocked Blyke. Blyke said that he wanted to go back to sleep because he stayed up late last night and couldn't sleep. Eisen said it was because Blyke didn't wear socks. In the corridor, Blyke is seen walking while remembering last night's events and still can't believe that he defeated the villain. He came to the infirmary to have Darren check the bruises on his back. Darren said that it wasn't that bad, and he suggested that stop fighting with Eisen and give him medicine. Meanwhile, Eisen, who was busy with his report in the newsroom, was suddenly surprised to see Serafina's arrival there. He said that he wanted to know more about John. Eisen was reluctant to discuss all of John's challenges, but now Sarah needed him to find information so he could talk to John about this problem and chaos. In the girls' dormitory, Sarah reads all the documents related to John given by Eisen. He read all about John and his past. He just found out that John got to level 7 in his second year at Boston, just like him, and about his dark past and the differences when he entered Wellstone right when he read the book Unordinary, where he admired the book. 
Serafina noticed that John had applied the contents of the book and changed for the better. He holds back his strength and acts like a loser, but he couldn't endure all of that. So this is why he became a joker and caused chaos. Because his patience has run out. But isn't that repeating the same mistakes? The next day, Sarah received a call from Roland saying that Evie was attacked by Joker. Evie was lying on the hospital bed. Roland told Sarah everything that the Joker blocked their path and then targeted Evie until she was knocked out. They tried to catch him, but he managed to run away and cover his face. Meanwhile, Terrence also ran and disappeared. Sarah asked about disappearing and whether it was invisibility. And Roland answered that Terrence could disappear, a.k.a. invisibility. This suddenly made Sarah remember the time she was with John after going to the mall. There was someone following them and even wearing a t-shirt that John bought but couldn't be seen. Could it be him too? Evie realized and was annoyed and at the same time wondered why the Joker was attacking low tier like them. He intends to avenge the Joker someday. However, Sarah said that for now, it is best to focus on your safety and not act rashly. In the park, while walking, Holden asks Arlo. He recalls Remy saying that he should probably be gentler when reprimanding people because he looks scary. He asked Arlo to be sure, but Arlo doesn't think so. The sound of an incoming message from Arlo's cell phone turns out it was Sarah. He said he would meet John after school. Sarah waited in front of John's class. John looked happy and immediately approached him. They are both in a class. John wondered why he had to be so personal while laughing and drinking. Sarah went straight to the main point, namely asking about the Joker. However, John insisted that he was not the Joker. Sarah says that she knows everything. When he fought against the Royal, even though he didn't see his face, he could read his movements and steps. Still, John didn't admit it. John started to get emotional with Sarah because she cornered him by reviewing his past. He knows all the happenings in Boston. John was angry he started to lose consciousness. John says that the royals and hierarchy at Wellstone only think about themselves. However, all of that has been reversed by the events that have occurred recently, where it is the low tier and mid tier that have had to suffer because of the Joker's actions which have not yet stopped. After a long argument with Sarah, John could not control his anger and was incited by Sarah's words, which seemed to blame and corner him, even though her intention was only to help him. He shouted at her and said that Sarah was just a cripple who couldn't do anything. There was no need to think about helping others. It was better to think about how to save himself. Sarah was suddenly shocked and devastated by what he said. It wasn't the same as a moment ago when he lost his ability. John always supported him, accompanied him, and assured him that it would not be difficult to become someone who had lost his abilities. He was no longer the same. The old John had disappeared. Then angrily, Sarah slapped him hard. John is blinded by hatred and the past. He is so angry that it even reminds him of the incident at Boston and Claire. Everyone looks the same, even Sarah. When John intended to harm Sarah at the right time, Arlo arrived. He stopped him and tried to make him realize that he was hurting the person he had been protecting. But still, John didn't realize it. He was covered in anger and blinded by revenge. He says that they are just trash. They intend to destroy him together. Yelled at them and said he thought they were all dead. Sarah comes out and Arlo follows her. John wondered why all this happened to him. He cried alone in the room. Sarah said that all this time she had been deceived by John. Now he had to end all this nonsense. But Arlo said that John now needed help, and no one could help but Sarah. But Sarah said that there was nothing more important than making herself stronger now, and now he wants to see Terrence. Arlo is shocked because he also wants to know about her. In the newsroom, Ison appears to have just revised a member's editorial. When the member leaves, Sarah and Arlo are there. Ison was suddenly shocked and wondered what they wanted to do here. Arlo told Eisen to comb the room and make sure there was no one else besides them in the room. With his ability, Eisen said that it was only the three of them. Then he was worried whether they would punish him. Sarah asks him about Terence, because Terence is a member of the press. Eisen explained that so far nothing was interesting about Terence, and his writing was mediocre. But Arlo tells Eisen that Terence wrote an article about Eisen, Raimi, and Blyke at the mall. But he didn't realize that, 
and remembered someone who was transparent in the mall at that time. Turns out it was Terence. But he asked why they were asking that. Sarah assumes that Terence has something to do with Sarah's loss of power. Ison answered why to investigate. The authorities had already taken care of it. Sarah said that she had not been contacted by the hospital and the authorities for weeks. This is the same as what Remy told about his brother who died. Eason wondered if the authorities wanted to get rid of them. Arlo asks for Terence's copy of the class and goes to investigate more about Terence. Meanwhile, Seraphine was lost there remembering what John had said to her. One of them is Claire. He asks Eisen to find out about Claire and connect her with Sarah. Eisen was in his dorm room looking for information about Claire from New Boston. He got it. However, all the data looks normal, nothing special. Even he is just average. After opening the photos, he found John in each photo. They look very close. When he was trying to look for his contact information, Blyke came. He immediately closed his laptop so that Blyke wouldn't see him. But Blyke insisted on looking until finally Eisen pushed him out to look for food. The laptop is lying on the bed. Remy, Blyke, and Eason enjoyed their lunch at the cafe today. Eisen scolds Blyke because he makes noises while eating and orders too much food. Blyke said recently he couldn't control his eating, so he kept feeling hungry. Then Blyke discussed the Joker case, which is now getting worse. Remy even revealed that he now has a cupboard full of Joker masks. Then he asked about the progress of seeking help to monitor the Joker. Blyke has asked for help from Mei Lee and Ventus to keep an eye on Joker and patrol the halls when they are free. Meanwhile, Remy gets help from Elaine, who has the same goal as them. Also, Holden. But he's still thinking about it. Cecil didn't even think it existed. Also unexpectedly, she invites Zeke and he agrees. Everyone was shocked to hear how a bastard like him would help. He even blindly attacked Sarah when she lost her strength. They will try to end this problem quickly by reducing the feud between low-tier and mid-tier. Hearing that Eisen thought what if revealing the real Joker to reveal the fake Joker running around. But if he had anything to do with John again, then it would be the same as hurting himself. Eisen lay on his bed and thought about it all the time. He kept thinking about the responsibilities his friends said he had. But why think about that? When Eisen starts to sleep, Blyke wakes up to return to his routine work every night. The next day, when Sen was walking in the corridor, he encountered a fight. None other than that is about the Joker. He was caught and killed by his target. Gianna insisted on beating him up and teaching the Joker a lesson. Eason was there to stop them. However, Gianna turned angry at Eisen. That's why they have been letting the Jokers get away with it while those who have been hurt are left alone. He thought he had been honoring the royals wrong all this time. He said maybe the royals were afraid of the Jokers and did something unfair like that. In his heart, Eason said that it was true that he was afraid of the Joker. Even Joker almost killed him. But what Gianna said is true. Why detain and cover up Jaker's identity? Why keep covering it up? Gianna said that now she would follow the Joker's actions. The royals let people use Joker's identity to win, so why doesn't he follow Joker's steps and fake attack a few more times? But Eisen asked, would he accept it if it turned out that Joker would lead this school? Eisen was pensive while lying in his room. Again, he thought about the Joker. It's all because of John. He made them a spectacle at that time and showed everyone that the Joker was indeed strong. This is what causes them to disguise themselves as Jokers to attack. The average of them is low tier. Eisen is very worried about this condition. But finally, he decided to reveal who the real Joker was. He didn't want this chaos to continue even though he knew that if John found out about this, he would be finished. But he had no other choice. The next day, in the newsroom. Sarah came to ask Eisen for information about Claire. Soon, Arlo also came to discuss Terence. Cecia data and document recap Terence is a student with good academic performance. And he has no other skills besides writing. According to the data, it seems normal. There is nothing suspicious. Eisen assumed that the invisible person in the mall was different from Terence, who only had 2.4 strength. Apart from that, at the mall, Eisen saw the person take his friend and disappear, where transferring power can only be done by high-tier people. However, 
Arlo denies the article that Terrence made regarding their incident at the mall. Sarah gave the possibility that the first could happen where Terrence just admired high tier and created those articles. Secondly, the information written here was not accurate. It could be that he is a high tier person who wants to be judged as weak. Arlo says it reminds me of someone. Eisen added another possibility that this could be part of the amplification drug. They are all shocked. Eason just assumed because he saw his battle with Vulcan, he changed drastically after injecting the amplifier. It even got Ray killed. Sarah, who was curious, continued to ask about their group and asked how far the authorities had gone. But Arlo didn't seem happy with the discussion. Everything got tense. In his apartment, Arlo continues to think about what they discussed earlier, also about the actions of the authorities, and Remy's remarks stating that he trusted the authorities. Of course he believed it. His aunt was one of them. They are people with great power tasked with guarding and protecting everyone. But why does everyone not trust the authorities? Is it because their actions were too late or maybe Arlo didn't know something? The next day, several students were seen attacking. It turns out that the one who was attacked again was the Joker. They threatened him not to do such stupid things again. Then Evie, who was walking from class, found the child battered. He intended to help him, but remembered that these fake jokers had also gone too far and even hurt his friends. But he couldn't leave her. He tried to lift him and take him to the infirmary, but Remy, who was running to class, stopped and helped them. He was so strong that he was able to carry the child to the hospital. Evie was amazed by Remy. Not only was she beautiful, but she was also very kind. How could the Joker hurt Remy? He asked how he felt when he fought the Joker. John walked up the stairs into the corridor. Everyone is looking at the news in the newspaper about Joker's real identity. At the same time, John passed them. They were suddenly shocked that it was John who was behind the Joker mask. But he was just a cripple, and now everyone can be a Joker. Some of them said they should stay away from it anyway. However, this could be fake news that Eisen and his colleagues created to make things worse. He ignored it. While walking in the corridor, someone approached him and asked about the truth of the news that was circulating. He annoyed him by continuing to ask questions and touching his shoulder. John said that don't touch it. Callum instead pushed him against a locker, mocked him, and intended to beat him up. But he avoided this, and John hit him back in the face. He got angry and activated his phantom push by attacking a long distance using his palm technique. John avoided that. It turns out he copied it. Then he attacked Callum back until his head hit the wall. Annoyed, he punched him in the face again. And go. In the girls' dormitory, Sarah holds the information about Claire given by Eisen. He called the number listed, and Claire answered it. Sarah called her, and Claire answered the phone. But he thought it was a telemarketer, so he turned off the phone. Sarah is still trying to call and tell him about her purpose, namely about John. He explains how he knew about Claire. Claire thinks Sarah is John's girlfriend, and she says that she hasn't had contact with John for years. Looks like he caught it wrong. Sarah explained about what happened with John, and Claire said that she did the same thing here. Because he made other students suffer, Claire invited her other friends to fight John. But they were all massacred. He feels regret for helping John discover his powers. Seraphine was curious about that. They continued via video call on their laptop. Claire started to explain how they got to know each other, namely in the first grade of junior high school, which was their first week of school. Claire, who had been bullied, saw John being bullied by other students. After they left, Claire stretched out her hand and helped John to get up. That's where they got to know each other. The story begins with Adrian, who is John's childhood friend. The three of them were always together after that and protected each other. However, because Claire and John don't have any abilities, Adrian is the one who always protects them, even though in the end, they still lose. Claire is worried about John, who is always moody every day. At that time, he said that this was all unfair. Why did they continue to be oppressed by those with stronger abilities? Claire was worried about him. During her final year of school, Claire had her first prophetic vision, and it was about John. He visited him and told him about his vision. He saw John's eyes shining and his hand reaching for something. Every day, John always took time to try it, but nothing came up. Claire thought this was all because his words made her more ambitious. 
until one day they were bullied again by a group of children. John was being beaten by them, but when the child revealed his abilities, John suddenly released the same ability and his eyes lit up. The boy dodged him, punched him in the face, and walked away. They lose again, but now John has the power. From then on, everything started to change. Every time Claire saw a prediction about John, she immediately told him and even discussed it with him. Claire says that John has all the power, but he doesn't understand it. And even now, he still hasn't been able to unleash his strength other than the last time he fought his friend. Claire assumes that John's strength is copying his opponent's strength. This was seen in his last fight, where the shot he produced was the same as his opponent's. John wanted to try Claire's power, but it seemed impossible because the power came without invitation. The right choice is Adrian. They asked Adrian for help to train John's strength, and sure enough, in less than a week, John was able to imitate Adrian. After that, they continued to practice, spending their holidays looking for information and learning movements via video. Until high school arrived. They realized that high school and middle school are very different. They are all strong. However, they will use this as a proper training tool. John continued to train and take every challenge until he was injured, continuing to observe and learn, until finally, he was able to win his first fight. Since then, John always won the fight, so they no longer needed to hide because John was there to protect them. But Claire felt something had changed with John's ambitions. He even started attacking students who had attacked him in middle school. They now look like bullies. Because of the fight, John was summoned and received punishment. Previously studying and doing homework together, now John was only busy training himself. He changes. The day started when they went to school together. John said that he wanted to be a royal. Apart from being respected at school, he thought that being royal could also improve his abilities by participating in the turf war. He felt that the people in Boston were very weak and boring. So he wanted to fight the strong from other schools through the turf war. Otherwise, his level would not increase. Claire recommends practicing appropriately. Don't force yourself. While on the school field, John looked battered. He was beaten by Zirian, King New Boston High School with a level of 3.4. Zirian said that there was no need to act arrogantly even to the point of challenging him for the title of king. They all cheered him because all this time John had been nothing more than a troublemaker. Since then, instead of restraining himself, John has only gotten worse. He even kept asking Claire about her predictions, but it didn't show up. He hates losing so much that he wants to become stronger by defeating everyone. He always insists on winning every fight. Until their first year ended, John had not yet defeated Zirian, but finally Claire had her vision of John. And the next day he told me about it. He said that John had an aura ability that was able to revolve around other people's auras. In other words, John can absorb the aura of other people's powers when he is near them and copy them easily. If it was a simple power, but if the power was at a high level, then John would need a long time to copy their power. They spent their free time training and improving John's strength until he injured Adrian during training. On the first day of school, the first thing John did was challenge Zirian. With the results of training and increasing abilities, he managed to defeat him with the imitation power of Zirian, and now he is the new king of New Boston High School. But everyone didn't like him and didn't even want to follow him as king. Hearing this made John angry, and he beat the boy black and blue. Then Claire, who tried to stop him, was pushed and fell. He didn't regret it at all. He was getting more and more arrogant. When Claire came to him at home, Claire apologized for trying to stop him. John arrogantly replied that he was now a king, and he didn't need input from anyone, even a weak tear like Claire. He leaves her. John no longer cared about them. Nothing else was more important than strength and ranking to him. It started when Clear got his vision of John again. He saw John getting more and more brutal. He was very accomplished and tried to erase the memories and visions of John. He didn't want to see him again that day. Claire and John walked in the park, but Clear didn't want to tell about Pang. Just about John, though, so nothing changed. Don't tell me that yes, yesterday went to force. And he saw other people fighting. Suddenly he could feel everyone's aura, and he asked Clear if it was possible he could use more than one ability at a time, but Clear to see daydreaming, 
until John surprised him and answered that it was possible, and why didn't he try? The clients felt that John was very suited to his abilities, and John was even able to develop his abilities until one day John met them and invited them to follow and watch him in a tub force match against children from other schools. But Yun's sister and Clear said that it was just only royals can follow it. But they are just ordinary students, so they will break the rules and say that they are the king of the school, and anything can be done so they just go along with it. They don't need to worry about the rules. However, it turned out that they were only being used. It was just a trick where Jam used them to become kings and check puppets that were used to fight enemies from other schools. He used Adrian and came out as king and jet to complete the formation so he could follow that. John was getting stronger. He could even absorb all that experience for himself and train as much as he wanted. Everything continues until John increases his strength. He can use two powers in one attack, increasing to three, increasing again to four. No, he is invincible. He is getting stronger, but he is getting more arrogant and crueler in his treatment of others. Seeing the changes in John made him hurt. He was disgusted by all his actions. Until that day and asked them to come back to join him, but this time I refused, and he said that he didn't like seeing John act too much towards people, but didn't underestimate him and say that clear is too much. However, saying he would try to be as relaxed as possible when fighting them, hearing made Claire calmer until finally she was willing to go along. In the Tefor match, he finished off his enemy even after the enemy didn't move anymore. When Adian tried to stop him, he pushed John but didn't feel that it was an insult to him. Finally, he got angry and attacked the agent while shouting and blaming Adrian. Seeing that Adian was injured, Clear tried to help and please John, but John, who was very angry and temperamental, pushed and slapped Claire until she fell. Don't accuse them of betraying him. Try to stop his efforts to raise his good name while practicing controlling his power. They clashed with all the suggestions and input given by care, and some of them were useless for John. He was very arrogant and didn't want to listen to other people. He felt that now he was king and he had the power to manage his own life. Since that incident, Claire started to stay away from John when she passed him. She didn't want to reprimand him, and of course, not long after that, she didn't find a replacement. As time went by, the condition of the cell phone school got worse Everyone hated John and avoided John, and there were even people who looked at him and were immediately attacked and completely beaten up. Rain has lost his mind. However, because of that strength, he became increasingly invincible and unstoppable, and no one could even touch him. Even though he is now clearly no longer related to John, his reputation is still attached to John, where everyone often insults and insults him as John's pet dog, John's follower, and so on. Everyone was talking about it was useless, and he realized that one of the causes of the chaos at his school was him and his visions. If only Clear hadn't helped John gain his powers by telling the prophecies all this time, maybe today would never have happened. One day the client had another vision, which showed him and a group of other children facing off against Kong. The next day at the recess bell, he went out to play and met Syrian to invite him to fight John. Of course, Jer will not easily believe the words of Claire, who is John's friend. Claire then explains to Syrian that she had a vision where she saw herself and Jir fighting John. Of course, it was a lie to gain Zirian's trust. Claire also lied that he had been helping John all this time, but after he got everything he wanted, he threw him away. Syrian doesn't believe Claire's words and says that she and John are just snakes. That day it turned out that Zirian had granted Claire's request and even invited the other children to join in attacking John. They had been waiting for him for a long time, but he never came. Claire convinces them to keep waiting and tells them that John will be here any minute. John finally came there. He saw Clear, along with the group of children, and he asked why Clear was there. Was he trying to betray him? Claire answered that all these people were those who had been abused by John, and they, they were fed up with his violence been doing all this time. Claire felt that John had lost control. Even after he was confronted by several people who had been his victims, he still didn't realize it. He continued to utter dirty words at Claire and rebuked everyone there. Hearing what John said made them all angry and emotional until they started attacking. But Claire couldn't do anything, and John brutally fought them all, 
he slaughtered them one by one, and even many of them. Claire is weak in front of John. She can't do anything. John asked why she was doing this, then grabbed her hair and continued to yell at her. Claire only said that she was the one who made everyone like this. Claire then slapped John. He says he doesn't deserve all the power he has now he regrets ever helping, and he wishes he never knew John. John grabbed him and slapped him in the face, but then John was arrested. Claire feels sad about what happened to John, but she is also upset that all this time John only used them and treated them like slaves. And after the evil deeds he did to everyone, he only thinks about himself and considers himself a victim. John hates abuse more than anyone else. Even after he got power, he became the persecutor. Claire cried on the phone, but Sarah said that it was okay. Everything that happened had happened, and it wasn't her fault. She didn't need to blame herself. Sarah said that all the efforts made by Clear were not in vain. She listed Kelston as someone who had no abilities. Maybe it all happened because of Claire. Even when they were first friends, he always talked about equality and respecting other people. But now he has changed and seems to be back to his past. Then Claire asked Sarah what her real purpose was in calling Claire, was John had beaten everyone at her school. Sarah answered not technically, but now her condition was worrying. Claire answered that what was making her worried was she was just afraid of being beaten by John. Sarah answered that by telling him that he was actually the number one person at Wellstone, but was currently in a weakened condition. Claire asked if someone could be weakened. Sarah answered it was a very long story she would tell another time they ended the call. It was a very bright day. Bleck was in the school library. He was asleep because he hadn't slept for several nights. But suddenly someone activated it. It was Remy. He invited both to start a club. Remy said that he met a girl yesterday. And the girl said that she wanted a peaceful school, right? She could do anything freely without having to feel afraid. From there, Remy thought, Oh, why not just create a club or a forum and place for everyone to be able to feel safe and comfortable and do anything freely without having to be afraid? However, there they supervise and look after everything. Remy is good or not, and others are also allowed to join no matter how high or low their level is. They visit Eisen in the newsroom, but Eisen is seen hiding under a table and is afraid of what happened. It turns out he was scared due to an article written about John that was circulating at school, namely news revealing who was behind the Joker. Blyke says that he shouldn't worry, even if John finds him. He just needs to call them all to help him. Ramiv said that his article worked quite well, where today he only caught one Joker. Unlike usual, there are so many Jokers running around. Remy and Blyke began to explain what their purpose in coming there was, namely to invite Eisen to create a club with them. He named it a safe house, where the club will become a forum and a safe and peaceful place for students to gather. They have also discussed this with Mr. Keene, and he agreed to it and even gave them a classroom to use. Eisen agreed, and he said that he would take care of it. When he was cleaning up the classroom to be used as a club, Remy thought about Ray. He thought that all this time, Ray had always taken matters into his own hands, but now it was different after he left Wellstone, even Arlo, who had tried his best to do his best when he became king. And this is the time for Remy to also give his responsibility and contribution to Wellstone. But when he thought about all that, Remy fell. Blyke swiftly ran to help Remy. He even used his strength to destroy the table that was about to fall on them. Seeing Blyke's new power, Remy was curious about that power. Blyke admitted that he had been diligently training and increasing his strength recently, and Remy even invited him to fight one day. He was happy that Blyke had now recovered after he lost his confidence against John a few moments ago. While walking in the schoolyard, John heard everyone talking about him. Everyone wanted to stay away from him and said that he could attack at any time, and told everyone to stay alert. This was the same as how he felt at the previous school when everyone was also staying away from him. At that time, John was stopped by three people, namely Martin, Zeke, and Julianne. Zeke says that he heard a rumor going around the school saying that John is the Joker and says that he's just here to confirm it. Arlo, who was walking in the corridor, saw a large crowd ahead. He approached and saw that it was John with Zeke and his team. Now everyone there saw the match between JK and John. Sarah, who was there with Evie, also saw the crowd, but Sarah avoided it and didn't want to see something like that again. She felt it was painful to see everyone being slaughtered by John. 
John thought that everyone had thought of him as trash because he didn't have the ability. And even now that his cover had been blown, everyone still looked at him with disgust. John thought that, why endure all this? He still looks like a monster, whether he is a weak person or a strong person. He thought that he would make everyone understand. Then he quips at Zeke about the lunch bag. Zeke was very surprised how could he know that when he didn't tell anyone. Zeke starts attacking John. However, when John approached him, he quickly avoided and reached Martin. He grabbed his face and then smashed him into the ground. Seeing John, who wasn't from home, everyone ran to avoid the fight. John then kicked Martian, but his body hit the school wall until it cracked. Zeke regrets his actions and finds out that the article was true when everyone was running and avoiding the fight their friend Martin hit the wall until the wall was destroyed. John turned his attention to Julianne. Julianne immediately ran towards Zeke and told Zeke that it turned out that John was not a disabled person he would immediately kill him, and it quickly turned out that John had grabbed him and hit him in the face until he fell. John looked so angry he looked at Zeke and let Julianne hit the wall until her head exploded. Zeke was confused when facing John. He regretted what Zeke had done, then ran away and John quickly chased him. Suddenly he was in front of Zeke, he said. Why are you running? Zeke, who had no other choice, immediately attacked John with his strength, but John blocked it and then punched his arm until it broke. John reminded Zeke about the time when they first entered the dormitory where Zeke killed him along with his friends, realizing that he felt sorry. But suddenly, John attacked him again by kicking his body. Then suddenly he changed places again, and quickly he was behind him and ready to hit him. Of course, he beat him until his body destroyed the school wall. In such a battered condition, John grabbed him again and threw him to the ground. Zeke is very depressed, and he tries to apologize to John, but John doesn't seem to want to forgive him. He tells Zeke to kneel and beg in front of everyone. He warned everyone that no one should disturb him. If anyone ended up like this bastard, then John left them all. Everyone was excited and panicked when they saw this incident, and they wondered whether they had a new king. Arlo was there to see what happened. Everyone asked him, and he answered then what to do they saw for themselves that John was now the strongest in this school and just declared himself as the new king, so they should welcome him as their king. He is John. John walks into the schoolyard yard. Everyone avoids him. They are afraid of John. This reminded John of his time at his old school. Then Cecile met him and said that she was happy that he was where he should be, namely being a king. John said that he knew what Cecile meant by meeting him. She wanted the position of head of press, and coincidentally, John wanted to meet Eisen. Meanwhile, in the press room, Sarah and Sarah were seen idly discussing what Sarah had talked to Claire about on the telephone last night. Sarah said that the strange thing contained in John's documents was related to the authorities where previously after John committed violence at his old school, he was detained for an indefinite period but Sarah still felt like something was bothering her. Namely, the interrogation officer who looked suspicious. He had a hunch that that person must have something to do with this matter. At that time, John was being interrogated by him. When Sarah asked what the person was doing, but John only answered that the man was just a coon from the authorities he came to ask John about the ordinary book, but after that John was seen shaking, Sarah thought how could someone as strong as John be able to shake like that unless he got the person's actions. Then Arlo came. They started discussing about Terence, which until now they didn't know about the boy. Eisen assumed that Terence was a mid-tier. During the conversation, Arlo looked confused and was thinking about something and made him realize it. Sarah says that she really wants to know who the person who took her power is and asks Arlo to help her. Of course, Arlo wants to, because this all might have something to do with Ray's death. And they eventually began to assume that Terence was part of the same group that had attacked John's house. Of course, that's also true, so it means they are very thorough and very strong people. Arlo again told what happened at John's house, namely that when the four of them, Sarah, John, Arlo, and Elaine were at his house, suddenly three people came to attack them and took Sarah's powers. Eisen thought that they also used dampening tools and tools to strengthen their abilities. 
But Arlo doubts that if they have the tools to strengthen their abilities, why don't they use them in the attack? Or maybe they lack the booster, or maybe it's even out of stock. Eason denied that. He thought that it was impossible because in the city they visited there didn't seem to be any shortages at all. If they wanted to just contact Vulcan and it would be fixed immediately as long as they had the funds to pay for it. This problem is very confusing. There is a possibility that Terence is a high-tier person who falsified documents so that everyone thinks that he is just a low-rank person. Sarah is very confused by all these events as to why everything is connected, with the mysterious mall booth, then the workers in a van, the attack at John's house, then now Terence at school. He thought that they were all everywhere. It seemed like they were connected and working together. At the same time, John and Cecile came to the newsroom to meet Eisen. Then John told them all to get out. Sarah tries to talk to John by discussing someone attacking his house that night, but John snaps at her and says there's no need to change the subject. He wants Sarah and the people inside out, and he doesn't want to see her again. John's attitude reminded Sarah of Claire's words that night when she said John was a tyrant, a monster. When they were about to leave the newsroom, John held back his breath, and he seemed angry about the article he had written. He warned Eisen not to return to the press room, because from today Cecile is the head of the school's press, and he warned Eisen that if he bothered him again, he would make Eisen pay. Arlo stops him and breaks them up. Arlo warns John about considering the people he chooses to be behind him, one of whom is Cecile. Everyone knows that Cecile is a bad person, and all this time she was the one who spread the news that Sarah's powers had been taken. However, John was very angry and did not accept the accusation. He wanted to attack Arlo, but was stopped by Sarah calling Arlo and ending this meeting. Then they left John and Cecile. Then John slaps Cecile because she didn't activate her powers when Arlo and the others opposed it. He ordered Cecile to remember and continue to follow his orders. And regarding the article, John no longer wanted to find out who was behind it all. But he warned Cecile that if she thought she could manipulate John to help achieve her goals, she should think about it again. His position may be back, but don't forget everything at Wellstone belongs to him, including this newsroom. In the school corridor, Eisen and Arlo walked together. Sarah is worried that if John continues like this, who will believe him and join him? Then Eisen was restless and thought about the article he was supposed to finish. There was an article about Remy and Blyke about safe houses for school students. Arlo and Sarah were shocked, and they seemed curious about what kind of safe house they would make. In the safe house, Remy and Blyke were seen still busy preparing their room. Then, Eason, Sarah, and Arlo came to stop by and look at the room. They were very happy to have guests come while their room was not finished, and he asked Eason about the advertising leaflet he had made. Eason says that he can't seem to finish it because he has now been fired. Remy realized that John was acting fast. Then I told them about the incident that had just happened in the newsroom where they were thrown out by John, including Sarah. Blake said that he thought Sarah was his close friend, but John turned out to be so bad that he kicked his friend out and chose Cecile next to him. Sarah, who was reading a book, slammed her book and warned Blake and Eisen not to gossip. She says that how can this room be a safe house if you gossip about others in front of them? Arlo asks Remy what the purpose of all this is. Remy said that currently the Joker's threat still haunts other students, making them feel afraid and insecure. And this is one solution where they can feel safe and can study in peace and comfort without having to be haunted by the fear of the Joker being on the loose lately. And he hopes that at least the students who join them can realize that they don't have to use violence to reach an agreement. Eisen then returned with the poster he had made. Everyone was amazed to see that it was so good compared to the poster that Remy had made, which looked more like an essay than a poster. Then Eisen distributed the poster to them and told them to distribute it. Seeing his friends who were worried about him, Arlo thought that this was the right time to take a break. He is now no longer a king, so he has the freedom to focus on the problems he wants to solve, namely the loss of Serafina's abilities and Ray's death. He will find out who the real bucket is now everyone is talking about safe house. John heard it as he walked in the schoolyard. The students looked scared when John saw them. He was curious about what a safe house was. 
When John was walking in the school corridor, he felt someone following him. He hid behind a wall and waited for someone to pass by. It turned out to be Zeke. Then Joe caught him and punched him until he fell. Zeke says he doesn't mean anything, he just wants to say that he recognizes him as king. And he offered himself for whatever John needed, but John didn't believe him. Instead, he kicked him in the face and let him fall, and then he left. Remy walked towards a room, and when he entered, it turned out that John was there waiting for him. John said that when a new king or queen was chosen, they had to choose one Jack. Remy remembers what Arlo said, that whatever John wants, Remy doesn't have to oppose it. Just do what he wants, because he doesn't want Remy to be hurt again by John. Then John suggested Cecile to become Jack in their royal structure, and Remy agreed, then Remy left. But there was one more thing he wanted to tell him. That was about the safe house he created. Why was it so coincidental that he had just officially become king? John thought they wanted to narrow the scope of the school by gathering previous royals in the same club. Remy said that this group had been approved even before he officially became king, and the goal of this club was exactly the same as what they had previously discussed, namely creating a safe and peaceful school. Remy then offers John to join them. But John said that it was just a bunch of trash. Nothing more than trash who can't do anything. Then Remy repeated what John said the last time they met where John blamed the royal for being irresponsible, and he wanted peace and safe schools. But now he doesn't support it after they have an initiative like that. Remu said that John had to prove that he was now king and had the power and influence to be able to change this school into what he wanted. And if he couldn't do that, even if he just kept silent, then he was just a hypocrite among them. Remy then left the room, saying that whatever they were going to do, John definitely wouldn't want to cooperate with them. At night, at Arlo's apartment, he needed to call someone, and it turned out that it was Tanyenya who worked in the authorities' division. He asked about how they had been since they had not seen each other for a long time, and contacted each other, and also asked how his father was. Arlo answered they were fine, and he apologized for calling in the middle of the night like this. He just wanted to ask something and hoped his aunt could help answer it. But he says now is not the right time he is on his way out now. Arlo asked his aunt to contact him when he had free time. Then he asked if Arlo was still at school at Wellstone, and offered what if they just met. Her aunt said that her division had just transferred her recently, so she was very busy and hadn't even had a chance to tell anyone. They arranged to meet next week and see if Arlo would get the answer to all his worries. It was a very sunny afternoon at Wellston Private High School. Inside the principal's office, there was a teacher complaining about the principal's true intentions. The principal was seen just relaxing with a cup of coffee in his hand. The teacher told him that since the Joker vs. Royals incident, John had hospitalized three more students. The situation at Wellston had become unstable and chaotic. She asked the principal how much longer he would allow this to continue. But the principal was silent while drinking his glass of coffee. Seeing his response made Keen a little surprised. Then Keen mentioned about the students who wandered around wearing masks. Keen was very annoyed because he didn't allow the staff to intervene. Keen said that the children had to set up a safe house to fight him. According to Keen, he spoiled John too much. Keen advised him that it was time for him to step in. Then the headmaster turned to Keen. He told Keen the reason why John was so important. It was because he was the embodiment of all the hatred that had accumulated in their hierarchy. As a person who had been raised as a low level and then given a sense of absolute fear, he was having a unique experience that many others had not yet experienced. The headmaster had allowed him to continue so that the people around him could realize the consequences of this society. The principal also understands that the current state of the school is deplorable. But as they see it, the students have already started to act. If they intervene now, then they would be depriving the students of developing these thoughts unilaterally. The principal appreciated Keene's concerns, but he asked him to follow what he had been instructed to do. On the other side of the treatment room, there was a tired look on the face of a blue-haired man. He was Darren. The man looked very upset after hearing the story from Keene. He was furious that the principal had made that decision. In his opinion, 
It was the same as the principal putting the students in danger. Darren thought that it was like something a crazy person would do. Keen sat across from Darren casually eating an apple. Keen told Darren to stay calm. Keen was sure that the headmaster already knew everything from them. But Darren couldn't just calm down. Then Darren changed the subject. While drinking a glass of hot tea, Darren complained that Vaughn was always bothering him. Darren said that every time Darren met him, he gave him a strange feeling. Darren never knew what he was thinking, and sometimes Darren also felt if he was there. Keen suspected that he was no ordinary man, and Keen was sure of it. Darren immediately folded his arms across his chest while staring intently in front of him. He asked Keen if he was really sure about the man, because Darren himself didn't know how much more he could take. Keen was silent as he stared at Darren. At the Wellstone Girls' Dormitory, Sarah was seen in her room playing with the laptop on her lap. She looked serious with her laptop. The atmosphere was silent and only the sound of typing was heard. Then Sarah remembered John, who she thought was getting very aggressive, arrogant, and angry. Realizing that, Sarah concluded that he had regressed back to his new self in Boston. She thought John was very lost, but he closed himself off so that no one could help him. Sarah sighed at the thought. Sarah still didn't understand how the change in the man was so drastic. She wondered in her mind how John could become a completely different person in less than a year. Sarah wondered if unordinary could really change John's mind. Sarah also asked in her mind if Claire's intervention really had an impact on John. But Sarah thought that it was not enough. Then Sarah kept trying to find out. She just wanted to solve this problem because she was very curious about what had actually happened. Not long after, Sarah finally found the bio data of the authority official, named Instructure Keon. Sarah saw that Keon's ability was memory recall. Meanwhile, at the Wellstone Boys' dormitory, John was seen getting ready for school. John accidentally glanced down at his bottom where there was a wad of paper. Then he took it and opened it again. The contents of the paper were an invitation to the grand opening of the safe house. John frowned remembering Sarah's words that told him that the club was a place for students to feel safe where everyone was welcome and rank did not matter. John knew very well what those people were like, someone who didn't like the people above him. And now that they were all in his power, they suddenly wanted to hide somewhere. Instead of covering it up with a name like Safe House that was ostensibly to help everyone, John thinks that none of them really care and thinks they are all fake. He thinks they don't deserve a safe house. The school bell rang loudly, which could be heard all around. In the back hallway of the school, John and a man were there. John hit him so hard in the face that he was bleeding from the corner of his lip. John scolded him because he didn't do what he was told to do to get rid of the posters. John thought that the man had underestimated him. The man was very frightened and tried to stop his violent actions against him. The man said that he had done everything he could even mobilizing all his people. But the members of the group prevented him. Then the man told John that it was Blyke who had forced him to stop and beat him. Hearing that, John chuckled. He judged that the man was weak and useless. But the man swore that Blyke had grown stronger and became more arrogant. The man provoked John by saying that Blyke had insulted and threatened John. Not only that, the man also accused Blyke of calling John a sucky king. Hearing the man who continued to talk endlessly and made John even angrier, John finally punched him in the face again. John told him to shut up because to think for a moment. After that, John told him that the safe house would open today and he planned to go there to observe. John ordered the man to make a list of every student who showed up and report back to him. A man gave a magazine to Blyke rudely while telling him to look at it. He couldn't believe that Cecile would publish something like that. According to him, this was not his gallery. He was very sure that John had forced him to do that. The look on Blyke and Remy's faces was very emotional seeing the contents of the magazine. Blyke was furious with John, who tried so hard to bring down the safe house. Blyke was very disgusted with him. While Remy was only silent, but in his heart, he was very annoyed. Remy realized that this was what John meant when he said the safe house would fail. All the students at school were discussing the article about the safe house. 
One of the students said that John was the king now, but he couldn't control which club they would join. That student thought that it was just a stupid article and a bullshit threat. But one of the other students was worried because it was on the front page of the newspaper. At the Safe House Club, there were those who were waiting for other students who would enter their club. Not long after, they were surprised to see a horde of people coming to their place. Seeing that, the blonde man did not expect to see the turnout was not as bad as he expected. Blyke explained that it was the result of their hard work, because they had really spent weeks doing surveys, and many students really wanted this. There was a smile on Remy's lips. He was very excited to start. Then Remy immediately welcomed them warmly and thanked them for coming to the safe house. Remy told them that from now on, the safe house would be open all day, every day. Remy admits that they don't have a permanent solution to the problems at school that have been chaotic lately. But while they are working on it, Remy invites them to come to the safe house to avoid all that. Remy welcomed them well. She invited them to drop by the safe house if they had free time or after school. One of them would monitor the class at all times. They would try to keep things calm and peaceful so that everyone could focus on whatever was needed. Then Remy showed them all the facilities they could get in the safe house. They could use the laptops provided, tables to work at that could also be used for sleeping, board and card games to play, and some comfortable beanbags to relax on. They are free to do whatever they like here, as long as they do not disturb other students around. Then, Remy invited them to ask questions if there was anything they didn't understand. Suddenly the door opened, and someone walked into the room. It turned out to be Zeke. Zeke was a little surprised to see them all there. But Zeke felt safe because he realized that John would defend him. Zeke thought that John could take them all down by himself, so Zeke didn't have to worry. Very innocently, Remy invited Zeke to shake hands because he thought that Zeke would also join them. Zeke just laughed sarcastically at that. Then Zeke said that he had no interest in joining their stupid club. Suddenly, Remy was surprised to hear it and widened his eyes. Then Zeke told them all that his presence was on orders from the king, John. Zeke mentions the warning he wrote in today's paper, but he'll give them one more chance to change their minds about not joining the club. Zeke warns them all that he will have their names on John's hit list. These words provoked the emotions of all of them. However, Arlo immediately restrained Blyke, who wanted to beat Zeke. Arlo told him to let Remy solve this problem because he thought the woman deserved to do that since she was the leader of this club. Some of the students who had come finally decided to leave because they were afraid of dealing with John. Seeing this made Remy even more furious while clenching his fists. Not yet satisfied, Zeke scared other students who still hadn't left the place. Zeke threatened them that he would write their names to be on John's target list. Hearing the threat made them shudder in horror. Remy immediately snapped at Zeke. Remy's eyes seemed to light up as if they were filled with an aura of vengeance. He told Zeke to get out of this place now. But Zeke ignored him. Zeke insinuated that he had lied about this club being able to accept everyone. Zeke didn't accept that Remy had kicked him out. Zeke continued to talk nonsense in front of Remy making the woman's emotions unbearable. Then Remy put her index finger on Zeke's body and gave him an electric shock. Suddenly, Zeke's body fell to the floor. Zeke could no longer move in front of Remy. Remy's face looked very angry. Then Remy confirmed his words that this club was open to everyone, because regardless of rank, reputation, or what they had done in the past, he thought everyone deserved the opportunity to feel safe. But if anyone entered the club with the intention of threatening or hurting others, then Remy would not hesitate to kick them out. Remy made sure that Zeke would not be able to write down anyone's name today. Immediately, everyone looked at Remy with admiration. Feeling very embarrassed, Zeke got up and left the place. Immediately, everyone's eyes were on him. The students who saw it were amazed and praised Remy's prowess for challenging Zeke, who was a high ranker. It made them believe what was written in the brochure that rank is not important. They all felt safe in the club and thought that John wouldn't find out about them. Zeke stood in front of the safe house club room door, clenching his fists. He looked very angry because Remy had embarrassed him in front of the students. He couldn't accept their treatment of him. Zeke would make sure John destroyed this place. In the afternoon after school, they went to a cafe. 
They made a toast to celebrate the success of the grand opening of their safe house. But Blyke reminded his friends not to let their guard down, especially with Zeke already in and trying to force everyone out of the safe house. Remy was hopeful that everyone would feel comfortable in their club. He thought maintaining it would take a lot of work, but they had a good foundation. Remy is confident that it will grow on its own. There was a presenter's voice reading a news story from the television screen in the cafe. The news was about the events on Friday night in the city of Grass Hill. There were two sightings of vigilantes. One was named Nobody, while the other was still unknown. Hearing the news, Eisen became furious. He thought they were losers for calling him Nobody. At least they could find a better name. Blyke agreed with him and thought that the name was really bad. The figure of Nobody was clearly displayed on the television screen. He was seen wearing a dark gray hoodie and had red hair. The figure also appeared to have some sort of propulsion-based ability. Seeing the figure, Blyke was very surprised to realize that it was him. They also presented a witness who was a local resident. The man explained that the characteristics of the figure had red hair and golden eyes. The man suspected that the figure was a student. The man said that the mysterious figure jumped when the residents were fighting Lenin, and when the residents asked who he was, the figure told them to call him Nobody. Suddenly, his friends immediately looked at Blyke because he was very similar to the characteristics that had been mentioned. Blyke could only remain silent. He looked so nervous. His throat felt dry. Then the presenter displayed the footage that had been captured by CCTV. The footage showed a nobody who was struggling alone against a notorious criminal. He suffered many injuries and was then unable to move. Then came a third party who helped him. However, the two of them barely escaped the attack. Even if the two citizens survived, one mistake and they would have been killed. Therefore, they strongly discouraged vigilantes and suggested leaving it to the authorities. Remy was very upset after hearing the news. He immediately left there and came out of the cafe. Blyke immediately chased the woman to give her an explanation. Remy walked very quickly on the sidewalk and left his two friends, while Blyke still continued to chase Remy. Then Blyke grabbed Remy's hand and asked for time to explain. When Remy looked back at him, Blyke saw the woman's face that had been flooded with her tears. Suddenly Blyke was shocked and felt guilty. He could only apologize to the woman for everything he had done. Remy mentioned that when he tried to become a vigilante, it was Blyke himself who invited him to do it together. Then, after meeting Vulcan, it was Blyke who convinced Remy to stop. But now Blyke is also doing it alone. It made Remy very emotional, but Blyke felt that he was very weak and useless after they were defeated by the Joker. Blyke didn't know what to do with himself. All Blyke wanted was to be strong. Remy did not expect Blyke to go alone to train even though he knew he could be killed. Blyke turned his face away and couldn't look at her. Instantly, Remy's tears streamed down his cheeks as he remembered that he had felt the loss of his brother. Remy said that his brother also did the same thing as him. He kept it a secret and went out alone. Not a day went by where Remy didn't think about how he could help his brother. If only Remy could know what he was doing, Remy would definitely do something. Remy wondered if he was there with his brother. Remy thought that he was still alive now. Blyke admitted that his actions were very stupid. Blyke deeply apologized to Remy and begged him not to be angry with him. But Remy insisted that he was not angry, but only afraid. Then Remy immediately hugged Blyke's body tightly suddenly, making Blyke a little surprised. Remy said that she didn't want to lose her either. Hearing that made Blyke touched. Then he held Remy's shoulder and promised if he would never leave him. At the same time, Eason finally found those who had left him alone at the cafe so that he had to pay the bill. The two of them apologized to him. Then Eason walked over to Remy, who seemed to be crying. Then Eason looked at Blyke with a sharp gaze and immediately grabbed him by the collar. He felt angry because he knew Blyke who left alone. Eason was so angry because he had just seen his best friend almost killed on television. Eisen reminded him that he was just lucky because there was a man with pigtails who came to save him. Blyke tried to calm his friend down and promised that he would never do that again. But the problem was that the footage had already been shown all over the news. Eisen was just worried that people would find out about Blyke, especially if Vulcan or Bucket came after Blyke. 
but Blyke calmed them down and assured them that no one would be looking for him as long as he didn't show up again. Remy really hoped that his words were true. The school bell rang so loudly that it could be heard throughout the school. Remy just entered the safe house club room. He saw the figure of Arlo who was relaxing while reading a book in the corner of the room. When he realized the woman's arrival, Arlo immediately closed his book. He looked annoyed because the woman came late. Remy admitted that he ran here as soon as he finished his test. The students greeted Remy who had just arrived. They all looked cool with their respective work. Then Remy asked Arlo how the club was doing so far. Arlo told him that so far things were still safe. Then Arlo asked Remy for time to invite him to talk outside for a while. Now Remy and Arlo were outside the safe house club room. Arlo told Remy that he had contacted his aunt recently. Arlo explained that her aunt worked for the authorities and she happened to be in the area. Arlo planned to meet her today and intended to invite Remy along. Arlo thought that maybe her aunt could answer some questions about Ray. After school, Remy and Arlo walked together to meet Arlo's aunt. Remy's face looked gloomy and stared blankly down at her. Realizing this, Arlo immediately assured him that his aunt was not a scary person. Arlo advised Remy to ask whatever she needed to ask. Remy smiled again. Remy also thanked Arlo for taking the trouble to do this. Arlo immediately turned his face away. He had no problem with it. After all, he also wanted some answers from her. A few moments later, they finally arrived at a cafe on the street. They both immediately entered into it. It turned out that there was already a figure of his aunt who was waiting for the two of them. Arlo immediately greeted his aunt and called her Aunt Val. Arlo expressed his gratitude to Aunt Val for taking the time to meet him. His aunt then walked closer to him and said that she didn't mind doing it for her nephew. It had been a long time since they had seen each other, and his aunt was amazed to see Arlo growing taller now. Remy, who stood between the two of them, felt awkward. In her mind, Remy muttered that she had dressed wrong because Arlo didn't say that they were going to a fancy place like this. A moment later, Aunt Val just realized the presence of his friend Arlo that he had told her about before. Remy immediately introduced herself, as well as Val's aunt. Remy judged that Aunt Val looked good. But Remy felt that she had seen Aunt Val somewhere. The three of them sat at the table chatting together with a glass of coffee. After talking for a long time, Aunt Val asked Remy about the questions she would ask her. She had heard the words of Arlo, who told her that Remy had several questions. Immediately, Remy bowed her head. She looked sad. Then Remy told Val's aunt that his brother Ray had been killed by Ember a few months ago. He was an ecstatic vigilante. The authorities opened an investigation into his murder, but never gave any news to Remy or her family. No answer, not even a notification at all. Hearing the story made Val's aunt feel very sorry for her. Then Val's aunt asked Remy to confirm whether her brother was someone with a high level. Remy confirmed this. Aunt Val sighed. She thought it was a very futile act. A strong young man like him could have been even stronger than that. But Ray decided to do something like that. That was what Aunt Val was very sorry about. Instantly, Remy widened her eyes as she finally realized who Aunt Val really was. Suddenly, Remy kicked her desk vigorously and looked at Aunt Val with an emotional gaze. However, Remy still respected Arlo, who was beside her. Then Remy also asked permission to go to the bathroom for a while. Seeing the woman's attitude, Arlo was very confused about what happened to her. Arlo reminded Aunt Val to take it easy on Remy as she was still mourning her brother's passing. Arlo says that Ray's actions may be questionable, but Arlo knows him personally. Arlo thinks that he is an honorable colleague who only has good intentions. Meanwhile, in the restroom, Remy was washing her face to refresh her mind. She was trying to calm herself down. Remy thought that Aunt Val was very similar to the figure, from her blonde hair, golden eyes, and height. It made Remy very sure that the woman was a Vulcan. Remy concluded that it meant Ember and the authorities were really connected. But until now, Remy didn't understand why they had to kill Ray and why she had to die just because Ray was a vigilante. After a while, Remy finally came back to see them. Remy apologized to him about his impolite treatment earlier. As much as possible, Remy acted casually and as if nothing had happened. Then Remy asked Val's aunt as the authorized party about the results of the investigation at Ember. Because so far Remy has hardly seen anything about them on the news, 
But Aunt Val explained that it was something secret. Then Remy quipped that it was very disappointing. Arlo, who was beside her, looked at Remy with a sardonic gaze. Aunt Val could understand Remy's concern. Aunt Val also claimed to have heard a few stories from Arlo about her brother. Aunt Val thought that her brother sounded like a competent young man, and she was sure that he was trying to help as many people as possible. However, Aunt Val explained that being a vigilante was dangerous, and Aunt Val emphasized that point. The best way to make an impact was to work with them, follow the rules, focus on his studies, and improve his skills. In time, she could join their fight for peace and order. Aunt Val reiterated to Remy that it was the authorities' mission to protect. Remy, however, is not convinced by her words. Remy has seen how unresponsive the authorities have been, especially when it comes to threats in districts with low levels of government. According to Remy, this is not a rare occurrence. Many low-level districts have long been self-governing because they received no assistance. Casually drinking a cup of coffee, Aunt Val said that the authorities were faced with hundreds of new cases every day. Hearing that answer made Remy very emotional. According to her, it was not a good reason. Remy immediately moved from her seat, feeling upset, until she accidentally bumped into the arm of Arlo, who was next to her. Suddenly, Arlo felt confused why the woman was so excited. There was a very emotional look on Remy's face. Then Remy offended the authorities, who were unable to answer a simple case like this, which he thought it was better for them to accept help from the vigilantes instead of continuing to denounce them. Remy thought that the authorities should support the vigilantes because they were stronger and moreover had the same goal. It would make their job easier. Aunt Val explained in a relaxed tone that the vigilantes' methods were impulsive and dangerous. Aunt Val said that the vigilantes only aimed to fix the problem on the surface without paying attention to the root of the problem. But according to Remy, it was still better than the authorities not being able to do it at all. Aunt Val thought maybe her brother did have good intentions, but not all vigilantes had such intentions. Aunt Val asked Remy to see the bigger picture. Then Aunt Val told that with so many officials running around uncontrollably, it proves that they don't always do the right thing. According to her, the vigilantes will eventually succumb to greed. In a loud tone, Remy said that they should deserve a chance to prove themselves before being eliminated. Instantly, Arlo pulled Remy's arm and took her outside for a moment. While folding his arms across his chest, Arlo asked what had gotten into him to be so disrespectful in front of his aunt. Remy turned her face away from Arlo and said that she was just asking his aunt a question. But Arlo felt that what she was doing was not asking questions, but attacking him. Arlo was very upset with Remy for making her feel bad for his aunt. Arlo also reminded him that the problems in this world were not just about him and his brother. Then, Arlo emphasized Remy to be nice and apologized to his aunt when they went back inside. But Remy was reluctant to do so until Arlo answered her question first. Remy asked what abilities his aunt had. Arlo felt confused why Remy questioned that. But a moment later, Arlo told her that his aunt had several variations of Arlo's barrier. Suddenly, Remy was surprised to hear it. Remy realized that this ability was different from the ability possessed by Vulcan, namely, Flame Claws. Even though Remy was almost sure that Aunt Val and Vulcan were the same person. Still in the same place, a fancy cafe on the side of the road. Remy seemed to bow before Aunt Val. She sincerely apologized to her for her rude behavior earlier. Remy decided it was better to go back. Aunt Val responded casually as she understood her situation. Aunt Val promised that she would ask her colleagues about her brother's case. After that, Remy said goodbye and waved her hand to them while giving a big smile. Suddenly, Remy's face changed after turning her back to them. Arlo and Auntie Val returned to the table to talk. Arlo apologized to Aunt Val for her friend's attitude. Arlo assured her that Remy's attitude was usually not like this. Arlo also didn't understand what was going on with Remy today. But Aunt Val was okay with it. She was very relaxed while drinking her glass of coffee. Aunt Val asked Arlo if he was still King Wellstone at this time. But Arlo told her that he had been removed from that position this year. It was quite a shock for Aunt Val. Aunt Val had thought that Arlo would take the position back, but Arlo wasn't interested in the title anymore. Arlo thought it was a good time for him to focus on other things. Hearing that, 
Aunt Val felt that it wasn't like the Arlo she knew. Arlo felt that way since Ray's death and his friend's ability at school was deactivated. Before Arlo could finish his conversation, Aunt Val interrupted him. Aunt Val didn't think that Arlo now preferred to devote his energy to matters that were already being handled by the authorities. Aunt Val emphasized to Arlo that it had absolutely nothing to do with him, so he didn't need to think about those things. Aunt Val reminds Arlo to reassess his priorities and focus on himself. She didn't want Arlo to be distracted by all the noise around him. Arlo's recent remark that he was no longer interested in King was not something Valerie expected. Valerie provoked Arlo to grow his ambition again. Valerie said in a slightly threatening tone that she would not recognize Arlo if he continued like that. Valerie reminded him that only his connections could bring him this far. To guarantee himself a high position in society, he also had to prove himself to her. Arlo closed his eyes and nodded to indicate that he understood what his aunt was saying. The next day, the recess bell rang. In the front yard of the school, there was Ison who ran up to Sarah. Ison had some information that he wanted to tell Sarah. Ison told her that the naughty children he had asked her to find were assigned to a readjustment class for a few months. The length of time an instructor depends on the child's condition. Sarah bowed her head. Sarah told him that she would probably attend those classes too. Eason was shocked to hear that. Sarah explained that they wanted her to be there for three months because Sarah read a book called Unordinary. They expelled Sarah for a month to make sure she didn't affect other students with her ideas. After Sarah returned, they examined her to make sure there were no long-term effects on her. When Sarah failed, they urged Sarah to take the class. Principal Vaughn managed to delay her enrollment. Eisen couldn't believe that all the commotion was over a book. In Eisen's opinion, they were overreacting. But according to Sarah, it is not vigilantism that is the problem for them. Sarah firmly believes the authorities want to stop opposition in general. Unordinary is a book that challenges its readers to make their own rules based on their own morals. For the authorities, this means an unpredictable influx of high-ranking officials. With all the trouble they gave Sarah, it was clear that they disliked influential people who shared non-conventional ideas with the public. They wanted everyone to think alike, so that people could continue to enforce their rules. Eason felt that Sarah's thinking had a point. The more he found out about them, the less trustworthy they seemed to Eisen. Then, Eason asked Sarah about what they taught in class. Sarah couldn't be sure because everything was different. But Sarah had some guesses. Sarah said that the instructor should be a man named Keon. Sarah was almost certain that he was the same person who worked with John. Sarah told Eisen that she had previously researched Keon's instructor and found out that the man had a rare ability called memory recall. This ability allowed Keon to force people's old memories to reappear. Hearing this, Eisen was very surprised. He didn't seem interested in recalling old memories. So Sarah suspected that maybe Keon was using John's past experiences. Sarah was worried what if John had to go through the same event over and over again for months. Eisen was curious about what kind of experience could make John come to this. Sarah guessed that it must be because of New Boston, the final interaction between John and Claire. Sarah told Eisen that Claire was John's closest friend in New Boston. Claire stood by and watched as John lost himself because he gained too much power too quickly. In the end, to stop John, Claire teamed up with Jack of New Boston and a group of his classmates. Claire wanted to end John's violence. She wanted John to understand that he had become what she hated. But from John's point of view, this was a betrayal. Betrayal from the person he trusted the most. Sarah couldn't imagine if she was forced to relive that moment over and over again. She didn't know what she would do. Ever since John and Sarah fought, Sarah tried to remain neutral and not judge him. All this time, Sarah had been watching John's behavior to find out why he was so unbearable. Sarah finally managed to figure it out today. According to her, John has lost faith in everyone. After finishing his classes, John came to Wellston with the hope of making a fresh start. But because of everything that happened to him here, he gave up. Gave up on the people around him and gave up on himself. Now John has moved to a higher level of brokenness, 
where John now thinks the whole world is against him. Sarah was convinced that John was trapped in his past and couldn't get out. Ison, who heard all the explanations, was stunned to see that the woman really cared enough to put these thoughts together. The school dismissal bell had rung. A few moments later, the school hallway was deserted, and no one was passing by. Inside one of the classrooms were John and Zeke. John asked Zeke for the list that he had ordered. In a stammering and frightened tone, Zeke told him that he didn't have time to do it. Hearing this made John feel very emotional and then grabbed Zeke by the collar. Even though it was a very easy task to do, Zeke did not do it properly. That's what made John angry and called him stupid. According to John, he should have just gone in there and pretended to want to join their club and then asked for their names one by one. However, Zeke admitted that he had used that method, but it didn't work. Zeke accused them that they had kicked him out. Then John asked why. Then Zeke reversed the facts and said that they kicked him out as soon as they saw him. Not only that, Zeke also provoked John by saying that all of them in the club also hated John. Zeke alleges that they don't want him or anyone related to John in their club. Then Zeke convinced John that they wanted to plot against John for embarrassing them in front of the school. Hearing all these things from Zeke made John feel very upset and emotional. John thought that Remy was a liar. After that, John released his grip on Zeke's shirt collar and kicked the table very strongly. Seeing John's reaction, Zeke thought that John believed everything he said. There was a sly smile on Zeke's lips. He felt happy that finally his revenge on the safe house club would be paid off. Inside the school library, there were several students reading books. The atmosphere there was very calm and quiet. There was also Arlo who seemed to be busy writing something. But in his mind, he was still thinking about the words of Aunt Val, who reminded him to reassess his priorities. Aunt Val told him to focus on herself and make a resume and not let herself be distracted by all the noise around. Arlo wondered to himself if he was wasting his time. There was a paper next to Arlo. It was the paper that was the club's mentoring schedule, and now it was time for Arlo to be on duty. Meanwhile, there was Remy who seemed to be running in a hurry to get to the safe house club. She was very happy because today the class was dismissed early, so she used the remaining time to visit her club. But when she got there, she was very surprised to see the chaotic atmosphere. There were two students arguing with each other. Moreover, none of her colleagues were watching. Remy wondered who the supervisor was supposed to be in charge of supervising at this hour. Then Remy immediately approached the two people who were arguing and stood in the middle of them. Remy told them to explain what they were arguing about. In her high tone, the blue-haired woman said that the boy had kicked her out. According to the male student, she didn't belong here, as she had punched him last week, and he considered her a threat to the club. The two of them continued to fight in Remy's presence to her annoyance. Unable to take it anymore, Remy finally told them both to shut up. Remy began to look seriously at them. Remy tells them that everyone is different. Not everyone they see will be someone they like. But regardless, everyone had the right to try here. Remy advised them all to at least respect each other's space. The green-haired male student asked what if she decided to target him outside the club. Suddenly, the woman immediately took offense. Remy closed her eyes and sighed. Remy assumed that if they were here, it was because they were fed up with the violence out there. In Remy's opinion, members of the safe house who target other students as soon as they step foot outside, then that would be contributing to the same environment that they are trying to avoid. Those words offended the blue-haired woman. Then Remy explained to them that if the school wasn't so chaotic, then the safe house wouldn't need to exist anymore. Arlo walked alone in the classroom hallway. Not long after, Remy came and suddenly kicked Arlo's leg. Suddenly Arlo was immediately shocked and looked at him with an annoyed look. Without preamble, Remy immediately asked him why he didn't guard the club during his hour. Remy complained about the two students who fought earlier because no one was watching them. Immediately Arlo turned his face which looked gloomy and apologized to Remy. Seeing Arlo's expression, Remy realized that something was bothering Arlo's mind. 